Now you know I mean business when I've got my Harry Potters on, don't you? <laughs> Today I mean business. I always mean business. How are you? Good morning and welcome to Sewing Street. I'm just going to shush up my lovely hair. There we go, that's better. All right, how are you? Welcome. It's the weekend. Hooray! We have got such a busy morning today with not one but two fabulous guests. So stick around all morning. Let's start, as always, with our early bird. Now it's never too early to start crafting for Christmas. I've got a great deal for you this morning. We've got the Christmas design roll pack of 10 pieces. Let me break that down for you. It's actually a strip roll, two and a half inch strips. I'm gonna open these up. And this is with gorgeous Christmas colors. Okay, now what you've got here are 10 different strips. You have got classic Christmas red, two strips of that. You've got gorgeous, proper sort of spruce green. You've got snowy white, two strips. These are two and a half inches wide, but they're actually 55 inches, I believe, in length. So lots and lots of extra length there. You've got a gorgeous, like, kind of silver bells. Silver bell, <laughs> it's Christmas time in the city. I'm the only presenter who's allowed to sing because everything I sing is unrecognisable. So we don't have to pay the licence. It's perfect. It's a win-win. And then finishing with gorgeous gold beautiful golden yellow for the star on the top of the tree. Um, lovely little set this, normal price $14.99. We've dropped that price to $11.99. Grab yours while you can. It's a great little thing to start your Christmas projects with. It'd be really nice actually to strip piece those all together. I'd get some batting, quilt batting, draw a line. It doesn't have to be 45 degree line, maybe about I don't know, maybe a 60 degree line is your first line across the middle. Lay your first piece of fabric, strip of fabric down against that line and then stitch and flip, stitch and flip to cover that one and then cut out your stocking shape or placemats or, well, there's all sorts, hot pads, anything you like really, but that would be really fun. And you could add some embellishments, you could add some ribbon on the top of the strips, maybe some embroidery stitches if you've just got yourself, the embroidery machine, Disney embroidery machine or the FS250, good for you. Um, or you could add some braid or some rickrack, some beads, be great fun. Sounds like a good idea to me. That's our early bird for this morning. Keep going through for that. Let's jump straight in with our menu for today and see what's coming up. Now, first off, we've got sewing room tools. We did an early one this time because so often, you know, we, we do this mid mid morning, but we thought we'd do some tools to start with. Got some great deals there, actually. Um, a couple of really good things, actually, that I know you'll love. At nine o'clock, the Harrison quilt with Catherine Wright. Uh, this is really lovely, gorgeous quilt this. Nice and easy, nice relaxed make, but beautiful results. At 10 o'clock, weave it tote bag. You won't be weave it, believe me, with Emma Brassfield. Love that. Um, what a start to the day. 11 o'clock, the Leicestershire Craft Centre Patterns with Catherine Wright. Um, lovely dressmaking demonstration for that hour. And then at 12 o'clock, Emma Brassfield's back with the Layla Pouch and the Dino Case. Now let me just show you. I am completely in love with this. It's a little panel and full instructions. Um, and look, he's a jazz man. Work, 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 work. <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it. Ah, ah. <laughs> Don't encourage me, please. Oh no, but what a cute project. That would be brilliant as a back to school pencil case. You could use it for your rotary cutter and scissors. I mean, I just love, love, love it. Um, and we've got a couple of different versions, the purple and the green. Oh, we've got a really jam packed morning. It's gonna be super fun. So make sure you stick around with us, won't you? 
Now then, Facebook Live is not working at the moment, so we'll get that sorted. Well, certainly for me anyway. And then I can say some proper good mornings. Lots of you watching. Should we move? Should we move? Oh, oh, let me try and refresh. Let me. Oh, you know I'm not a practical person. Why do you make me do these things? I'm doing it live. I'm doing it live. Live. Play. Yes, yes. Right, Fiona. Good morning, Stuart and everyone. Nice to see you this morning. Just setting the record as I'm working. Oh, boo. Have a great show. Michelle Harper. Morning, Stuart. You look amazing. Have you lost more weight? Well, I'm 42 pounds now. Stacking up, isn't it? Lots and lots of you watching anyway. Lovely to have your company today. Let's move over. Come with me. Moving on up and moving on out. Right. Loads to show you today. Here I am. Now then, listen, I wanted to start with this because we've never had this on when I've been on air before. And I think this is absolutely brilliant. Whether you're dressmaking, quilter or bag making, this is the Prim Dressmakers Paper. Now then, what you're getting here is... 10 meters in length it's a meter wide so what you're going to do this is proper nice kind of cartridge paper that you're going to put over your dressmaker's pattern trace off your size in all your pieces cut them out and then you've got your size keep it in a nice big brown manila envelope labeled up maybe even with a picture when you've made the garment take a picture stick it on the front um, it doesn't look terribly exciting I love this stuff and I always trace my dressmaking patterns off for a number of reasons one of which is there's me and Charlie so if we both like something like there's we've got a favorite onesie pattern don't ask um, well all sorts leopard skin you name it um, but they're just lovely and of course I'm five foot eight he's six foot two I use the same pattern but two very different sizes I've got them both traced off onto this cartridge paper and then it's easy peasy a great bear of a man that's me um just brilliant so multi-size or if like me you're someone who tends to vary in size depending on whether it's winter or summer or this year or next who knows but um, it's a really, really good idea to trace off your patterns. It means you're not cutting into your main pattern itself. Um, and have we done a price drop without me even seeing? Eight ninety nine. that's a brilliant price. That is a brilliant price. Eight ninety nine. that is terrific. That is really good. 10 meters by one meter wide. So this is gonna cover all the bases, you know? Oh, sorry. <laughs> even if, you know, it's a really big pattern, you're gonna get it onto there. So I really, really recommend that. Um, you just roll it out, lay it over the top of your pattern and um, trace off your, your pattern, your size. And also as well, I think it can be very confusing for a lot of us when there are five, six, seven different patterns are sizes on a pattern or in a lot of books now mine included you get things like pattern for this bag overlaid with a pattern for that bag and this tank top and that you know cardigan so you know it's really good then to make it a lot simpler for yourself by just tracing off the patterns that you want in the size that you need keep them labeled up in a manila envelope and then you've always got your size to just jump straight to. For $8.99, I would multi-buy this if I were you. I've never ever seen this. It's been on once before? Yeah, once before. It took us a month to get it back in stock. I've never seen it on air. I've been here for a year now. Can you believe it? A whole year. And uh, loved it. This is the first time I've seen this on air. Grab it while you can. Uh, it is completely plain. Um, so there are no lines on there to confuse or distract it's just plain white sort of cartridge style paper absolutely perfect and also if you've got those old tissue patterns um, you know this is a lot lot easier it's what a lot of independent patterns now are printed directly onto um, this is much easier to work with and works very nicely with pattern weights 
as well. Um, so you just hold it down and then you can rotary cut or scissor cut around it. $8.99 for that. I'd grab it while you can. Now there's some messages. Good morning, Stuart and gang. Looking forward to the day. Looking good, Stuart. Thank you, Jane in Norfolk. Thank you. Give me another, come on. Good morning, Stuart from sunny Staffordshire. Looking forward to a super bank holiday of shows. Uh, playing Christmas sewing, Carolyn, you tinker. I love it, I love it. I love a bit of Christmas, Christmas sewing in the summer because you feel so like you've so got ahead. It's a wonderful feeling of being prepared. Just don't do what I do, Carolyn, which is to make things and then put them away and then completely forget where I put them. I usually discover my Christmas mix in January. What can you do? Thanks for messaging in, by the way. Now, that's one of my top tips for this hour. Another top tip for this hour, and can I just say, if you have got that dressmaker's copy paper in your, in your um, basket, do check that out, because that's really flying. Um, not surprised, well done if you've already got yours. Um, now, another of my favourite things from this morning is the zigzag lamp um, from Native Lighting. This is just brilliant because, let's be honest, how, how good is our lighting at home? I mean, it's lovely for a bit of ambiance, you know, a few drinks with friends, you know, padding around in your onesie. But if you've got a job to do, how good is your lighting in your home? Mine's not great. Mine's not great. I'm going to be absolutely honest with you. This, I just think, is utter genius. It's a task light. I mean, it's so simple, portable. You could pop that in your bag, couldn't you? Um, got three levels of lighting. This is the lowest level of lighting. I wonder if we can just drop the lights for a second. Take the lights down low. Oh, I like it. I like it. So that's the lowest level of lighting. So that's quite nice. So for example, if you wanted to read and everyone else is watching TV and the lights are off or, you know, perhaps in bed. Oh, there's level one. Level two. Oops. Which is the brightest? Have I got the brightest? That's the brightest. Absolutely brilliant. So if you were doing things like English paper piecing, isn't that fantastic? So hairy. <laughs> Charlie always laughs. The lights come on. Are they on? Oh, I look all dark. Oh, there we go. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm back. Charlie always laughs at how hairy my arms are. <laughs> but I mean, I just think this is great. There are three levels, look. You can scroll between them just by pressing the button there, just to get that perfect level of lighting for you. And of course as well, very, very positionable. I mean, brilliant. not sort of floppy. You know those angle poise lamps? I mean, I love an angle poise, but they do tend to get a bit floppy over time. Whereas this one really is nice and firm and just wonderfully adaptable. And it's really stylish too, isn't it? And it's got a lovely discreet pro profile as well. But I love the fact I mean, it really is less than the size of a pencil case. You could virtually put that in your pocket. You could certainly pop that inside a bag. It isn't heavy either, although it is sturdy. Um, I just love that. You can pop that in your bag, take that with you, and then, like sometimes even, I do sewing in the car. Like sometimes if I get to the studio, like early, I'll just sit in the car, I'll do a bit of sewing. And um, that light in the car is not designed for sewing, is it, or knitting. But to have a little something like this that you can pop up and just put it so that it's over your hands. And that's where it needs to be. It doesn't need to light up the whole room, does it? You know, what we need is we need this area, you know, where we're working to be lit up. It might be that where you sew in the house, it's got a little bit of a gloomy corner to it. You can pop this lighting in there and then just sort of increase the lighting where you need it. 
And remember, of course, if things are safely lit, then it's, I don't know, it's, it's safer, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's, it's not a good idea to do things like cutting or things like that. If there isn't good lighting, you tend to be much less accurate, less safe as well. So that's our zigzag lamp from Native Lighting. We have got another. This is rather fun. I like this. Um, so it's your torch. Love that. But also check that out how completely cool <laughs> i think that's absolutely superb what a brilliant bit of design and again you can adjust the level of lighting but i mean i just love the fact that it's our task light but it's also and once you close it like that it turns the light out but it's also a torch so for example this could just be a really super useful torch but also like for example at home i have this really really good storage cupboard no lighting in it there's no lighting in it so i have a little i have a torch in there so that i can you know in the gloomy corners and i should really get lighting put in there but i have a little torch it makes the job so much easier just really useful um power cuts of course they happen love that task lighting too and it is so stylish now you could have this next to your bed couldn't you because you've got a little task like then so for example if you want to read before bedtime you can but um also of course you know call of nature in the middle of the night I never put the lights on quite often I'll use my phone but you know you don't want that really glaring light you don't want to wake yourself up at 3 a.m. just because you need the loo do you so you know light the way and then back again love it absolutely love it tell me everything <laughs> tell me everything Lamp goes off automatically, by the way, as soon as you open it or close it. So as soon as you close this, oh, I see. <laughs> Stop it. Stop encouraging me. Right, I'm putting that away. Love that though. So many of those in baskets. Really useful though, isn't it? Good lighting is one of the unsung sort of heroes of craft, isn't it? Good lighting. I mean, we love natural light, of course, but again, our homes generally don't have really great natural light and they certainly don't have it all year round. Oh, I should just mention as well, they all have, both lamps have a little, would you call that a USB? Yeah, a USB. And then you just plug that in and then you can either plug it into a, you know, into the wall in a plug or like through a computer. You can, you can charge it through that. But you can also put a plug on, you know, like you have on your iPhone, your little plug that you put on, you can do that. To recharge them um, just superb products love native lighting we've all fallen in love with native lighting over the last few years haven't we just brilliantly designed task lighting and that's what it's all about it's on split play by the way 45.99 is the total price but you can just pay 15.33 today to get your native lighting home give it a try see how you get on with it I think you'll love it now, another thing that we haven't had, well, that I've seen before, and I won't spend a long time on this, but I think it's great. It's the um, EPP paper pack. We love EPP, and this is a really great price. It's fantastic. You're getting a pack here of 20 sheets of English paper piecing card. Now, this will go through your printer. It is thicker than paper but thinner than that kind of card that you might use like for crafting, that sort of thing. Um, you know, it's, it's not flimsy, but also it's going to be really easy to work with. So you could print all your EPP shapes on this. 
I would rotary cut them, keep a rotary cutter blade or a rotary cutter with a blade in just for paper, label it up, paper and card, rotary cut your shapes out, or you could die cut. So if you've got a die cutting machine like an AccuQuilt or a Sizzix or a Gemini, and all those companies produce dies that cut a small shape out of card or paper, larger shape out of fabric, and you can do your EPP, um, you can die cut this as well. Absolutely brilliant way to get your EPP shapes. They're really crisp and accurate. It's $2.99, it's a great little buy that. Um, it's just gonna work great. You could also use that for cutting out templates as well for patchwork. 20 sheets in there, I think that's really good. Now then, what should we move to next? A little bit of hemline gold, yeah. Love, love, love the hemline gold uh, stuff. Um, now then, I'll get rid of that because that's already sold out. Well done if you've got your bobbin box. Um, one of my favourite things from the Hemline Gold range is the multi mat. Um, I've got one in a box here. I'm going to grab one that is open as well. Love the multi mat. Huge fan of this. Thanks, Cat. Fabulous cat working with us today. Um, the multi mat, this is just genius for everybody. Whether you've got a great big sewing room or you work on the kitchen table, you know, or on your lap. You know, things like this are so useful because it combines lots of uses in one. So on the outside, you've got really deeply padded outer surface. This is your pressing surface. You can have a small pressing surface or you can double the size. Love the print as well, kind of sewing notions, black and white, really smart. Non-gendered as well, which I think is great. Um, when you open it up then, You've got your cutting mat, so you've got a self-healing cutting mat in black with matte gold lines. I mean, how super stylish is that? Really useful size, it's 8 inches by 11 inches. You've got angle lines on there as well. Imagine if you're doing EPP, foundation paper piecing, maybe scrap quilting, trimming as you go, trimming down quarter and half square triangles for greater accuracy, this is an absolute boon. Okay, that's the second thing you've got there. Third thing, so pressing surface, cutting surface. Next thing, you have a design wall. So this is a kind of flock design wall. So you can lay your patchwork pieces on here. Uh, you can then kind of stand this up next to your sewing machine. You can lay it down flat. You can take this to your sewing machine and you know the pieces are all in the right place. Also, you can lay out stuff on there, close it up, pop it in your bag and then take it home and everything's still arranged. Then last of all, my favourite bit I think on the mat is your sandpaper surface. Now a lot of people ask me, what's that for then? Okay, so imagine you're doing half square triangles, two squares, draw a diagonal, so a quarter of an inch either side, yeah? Well, you'll know if you've ever tried drawing that diagonal line on a regular cutting mat or regular surface, the fabric tends to move, especially at the top and bottom of the line, the, food, the, the fabric tends to wrinkle. On your sandpaper board, it's gonna hold the fabric perfectly while you draw that line. Greater accuracy when you draw the line means greater accuracy when you sew. Also, if you're doing things like drawing around templates, fussy cutting or just cutting regular templates, fabric down first. The sandpaper is going to grip the fabric so it won't shift and move. Lay your template on top, draw around it, and then you can cut it out. Again, greater accuracy at this stage means your finished results are going to be better. All for £20. It's an absolute boon. Really giftable as well. What a fantastic Christmas gift for a sewer or a crafter. Really liking that. Magnetic pin dish. Let's do that next. So you'll see us here on Sewing Street. We're always using the magnetic pin dish. This is so gorgeous as well because I just love the vibe of the whole range as well. I love the fact that this is plain black. I'm just going to let this out. There we go. There it is. Thank you. Got my beautiful little pin dish here. Really nicely, strongly magnetic as well, which means that when I just love that. 
Isn't that ace? The pins just fly into the dish. Still really easy to get out, but literally if you drop your pin on the ground, and we all drop pins, I go over with my magnetic pin dish and they're gone. You know, I've got Mrs. Mills, my ancient cat. I always have to be really careful. She is called Mrs. Mills, yeah. I always have to be really careful with pins on the floor. I can't imagine how bad I would feel and how pain, and much pain she'd be in if she ever stepped on a pin. It's a great way to make sure that the floor is pin free. It's also just really a great way to store your pins. Also, the fact that you've got a black surface, your pins really kind of jump off it. Whatever uh, tips they've got on, whether they're flower head pins, glass headed pins, or these magic pins, um, just absolutely brilliant. Love the fact that this is magnetic. Um, you can also use these dishes, of course, as well in the shed or in the garage. So for example, if you like doing DIY or building furniture, things like that, and you've got all the screws, all of the nuts and bolts, you can put these in here. You're not gonna lose them. It's like a magic trick, isn't it? I just love it. I love it so much. I'm gonna do it one more time, okay? See them? They're there. Now they're gone. <laughs> it pleases me. I love it. I love it. I just think it's very, very smart. It's an absolute bargain, isn't it, for eight ninety nine? And again, very, very giftable. A nice pin dish, a little box of pins. What a lovely gift for a sewer, quilter, dressmaker. And think of all the fun you could have saying, there they are, now they're gone. <laughs> I love it. Now then, thread snips. Thread snips and embroidery scissors. I'm gonna grab both of these at the same time because I think these are really, really good. Um, thread snips first. Now, one of the pieces of advice I always give is don't use your scissors for cutting thread. Um, if your sewing machine's got a thread cutter, fab, use that throughout. If you need to cut your thread while you're working at your machine, you don't, I don't like using the side cutter very much. They tend not to be terribly good. Get yourself a thread, thread snips. The reason being that cutting, cutting, cutting thread with your scissors, and we tend to go for our lovely sharp embroidery scissors, will blunt them quicker than anything else, it seems. Um, and you don't want to blunt your lovely, sharp, beautiful Karen K. Buckley scissors cutting threads. Get yourself lovely, smart, but very, very cheap. Well, I'm going to say it cheap. $6.99 for thread snips. These are really lovely, ergonomic, very, very easy to use. They have this lovely kind of spring action. Can you see? Um, just great. And again, little cover for them. What's really nice about this Hemline Gold um, range as well is uh, Hemline have um, made all of the packaging recyclable and plastic free. So even things like the um, twist, no plastic holding this together. It is paper and there's a little bit of metal in there, but all fully recyclable. Love that. So those are the thread snips. We've also got some really nice embroidery scissors. These are just so gorgeously smart. I love these. Have we got an open pair of these, please, Kat? Um, I just, I love the way they look. They're so smart. I love this clear handles on them. I think they're gorgeous. Love the gold blades as well. I can open this one, Kat, it's okay. I'll open this. I'm just gonna, oh, I'll just, there, I'm just gonna rip them open. There we go. Tear it limb from limb. There we go. But I just think those are absolutely beautiful. And I can't believe the price, $3.99. They look like a really expensive pair of scissors to me. And it's that combination of the clear handles and the gold blades and they are beautifully sharp absolutely beautifully sharp 
and sharp right to the tip as well. I'll grab a bit of fabric actually. Thank you. Just beautiful. Oh, that is nice. So let's just cut out. So if you're cutting out things like applique, you really need your scissors to be beautifully sharp so that you're going to get an accurate finish. Oh, I feel a bit under pressure now. Kind of done it to myself, haven't I? Just beautiful. That's really gliding through. Fabulous. Like a hot knife through butter. Beautiful, beautiful. Again, great price, three ninety nine. A little mug, a fat quarter, a little pair of scissors, sachet of hot chocolate. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Lovely little gift, really lovely. Little treat, little something lovely. And I'm always losing scissors too, so an extra pair of scissors, really worth buying. Now, <laughs> Remember, you only pay one PMP here on Sewing Street. So if you've already bought something, you've already paid your PMP, uh, which your basket's open, you can keep shopping with us for the rest of the day. You're not going to pay any more P and P. Now then, let's grab something else. A bit of dressmaking. Can we do the ham? Let's do the ham. Now we've got a ham and a sleeve roll here. Now um, we've got Catherine Harrison in today. He's a fabulous dressmaker and does some just awesome dressmaking. Um, dressmakers will know, but bag makers also. Um, shaped pressing surfaces are so, so useful. So why do you need this rather than, well, as well as an ironing board? Well, let me tell you a really good reason why. You're going to use this when you're pressing something which is three dimensional. So for example, if you're trying to press inside the head of a sleeve when you put it in to get a really nice smooth curve, you can put the sleeve over the top of your ham and press. And you're not pressing something that should be rounded flat against an ironing board. You're actually pressing it against a rounded surface. Um, it's also, they're brilliant if you're a bag maker. For example, you can put this inside a bag and give the corners, the bottom of the bag, the base of the bag. When the bag's constructed, you can give all that a proper press um, and you'll get a much more professional finish, a much slicker finish by using a ham. Now, um, don't be concerned about any of this like coloured fabric, this red or black transferring. Of course, it is, uh, you know, dye safe. It's not going to run or anything like that. You've got your white surface anyway that you can flip and turn. Ah, oh, nice mess. A few messages to read out as well, if I may. Um, Kayla's message in to say, I just tuned in to Stuart Hillard using a fish to talk and then bite off his hand. It was on mute, so I was confused.com. <laughs> Michelle says, morning, Stuart, you look amazing. Have you lost more weight? A little bit, but, but partly it's just the clothes I'm wearing now. I've got, I've got to try and get out of the habit of wearing my bigger clothes now and smaller clothes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, let me see. Uh, Lynn's got in touch to say, good morning, Stuart. It was lovely to see you and Charlie at Festival of Quilts last week. Um, and I so enjoyed, we so enjoyed meeting all of you too. The pattern paper is a game changer, especially when you're not sure if you're cutting out the right size. Lynn, that's a really, really good point. Really good point. We'll look at the um, dressmaker's paper again in a short while. Um, Julie messaged in to say, I have that torch. It's fantastic. It's a torch one end, but it's also a task light at the other end. Absolute genius from Native Lighting. Just superb, really, oh, hello. There we go. Perfect. Uh, any more messages? Nope, that's everything for now. All right, so that's the tailor's ham. The other thing that we've got is a sleeve roll. So again, this is the kind of thing that you're going to use inside sleeves, 
tubes, trouser legs, so that rather than pressing something that should be rounded flat, you can maintain its shape. So you can pop this into a sleeve, you can press it so that, for example, you can line up the seam here and press so that you don't end up with a flat edge or a crease down the side of your sleeve. You just get a much, much better finish. And again, what a great price. These are lovely sort of stocking filler prices, I think. Now, what would go well with those? Well, with lots of things, the mini steam iron. Now then, this is from Quilted Bear. I do love a bear, it's true. I'm going to open this up. This is so smart as well. I love the fact that it comes in a really smart case. And then inside you've got your mini iron. Now let's just unwrap. Really nice long cord as well. So that means when you're at workshops and classes, you, know, you can plug into that extension lead and uh, you'll, you'll be able to get to your work surface. I'm just going to grab my Hemline Gold Multi Mat at the same time. And again, what I love about using a mini iron, you can get really good detailing. So for example, if you're dressmaking, bag making, patchwork and quilting, you can get that detailed pressing, which is one of the sort of secrets to success really. You've got that lovely kind of quite sharp points to the top. So you can really get in there and, and get a good finish. Also, I like to use these for turn and press, starch and press applique. So I'll cut out my finish shape, maybe it's a circle, in cereal box or mylar, heat proof template plastic. Fabric about a quarter of an inch bigger on all sides. Paint that edge with starch, spray starch, just sprayed into a cup and then painted on with a brush. And then use a travel iron, a small iron like this, to turn and press the seam allowance onto the cardboard. You get a gorgeous crisp edge. You can also do the same thing for turning up a really, really neat hem as well. It's virtually impossible to do that with a full-sized iron. It's so much easier with a small iron. Another thing that's really lovely about this, you've got this really beautifully designed handle. So it just feels very natural in your hand. They haven't tried to sort of scale down a normal iron and put a regular handle on. It's something that just fits beautifully into the palm of your hand. So it feels almost like an extension of your hand, which just makes things so much easier as well. Full heat control, just like you'd have on a normal sized iron. So you've got one spot, two spot, three spots, so everything from kind of silk through to cotton and linen. You've also got steam, so you can add water here. You've got a little uh, jug to do that with as well, of course. Look, there it is. So you've got your little jug. Um, also, you can have kind of continuous steam while you're pressing. You've also got this button here to add a little uh, dash of steam as well. So I mean, all round is just beautifully designed, beautifully presented and super, super useful. Uh, just brilliant. Um, also, of course, it's really, really good uh, just for traveling as well. A good travel iron worth its weight in gold. Nice, smart little case as well to keep it in. I do love the fact that it has a wristlet. Why wouldn't you? So that's our quilted bear uh, travel iron as well. Should I just grab the dressmaker's paper pattern? been proving very very popular this morning this this is from prim this is a bit of a hero product i think for today it's 8.99 and what you've got here is one meter wide by 10 meters in one continuous length so many of you have gone for this this morning well done if you have uh lots and lots of these in baskets as well Grab yours while you can. We had this a month ago. It sold out completely. It's taken us a whole month to get this back in stock. I've never seen it on air before in 
12 months, I've never ever seen this. And I love and always trace my pattern pieces out of books, out of uh, paper patterns, out of tissue patterns, onto cartridge paper. And the reason why I do that is, well, kind of several fold really. One, I like to trace off my individual size. I don't like cutting up the original pattern because what if I've made a mistake? What if I'm not that size when I make it up? Or what if my size changes? Or I wanna make the same thing for Charlie or for someone else who's a different size. So keep your paper pattern intact. If you're working from a book, or like for example, my book Bags for Life, has some cartridge paper patterns in the back, but you don't really wanna be cutting that up. That's your master copy. You're gonna keep that in your book forever. You can make as many copies as you like off your patterns with your prim pattern paper. If you lose this, well, it's okay. You can go back to your original pattern and trace a new one. But if you've cut into that, you kind of committed. We sell a lot of books on Sewing Street, dressmaking books that have multiple sizes and multiple garments on like six big pattern sheets. Brilliant value, but you can't cut those patterns out because you've got a pattern for a bag and a dress and an apron and a, you know, this, that and the other, a hat, all over printed in different colors. So you need this to trace off those patterns. And again, you can trace it off in exactly the pattern you want. Another thing, if you're making a pattern, say you're making, for example, some trousers or a dress, and you want to lengthen it, maybe you want to lengthen the bodice, or you want to lengthen the skirt or the sleeves. And we always say there's usually a lengthening line on a pattern. And all you do to lengthen it is to cut the pattern apart on that line, separate the pattern pieces out as much as you need, the extra that you need, and then put a piece of paper underneath, tape the pattern pieces to it, and then trace. A much better way to do it is to put the two pattern pieces on top of your prim pattern paper, weight them down so they don't move that distance apart, and then trace the whole sleeve out onto your pattern paper. Cut it out and just mark on it you know, pattern for Berda 685, sleeve, view A, lengthened by two inches, for example. And then you've always got that sort of altered sleeve handy. Such a useful bit of kit, this. Not glamorous, doesn't look exciting, but oh my God, it's like freezer paper, yeah? Anybody who's used freezer paper knows it's just a roll of white paper until you start using it. A uh, collector who's in Merseyside's got in touch, who's in Bedfordshire, I beg your pardon, has got in touch to say, took me two years to go to my smaller clothes when I lost six stone. I get that, I get that. Well done, I'm going to use pattern paper to resize my clothes. That is such a brilliant idea, such a brilliant idea. Yeah, it's true, I mean, this is, this is all really tucked in at the back. It's a great big bulldog clip <laughs> in the back. But yeah, you can see from the sleeves, can't you? Yeah, I need, I need to do that. Now, some of you are asking, is it easy to trace onto? It really is. It's just like, you know, kind of uh, freezer paper or cartridge paper. It's just like normal paper surface. So you can use a pencil, you could use a Sharpie, uh, you know, anything like that is going to give you a really good line on there. Um, it's much, much firmer than tissue paper, yeah. It's, it's very, very similar to the sort of paper that your independent premium dressmaking patterns are printed onto. So if you've used things like Tilly and the Buttons patterns or, you know, Catherine Wright's patterns, they're all printed on really good quality uh, cartridge paper. Now, Karen K. Buckley. Karen K. Buckley, I absolutely love. This is a bit of this is a bit of a secret club, okay? But you're welcome to join. You're welcome to join. Karen K. Buckley um, is a very, very well known and multi award winning American quilter. And she's particularly known for her incredible applique absolutely incredible applique and piecing that she combines in her quilts. Um, 
One of the secrets to success with applique and with piecing is accurate cutting. And Karen just didn't find what she wanted out there in the market. So she developed her own range of scissors and they are, I think it's fair to say world renowned. Anyone who's used Karen K Buckley scissors knows what all the fuss is about. They are just beautiful. Um, they are stainless steel edge blades. Uh, they are a really comfortable handle. They have a protective cover. They are super sharp. They are such accurate scissors. This is a large multi-purpose pair. You can use this for things like cutting out appliques. You could use this for cutting out um, templates as well. Uh, you can use these for left or right-handed cutting. They are just the most beautiful pair of scissors I've ever bought. Uh, just love them. Absolutely love them. Uh, now, I don't know whether these ones do have, I'm just having a look. I don't think these have got the micro serrations. Some of them have got micro serrations on the smaller ones for gripping the fabric as you cut. But I mean, they are absolutely beautiful. And um, as I say, I was teaching a class earlier on in the year and it was so funny because there was one point where I just sort of said to the class, oh, by the way, I must just tell you, if you ever get the chance to get Karen K Buckley scissors, I pulled out my pair, so they're absolutely gorgeous. And it was so funny because it was like dominoes going around the class. About five people went, I've got those, I've got those. Oh my goodness, they're amazing. They're absolutely beautiful, aren't they? And then everyone was like, what are they? What are they? Show us these scissors. And we we're all like, oh, they are so beautiful. Have a go with these. You know, it's really funny, isn't it? When quilters or sewers find something they really love. We become so evangelical about it. But they are beautiful. They are beautiful, beautiful scissors. And I don't get excited about many tools, but really good scissors make such a difference such a difference. Donna, good morning my darling, how are you? Rachel also got in touch just thinking back to the dressmaking. She says, as a dressmaker I always use the tracing paper. My tip for lengthening is to draw two horizontal lines on the paper however much you want to lengthen then stick the cut pattern to the lines. Easy peasy. Rachel, what a great tip, what a great tip. Always use the tracing paper. We've only got two of these scissors left, by the way. Um, now, we've also got Karen K. Buckley curved scissors. Now, let me just show you these. Now, these are, excuse me. <clears throat> now, these have got the same kind of features as those larger scissors, but in a kind of pint sized version. All right. So you've still got, now what I love normally with small scissors means tiny handles, doesn't it? But these have still got lovely, lovely big space for you to get, to get your fingers through. So they're still comfortable, less soft surface. Your blade is curved. I don't know if you can see, if I turn this, can you just about see that they've got a little bit of a curve to them? Now this makes them particularly brilliant at cutting flat to a surface because they've got that little bit of curve. So for example, if you're sewing at your machine, embroidery for example, if you're a machine embroiderer, and you've got your everything's hooped but you need to get in there while the machine is not running of course, and snip a thread really close to the surface. You can get in there with the Karen K Buckley curved scissors and snip that thread. Again, similarly, like when, you've, when you're going over your quilt, you've quilted it, you've tucked in all your threads, tied in all your threads, and you, again, you want to trim them close to the surface. Curved scissors allow you to get more flush to the surface. Also, if you do things like hand embroidery, cross stitch, again, they are absolutely brilliant. It's kind of taking your crafting to the next level. It's that sort of finessing your craft, do you know what I mean? We all start off with, you know, a good pair of scissors, a rotary cutter, ruler mat, and then over the years we find out, usually from our friends at Quilt Club, and quite often from Sewing Street, I hope, you know, about those little kind of secret weapons, those little tools that are kind of 
if you know you know and they're just so super useful and again as I say I don't get excited about lots of different tools you know I mean there are lots of great tools out there of course but you know it's those basics that do the job really well that excite me gives you a professional finish just allows you to do things more easily more neatly with more finesse and that can really elevate what you make to the next level so I think it's good I think it's good now can I mention rotating cutting mats because I am really loving rotating cutting mats right now I'm just going to move this out the way well I'm going to grab one out that we've got so have we got the I'm going to get the small blue. I'm going to get the small blue. Little blue. Little blue. Do you have a little bit of fabric, please, Kat? Like a, you know, like a 10 inch square, something like that would be awesome. So I've got my little equilateral triangle, my 60 degree triangle ruler here. I'll just pop that to one side. Here's my rotating cutting mat, except at the moment it's broken. What's going on? It's broken. I'll need my ironing board as well. <laughs> Thank you, Kat. Okay, it's not broken. Okay, first and foremost, I'm pushing, I'm putting all my considerable weight behind this. It's not moving. Okay, it's got a fantastic grippy surface on the back, a non-slip surface on the back, which is a boon when you're cutting. You do not want your cutting mat slipping and sliding. You've got a little lock on the back, two locks. Push these in, flip it back over. Now the whole mat will rotate. Now, why is that useful? Well, let me show you. So normally when we're cutting fabric, okay, we're going to neaten one edge and then we're going to turn the mat turn the fabric whatever to get it round to the other side i can just rotate my cutting mat and cut absolutely fantastic but let me just grab this i think when you start using templates uh, this is when it starts to get really really useful when you're using a template so let me just grab a rotary cutter, a little small one here. So this is what, now it would be so tempting, wouldn't it, just to start cutting here and even doing this. Don't do that. Just rotate your cutting mat. It's so much easier. It's so much safer, you know. I always say, look, I'm starting with 10 fingers. I'd really, really like to finish with the same number, if at all possible. We've got a perfectly accurate shape cut out. We didn't compromise our safety. And look how quick it was. Look how neat, how perfect that has cut out. Yeah, I just think it's great. Really, really useful. I don't know why. I always had this idea that rotating cutting, I'd seen them being used, you know. I tell you who's a huge fan of a rotating cutting mat. Jenny Doan from Missouri Star. She's always using a rotating cutting mat, isn't she? And I used to watch her videos and thinking, oh, I don't like the look of those. They look like they'd wobble. I don't know why. I assumed it was a cutting mat almost on top of a lazy Susan and it would kind of rock and tilt at the outer points. But actually the rotating part is another whole square, yeah? It's the whole thing. So the whole thing rotates underneath. The whole thing is supported. Now, don't worry. If these two parts come apart, it's super easy. Line up the cutouts here and here with the locks and then you're back in business. We're back rotating. You can relock it and then everything is held firm and tight. Now, uh, just to backtrack slightly, you saw me using a rather fabulous ruler. Again, you know, uh, there's lots and lots of good rulers out there. But where I think, you know, things really come into their own are those speciality shapes that allow us into a whole new world. 
60 degree equilateral triangle has got so many uses I love this and there's a couple of little ideas on the front this kind of um, I don't know kind of border treatment of stacked equilateral triangles I love the hexagon and of course once you've got a hexagon you've got a half a hexagon you can start mixing things up you can start creating secondary patterns with colour I mean there's just so many different things that you can do with this this has up to I think it's eight and a half inch equilateral triangles love 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 it and it's also got non-stick spots on the back which are going to hold the ruler beautifully accurate while you do your cutting fab um quick question to answer punham says why does my top back come away from the bottom on your rotating cutting mat they're meant to it's not a fault okay the two bits come apart it's not an issue just line up the recesses with the locks relock it there's our locked mat and if you want it unlocked again it might start coming apart here just hold it together while you flip it over and then away you go all right we're going to go for a break now and then when we come back we're going to be joined by Catherine Harrison and we're going to be making this beautiful Harrison quilt take care see you in a minute Hello, I'm Catherine Wright from Leicestershire Craft Centre based in Market Harbour. I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street family. I've been sewing since the age of seven when my mum taught me to sew. I particularly enjoy dressmaking and all through my childhood I made my own clothes uh, including dancing costumes and my prom dresses. But I also enjoy patchwork and bag making and hand stitching and embroidery and really anything textile based. The thing I particularly love about fabric and textiles and stitching is that there is always something new to try, there's always a new technique or a new skill to learn uh, and I really enjoy doing that. My top tip for new sewers is to uh, be friends with your iron. Your sewing also always looks better when it's been pressed and it's not like ironing your own clothes, it's much more, much better than that. And also to uh, build your skills up step by step. Don't launch in with the, with the wedding dress first off. You know, start with a simple dress and build your skills up and then you'll see good results right from the start and feel enthusiastic and carry on sewing. So really, just have a go, have fun. It's all about having fun and enjoying it. Um, so happy sewing. Hi, it's Yvonne here. As you all know, I was born in Carrick, Fergus in Northern Ireland. And we're getting to that point in the year whenever I get to go home. From the 1st of September, the Stormont Hotel in Belfast becomes the home of Quilt Fair, which is an event that together with my friends, Margaret and Helm, we have reintroduced into the, North, into the island of Ireland. We are really looking forward to this, our second event. We have retained many of the features that you liked from last year's show. We have those nice wide aisles. We have all those expert traders and our free talks and demos in our schoolhouse. In addition, this year, we have added our creative workshops, which Sewing Street has so generously sponsored for us. So this year we have added in two exhibitions. One of them, Old Roots, New Shoots, is from the Irish Patchwork Society. And the other exhibition is the work from our traders. It's, it's entitled, This Is What We Do. So I really hope that I will see a lot of you there. We thank everyone for their continuing support in this venture that we have to create the best little quilt show in Ireland. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too.
We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. Full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. If you're a sewing street or yarn lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. Welcome back to Sewing Street. I'm Stuart Hillard. It's wonderful to have your company. Now, Catherine, I have to start with an apology. It's never good when you have to start with... <laughs> Welcome back, by the way. Lovely to see so you, So lovely Stuart. to see you. It's, it feels like only last week. Yeah, funny that. Funny that. <laughs> we were near to each other at festival, we were, weren't we? had we? lots of chats, didn't we? It was we really did. good. Lots of good chats. Yes. Did you have a great time? I had such a nice time, yes. Fab. I did have to have like a, a little rest for two days afterwards it was very tiring wasn't it but it do you know what it's such a nice show I really, it really is it's terrific it. it's so lovely to reconnect with everybody isn't Absolutely. it but i'm gonna start with an apology because i i called you Catherine harrison earlier <laughs> on, and and that's that's partly me that's partly you because you've confused me today <laughs> you're Catherine right but we're doing the harrison quilt yes. tell me why so um because hannah who works with me is called hannah harrison and hannah designed the block and we taught it as a block of the month, um, which we made into a cushion. And I went, oh, this is great. This would make a great quilt. So then I've kind of turned it into a quilt. Got you. That's what, what it comes from. You see, it takes <laughs> very, very little to confuse me these days. <laughs> but there you are. But isn't it a gorgeous quilt? And um, there's a few things I really love about this quilt. Just have a look. I love the fact, and this is so intriguing, actually, that it is self-sashing. You really need to look at the whole quilt actually for this. It's self-sashing and it's self-bordering as well, isn't it, Catherine? Uh, no, this bit is a border we've added actually. The, the final white yes. bit. But that kind of, these blocks going around the outside edge, this isn't a border, this is part of the block, yes, it isn't is. it? Yes. It's so clever how you've, how you've done this, you and Hannah, I love it gorgeous isn't it yes because you think that this is the center of the block right and it's not because when you can see our part made one over here yeah you can see how the block sits yeah isn't it clever isn't it clever and also the the outer part of the block creates this illusion of a border around the outside yes. Oh, I'm glad you like it. I think it's a bit of genius actually <laughs> I think it's super clever because I'll be honest with you I'm not that keen on putting in sashing. I'm not that keen on putting on borders. Do you know what? Because um, I, I did have it on display at the Festival of Quilts and quite a lot of people kind of went, oh, I don't really like sashing. And I went, no, no, don't worry. No sashing. I know. Well, it's just one <laughs> extra job to do, isn't it? it? But is, if you can yes. make all the blocks and when you finish making the blocks, you've done the sashing and you've done your border already. I think that pleases me very much indeed. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look and see what and how you can get involved this morning. So we've got three different, excuse me, <clears throat> three different kits to make Catherine Wright's Harrison quilt. Let's start with the beautiful batik bundle. Now this is all about celebrating juicy, fresh, 
vibrant colour. Aren't these lovely? You get 12 fat quarters. These are beautiful. Oh, stunning batiks in all of these juicy, tropical, popping colours. They really are. Oh, slice of watermelon, anybody? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, summer's coming to an end, but it really doesn't need to. Am I right? Love this too. There's also some rather lovely autumny shades. It's kind of summer into autumn, which is really rather appropriate. Got some gorgeous gold batiks in there. They are lovely. Check that one out. That is a bit of something, isn't it? Get gorgeous fat quarters of each of these, 12 batiks, finished with a really beautiful bright purple. Then you also get half a metre of solid. This is going to be used for your faux sashing, should we call it? Yes. Faux sashing. And then you also get, most importantly, the pattern for the Harrison quilt. Uh, now then, I'm going to grab the pattern out for a second because I want to show you what great quality and also what great detail you get in the pattern because it's important to me, Catherine. It, well, I feel it's really important. I want someone to be able to take those instructions and just have no problems at all to make it. It's what you want, isn't it? Yes. So we start off with everything that you're going to need. This is such a gift, I think. A colouring grid. Yes, because if you, some people might not like that these centre bits don't match. Okay. To me, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. To me, it's random. But you've got your colouring grid, or if you decided to use up your own stash or something, right. you can work out your pattern to make it how you want by colouring it in an, in advance. I really like that. Yeah, I really like that. But it's also just a really great thing. I just photocopy that and give it to the kids. Well, the kids. I'm saying it like I've got some. Oh, yourself for a bit of mindful colouring. Yeah, yeah. colour that in. I love it. But it is good. And also, if you're less experienced or a bit afraid of using colour as well, it's a great thing to do, isn't it? Yeah. To start getting some colour confidence. And then look at the detail that we've got. Every single step, every stage broken down, adding borders, how to do your backing, how to layer everything up. So if you've never made a quilt before, ever, you could tackle this with this great pattern. Even details on how to turn it into a cushion. Love that. So you're getting 12 fat quarters, you're getting your meat, half a meter of solid fabric, you're also getting your full pattern, all for 52.99. Now size-wise, Catherine, am I right? 60 inches square? 60 inches square, absolutely. It's a lot of quilt for the money. It's a lot of quilt, it's good. And of course, because it's such a nice, easy block there is nothing to stop you adding more fabric if you want to make it bigger or just making it smaller yeah and it's always going to have that look where you've got that kind of faux border around the outside it's such a clever design it's such a clever design now that our second option we've called motor flowers this is really pretty i love the coloration of this because it's got a really lovely kind of red white and blue theme going on there hasn't it which I think is lovely there's a lot of the blue so perhaps 60 percent 70 percent blue and then this lovely pop of red that's just going to lift the whole thing again 12 fat quarters let me just run through them they are all so pretty nice little pops of red there these are gorgeous. Why am I only just seeing these for the first time now? They are really nice, aren't they? Aren't they lovely? Threw into some paler. We've got some gorgeous reds here. Just zinging, bright florals. Then you've got your half metre of, I think this is ivory, full pattern as well. And again, 52.99, and that's to make a 60 inch square lap quilt. Perfect for a lap quilt, great over the back of a sofa. Yeah. Double bed topper as well. If you don't want a quilt that's like really like overhangs the pillows and down the sides, you like a topper. 
60 inches is the perfect size. I think it's also the perfect size for people who are less confident with quilting on the machine. Absolutely. I, <laughs> I'm not fond of quilting and I, and I think wrestling a big quilt is also, you really enjoy the patchwork bit and then you get to that bit where you've just got to wrestle it round and you're like, oh. There's no, no wrestling with 60 inches There's no inches, wrestling though, with there? this. No, no, it's very, very doable for um, new quilters yeah. and if you're experienced then you'll whiz it up really quickly yeah and that's yeah. satisfying too isn't it it's a gorgeous project i want to make it now okay <laughs> third option to make the gorgeous harrison quilt is this lovely soft pastel and a little bit sewing themed selection here so this again some lovely fabrics from moda here I'll just move that out of the way so you can get a proper view there we go this is lovely so you've got those lovely soft tans and peaches you've got some lovely soft slaty blue that's pretty i like that a little beige again just really kind of whisper soft these would all look so different wouldn't they made up love that one with the scattered pins where's my magnetic pin cushion i can pick those up in an instant there we go, a little bit of blue there, and that's a pretty ticking stripe. And then you've got, is that a crew? Or tan? Vanilla, pretty anyway. Vanilla. Vanilla, vanilla. Nice, you know your solids. 52.99 again for that, including the pattern of course. Absolutely wonderful. Now then, we've got a couple of other bits and bobs that would be useful. Uh, backing fabrics. Got two options. These really would work across the board, I think. Let's start with the tan. So in order to back your quilt with regular width cotton, you're going to need 3.2 meters. Yes. So we've got a bundle of three and a half for 25 pounds and three pence. <laughs> we could have rounded it up, <laughs> but we didn't. <laughs> Has Ben taken every penny off that he could? Okay, fair enough. Thank you, Ben. You are a little rascal. So many different ways. But this is a gorgeous, nice, warm tan. I like that. And there's a quilt kind of heading into autumn. I think this is rather cosy. Beautiful rose and herbal quality. Three and a half meters there for 25 pound and three pence. That's a really good deal, isn't it? For a beautiful 100% cotton quilt backing. You'll need to join that, of course. Are you a centre or a horizontal or a vertical? Um, I don't mind really. Oh, really. I, don't, I don't know what we did on this one. As you can see, it's a complete contrast on this. Yeah. I usually probably go vertical, yeah. I, I would have thought. But because this is square, yeah. <laughs> there is no sort of, it doesn't there matter. There isn't really. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Copen is our other option. Copen. Copen. I like that colour. Yeah, I like that yeah, it's too. Nice. It's gorgeous, isn't mm. it? Kind of go with everything. This is uh, Copen Blue. Again, three and a half metres for £25 and three pence. Lovely. This would, I think, particularly work well with the mode of flowers because it's got that lovely kind of blues in. That works really nicely together. I think it would also work really, really nicely with this version as well. I think there's some real nice synergies there. Okay, gorgeous. And uh, we've also got the pattern on its own, of course. Let me grab it and I'll show you. So if you want the pattern on its own to make the Harrison quilt, these are the details you'll need. The pattern has been flying. Now, just an early warning. Uh, it so often happens that gorgeous patterns sell out really quickly. So if you do want the pattern on its own, as Catherine said, it would make a brilliant scrap buster. Also, am I right in saying this would work rather nicely with a strip roll? Absolutely. Yeah. They're two and a half inch strips. Yeah. Yes. Great. So if you've got a jelly roll or a strip roll that's kind of sitting on the shelf beckoning to you, but you don't know what to do with it, this would make a great quilt. Okay, $9.99 for that. Should we start? Let's do it. Yay, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so as you just said, yeah, two and a half inch strips. Um, 
which is why it would work so well with your jelly roll as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got the old stripology ruler here. Lovely. To make us nice and accurate. So we're lining up this white line at the bottom on my folded fabric. Now, when you cut this, uh, when you cut your fat quarters, you need to cut them across the shortest edge which often isn't what you do. You often go with the fabric, don't you? You do. But this one, you're going across the shortest. So you're cutting kind of 18 inch strips. You are. And I would, if I was tackling this and I would get all my fat quarters and I would cut them all and then work out what I wanted to put with what. Yeah. Obviously I haven't done this because I'm not, I'm only showing you a bit of it. It's a bit easier to audition when you've got a strip of everything though, isn't it? It is, and you can decide, especially if you're going to do your little plan and your colouring, mm. you can work out what needs to go where. Mm. Yes. So with the old stripology reader, get it really nicely lined up. I've got a lovely new blade in my rotary Gorgeous. cutter. Gorgeous. I know. Just make sure we've got it nice and flat. And go through those grooves so two and a half so it's everyone with a square for two and a half which just make life easier doesn't it it really does it really does and when you're doing i mean the great scrap buster great fat quarter project so you can go look you can go along like that and that's five done already yeah fantastic without moving anything because and that's the well thing, as... when you start moving things round your mat, although I've, I've obviously found the wrong line there, look, ah. I went wrong. Never mind. Do it really carefully because 12 fat quarters is just right. You haven't got, I found is the wrong next, one. Is your neck strip wrong as well? Oh, more than likely. That one. Is yes, that oh yes. Wide? Look, yeah. I've got oh. one that's too wide and one that's too short. I, I wasn't looking at the squares. Yeah. That's boding well, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> So take it steady and concentrate because there is literally, you haven't got lots to play with extra. Right. Um, I, I don't like projects that have huge amounts that are left over no. because, the, you know, we're all trying to get a stash down a bit, That's aren't it. we? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I like to be as sort of economical as you can. Well, and, and it kind of shows in the price of the project, doesn't it? Because the kit's fifty two ninety nine, and that's enough to make a 60-inch square quilt, uh, which is absolutely brilliant value. Um, and for me, is rather a sweet spot, I've got to be honest. I love that sort of price for making a gorgeous big lap quilt. Right, I'm just going to do that again and see if I can do it right. <laughs> yeah. all, the roll. all the lovely ladies at the, that I met at the Festival of Quilts last week, they were like, Catherine, we really like it when you go wrong. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, I can pretty much guarantee it. <laughs> it's oh, good dear. to have a reputation, I think. <laughs> it's because I'm not concentrating. I'm too excited to be here with you, Stuart. Right, squares, Sorry. two and a half. Oh, blame me, I, I was. <laughs> well, you blamed me for the, the name wrong, so. <laughs> we're, we're fair now, aren't we? That's true, we are Five. a square. Seven and a half, yeah. and then ten. That should be right, shouldn't it? Should be. Yeah. And then twelve and a half. It's really funny. I'm watching you on Facebook, and I'm seeing you doing the cutting, and then I'm hearing the noise of the blade. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I haven't managed to press quite hard enough on those. So press hard, but I have got enough strips now. Great. For the demo, so that's all right. Okay. Now. Um, Accuracy is key, as always, on these sorts of things. So I've got my quarter inch foot on, because I do think that really helps. If you haven't got a quarter inch foot, then um, find some machines have a nice um, setting, don't they, where you can move your needle. And some have, some you just need to, if you've only got an older machine, a bit of masking tape to show where you're going, things like that. So all we're going to do is piece our, so you're going to cut them all up, put them into nice blocks of four. Right. And we're going to piece strips of four together mm -hmm. so that they end up looking like this, basically. Fab. The only reason some of mine are shorter are because I cut some up to do yeah. that. Yours will all be the same length. 
Now, I just need to give you a little update. You know I said about how the patterns always sell out really quickly. If they're fabulous patterns, this is fabulous. We've got 40, 12, 12 left, 19 in baskets. I'm not a maths genius, Catherine, but I know that won't work out well. It won't, will it? No. It's not going to work out well. I urge you, check out your basket, please, if you've got the pattern. If you don't, you will miss out. It's a gorgeous pattern. I think it's one you can make again and again and again. I love the genius design that creates sashing and a border as you make the blocks. You don't have to do separate sashing. You don't have to make a border. There isn't a border around this, apart from that very final cream border around the outside, if you know what I mean. But the pieced blocks, that it appears like there's four blocks in the centre, doesn't it? And then there are sort of half and quarter blocks around the outside. But it's an illusion. You just make blocks. So clever. Amanda's got in touch Catherine to say, morning Stuart and Catherine, great to see you both. I will see Catherine on the 7th and I can't wait. Love Amanda and Mabel. Amanda, yeah, Amanda's coming to my 10 week patchwork course that <gasps> starts next week. Ooh. And that's going to be a whole new quilt that I've designed for it. Oh, so hopefully gorgeous. you'll see that here soon as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, gotta, just gotta finish it Stuart. Yeah, well, we're always <laughs> up against it, aren't we? There's always a deadline, <laughs> yeah. So is it, what's, what's left to do, Catherine? You uh, can share here. Just, just finish making it. Just finish it. It's all, yeah. it's one of the, you know how it is, how it's all up there. And yeah. you know that when you do it, you'll be really quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's part of the problem, Catherine, <laughs> isn't it? it? It'll be done. Yeah. It'll be done. Hannah's so, back now. She'll help me get it finished. <laughs> <laughs> Hurrah for Hannah. Hurrah for Hannah. Yeah, Hannah, we love you. Never met you, but I love you. <laughs> do you know what? She said every year she misses Festival of Quilts because she goes on holiday. And I got back yesterday, I said, put it in your diary for next year. Yeah. You're coming. Yeah. Cause she's a fantastic quilter and she'll love it. Yeah, she really yeah. will. So you'll meet her next year, if not Good. before. Good. Who wouldn't love festival? It was great this year. Absolutely gorgeous. So we are literally down to our last handful of those patterns to make the Harrison quilt. It's 9.99 and you get a fantastic amount of detail there. We've got four left. That's it. I'm going to hold these fingers up until they're all gone. There is now one pat oh, look at that bendy finger. One. Wow. And they had a, they had a lot of patterns. One pattern left. One pattern left. This, this always happens, Catherine. This always happens. It's one, one is left and it'll stay there now. Don't Come on, think you can't leave because you one. want the pattern and you think, oh, there's one left, someone else will get it. If you check out your basket before everyone else, you will get the pattern. So don't leave that last pattern lingering. So many of you have this in your basket. Just check out your basket. We can all go home. <laughs> <laughs> Keep sewing, Catherine. Right. So I'm loving the colour combo. That it's gone. It's so gone. I, Sold out. Sold put, out. Sold yay. out. <laughs> so I've put four together. We're going to give them a little iron. No. Oh, can I iron it for you? Do you want to? I love go ironing. On, then. I love ironing. It's not my favourite thing. Oh, isn't it? No, well, I definitely don't really like ironing clothes. I don't mind dining with sewing, that's different. It's totally different, isn't it? Do like a little bit of ironing. <laughs> I'll You're get looking, you round thinking, the what is he doing? Well, next time I'm on with you, I'm going to bring my basket. <laughs> don't do it. Do you want these all one way or it does it doesn't matter? really matter which way the seams go, to be honest. There is a, a minuscule amount of matching in this quilt. We like that. We like that too. Yeah. Yeah, this has got a very, it's got a very beginner friendly feel to it. Yes. But the finished quilt looks so sophisticated, looks harder than that. Well, I like quilts that are deceptive like that. Yeah. Yes. Because it looks like you've got sashing on it and it looks like you've got borders on it, but you're not having to do any of that extra work. How do you design your quilts, Catherine? Is it a paper and pen job? Is it squared paper? Is it back of a napkin? Computer? Um, it's a it's a pa paper and pen first. Yep. While I was on holiday, I actually I just had my notebook with me and I took my colouring pencils 
and I did a lot, quite a lot of designing on holiday. So I've got quite a lot in my notebook, but then I'll transfer them onto computer. Thank Lovely. you very much. You're I think welcome. you've probably pressed that better than I would have done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just like to be useful. <laughs> so you know what William Morris said, have nothing in your home you do not know to be beautiful or believe to be beautiful, useful. So when you've got your lovely strips, these are then going to get cut into eight and a half inch pieces. Could I have a normal ruler, mm. please, Stuart? Of course you can. Do you want a square ruler? Well, actually, I've got an eight and a half inch. That's quite Did you say eight and a half inch? Yeah. Is that exactly eight and a half? Yeah, I believe Wowza. so. Wowza. Cool. I know it's useful, isn't it? I need more different rulers. I yeah, do. It kind of comes with time, doesn't it? Although, I think with, yes. It's eight and a half, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So, I'll tell you what, we'll square it. We'll just, I'll just get that in nice and straight get that little bit off the end because that's distracting okay so if we get it nice and straight and then so we're going to divide each block of four into two eight and a half strips it's two eight and a half squares is the idea because that bit is going to get in don't want to add that on by accident. So I always think that when you look on your reader, you often get an extra little bit, don't you? Which is helpful. So there's like a quarter inch extra there. Oh, is there? Yes. I th no, oh, that's, no. A, that's eight and a half. It is it eight is and a half. Eight and a half. Inches. Yeah, the it's whole the way thing. It's the way they've drawn I it know, on, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. They're all slightly different. Okay. Okay. I'm hoping this is the same. You know what? It's actually just on, so oh, we'll be all right. You. <laughs> we'll do the same with this one. Just remember, your strips will be slightly longer. It will not be quite as tight as that was, and it's only because I've um, I cut my fat, started cutting up the fat quarters for the sample piece. Yeah. So I know we usually say make a sample block up first. Well, that's why I think that you should cut all your fat quarter strips to start off with, mm. because you can cut all your fat quarter strips and you can plan what combinations of fours you want them in. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would really recommend doing that because you'll then get it exactly how you want it. I mean, I, I've just done them randomly. <laughs> now, I have a question to ask. Yes. If I, I've bought the pattern, I want to use a strip roll. Yes. Would one strip roll be enough to make the 60 inch square quilt? I don't know because I haven't haven't made it up with a strip roll. How much fabric do you get in a how, strip roll? Well, how, how, many, how many strip sets do you make? How many different strip sets? Is it five? That, each one of those is a little strip set, but that yep. makes two. Two, lo two lots of four? So all of that there. All of that is two lots of four. So. Two of those strips, yeah. Yes. Right, okay. So that would be the equivalent of one strip. So yeah, plenty. Yep. You make, you're making my brain hurt. I know, yeah. Maths, maths on a Saturday morning this early. I could work it out, but Well, I was know. trying to be more technical, but I can just look at that and say, yes, one jelly roll. Oh, you do seem roll. to get lots in a jelly, jelly roll, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you do. You really do. Uh, Christine's got in touch to say, morning, gorgeous Catherine Wright. Hello. And Stuart Hillard. <laughs> Morning, darling. Morning. It was lovely to see you both at Festival of Quilts. Loving the quilt today. My husband, Gary, is designing a quilt he wants me to make as he was so impressed with all the wonderful quilts at the exhibition. Christine, that sounds like it could be very challenging. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? When like a non-quilter designs a quilt, it's usually got really hard angles. Yes. We're okay. very interested to see the quilt, please, Christine. So when you're putting your block together, you've got your four pieces. We've got our stripping net. We're going to, I'm actually going to do it like this. So then we've got one, so one's horizontal and one's vertical. 
one's horizontal, one's vertical. Lay it out. If I don't lay it out, I get them the wrong way round. Mm -hmm. And your solids go in between. Now, then you've got this centre little bit. So our centre square is a two and a half inch square. And when you've strip, cut these, and what you've got left over, you can use for your centre bits. You only need nine of them. Mm -hmm. And there will be enough that are the right size. So again, very, very little wastage. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to undo this one and then trim it to the so right So you can size. just use bits that are left from strip sets? Yes, absolutely, Perfect. so that's what we did. Again, so obviously you need to just undo it and press it flat. Um, when, we, when we made it up originally as a cushion cover, we fussy cut the centre bit, okay. um, which was quite nice. And in the pattern, because there's a bit about making it a cushion, in the pattern we've put a little template, so if you want to fussy cut centres, oh, you can do. I can actually see that. Let me just bring it over for a second and put it on the overhead so you can see how this has been fussy cut. It's a tiny cat. It is a tiny cat. Look. Wow. Uh, if you want the pattern, the only way you can get it is in the bundle. And let me just quickly show you the three bundles that we've got available. We've got three options. Beautiful batiks. That's our first option. It's the one that Catherine's using at the moment. A beautiful, juicy selection of kind of summer into autumn, gorgeous batiks. You've also got your half meter of solid and your pattern for 52.99. Now our second option is the Moda flowers. This is a really pretty selection of florals in reds, and a little bit of white in there, and then lots of blues as well. So you've got a gorgeous kind of summery quilt, plus your half meter of solid and the pattern. Now the last option that we've got is, we've called it blue and white, I think, haven't we? But it's much more varied than, than that suggests. You've got lovely kind of tans and corals. You've got some soft, slaty blue, lovely selection. There's a few sewing themed fabrics in there, scissors, pins, lovely little hearts and a ticking stripe, plus your half meter of solid and the pattern. Remember, that's the only way you can get the pattern now. Catherine, sorry, back to you. Which, which is the most popular one? Which is the most popular? I was like, no. Ah, it's the batiks. They are lovely. The I really batiks. like the soft blues as well. The soft blues look yeah, pretty, really don't nice. they? So I've cut that little centre square, that's two and a half inches, so now we're just going to piece in rows. So at this stage, no matching. We Nice, easy piecing. It's a bit of a gift, isn't it? No, no points to match. Love that. Well, Christine's got back in touch. Christine mentioned earlier on that her husband Gary has asked her to design, well he's designing a quilt for her to make. Apparently it's motorbike inspired. Ooh. I'm there, I'm there for it. Uh, apparently with, apparently, <laughs> she says, with the number seven for Barry Sheen. Do you remember Barry Sheen? I do. <laughs> Bit of a crush. Bit of a crush, Barry Sheen. And number three for Joey Dunlop. I love it. That sounds like a, an applique quilt then, maybe. Yeah, yeah, some applique. I like it. I was a bit inspired actually this morning. I was looking on Pinterest and I, it was quite emotional actually. There was a lovely um, like sort of memory quilt made using like shirts, plaid shirts. Oh, and, we've done that and yeah. we did that one year. So I, I've been doing my sort of 10 week patchwork class for a while mm. and one year we did one all made out of shirts mm. yeah it works some, really nicely yeah some cushions as well combined with some machine embroidery panels as well and i thought it was lovely 
might have to have a little go at that. I had one one lady once who I think she's finished it. She's not renowned for finishing, um, but <laughs> no. you can talk. Oh, I know, I know, pot kettle. Um, <laughs> But um, she's made. She made a quilt out of. Her son was a big uh, sports player. Uh, I've got a reputation, haven't I? Well, you brought it with you. You told us. It is us. true. Um, um, and she made. A, she's made a, a quilt out of all his sports tops that she'd saved from him being a really little boy. Oh, cute. Really nice. Yeah, I like that. We did, but the, the only thing was sports tops made out of really funny fabric they and we had to stabilise everything. Everything, yeah. yeah. But so, they tend to be quite simple shapes, don't they? Big squares or rectangles, so yeah. some nice ideas there. Christy, maybe if your husband's got some favourite shirts or t-shirts, that kind of thing, you could maybe include those. Even like, don't, don't tell Carrie. Just go in the wardrobe and just <laughs> grab the, they'll never ask you to design another quilt. <laughs> no, I think it sounds super. And actually it's really nice sometimes when somebody who's not involved in the craft directly, then us, because they bring a whole new perspective. Yeah. I've made a couple of uh, memory quilts for people out of their children's clothes, save their children's clothes. That's really nice. <coughs> yeah, and you can, so you know how, baby clothes often have little motifs and mm. things and you can keep those and mm. put them on so really they, they do work very nicely really cute it's better really than keeping them in a box in the in the loft definitely some people make bears don't they memory yeah. bears out of children's clothes that's a cute idea too so the center strip just so with your quarter inch seam And this is a good one as well. I know we said about this is kind of self-sashing and self-bordering, but if you've never done sashing in, um, in a quilt and corner stones, this is a nice, easy intro, isn't it? Because you are effectively so sashing So this is like block. doing a sashing, yes, yeah. but, um, but it doesn't feel like it somehow. It's no, not it like doesn't. you're making one really big strip that's all got to match all the way right. along. <laughs> right, absolutely. <laughs> Which can be a bit daunting, can't yes, it? it can. Yes, it can. Yes. Well, often it is the enormity that puts people off. Yes. This is a great size quilt, actually. It's 60 inches square, which means it's going to be easy to put together and also really easy, I think, to machine quilt as well on a domestic sewing machine. In terms of quilting this quilt, Catherine, yes. can you make some suggestions? Yes, I certainly can. Let me just go to the end of this. So I'm, I'm never one for a huge amount of quilting, I have to say. This we've gone just along the edges of the, sa of the solid sashing. Mm -hmm. That's all, actually. Has she gone, have we done any in the ditch? No. So you could go in the ditch if yep. you wanted to. Um, I, I always quite like this sort of slightly outline edging. Yeah. I often use that um, on quilts I make. To me, because there's so much going on with the fabric, mm -hmm. I don't feel like you need a big all over quilt, but of course you can if you want to. Yeah. You know, it's personal preference, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And like, some people actually absolutely love the quilting part. Yes. But it's not, it's not my favorite bit. For me, it's always about the fabrics. Yeah, yeah. What would you do? Oh, well, I like the idea of doing the sort of quilting through the, the sashing and that kind of, stabilizes everything and holds everything together doesn't it and like you said you could stitch through the center of the block again just to hold that in place oh gosh stitching the ditch is much harder than you think though isn't it, is. it? it, it is. you know i think people think it's an easy one but actually it relies on you having been so precise on anything matching yeah. and being so precise when you actually do it. I, I tend to steer away. <laughs> well, it's why I'm such a fan of the serpentine stitch on the sewing machine. You know that one that just very gently yes. undulates because I would replace straight line quilting with that yes. so that then you've got a wavy line that running along. Really nice. Or even, you know, you could kind of go through the block do you know what I mean so yes. you could actually 
I don't know. You could even do a diagonal. Yes, you could. Through and through. But I agree with you. There's lots going on there. So you could keep the quilting quite simple. Yeah. It's a good one for beginners because you can literally go from one side, from top to bottom with a walking foot. The hardest bit is turning the quilt, isn't it? Yes. So if you're going from one side yes. to the other, easy peasy yes. job done. Absolutely. This is looking lovely. Okay, would you do you want to iron this one? Yeah, I know I do. <laughs> so when um, we iron the rows, we've got those ones going outwards. So yep. away from our um, light colour, yep. the centrals um, are, seems going inwards. Those ones going outwards. Yep, no problem at all. So towards the squares. Yes. Great. Oh, I like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just love it. Well, Kerry from Living in Loveliness started all this off. I offered to do a little bit of ironing <laughs> for her and I meant it to be a little bit, but it ended up being all of it. All of it. it was now quite you're nice. getting a reputation. Yeah. Kept me out of mischief actually. <laughs> Which was no bad thing. Oh, I say. Apparently, someone asked John to do some ironing the other day. He was like, I'm not ironing for you. <laughs> they were like, Stuart Hillard always irons for people. He's like, well, I'm not doing it. <laughs> say, I've started a little bit of controversy. <laughs> and then towards the square in the centre. Yes. Okay. Then when we put our rows together, they will nest together very nicely. There you go. All done. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Right. So... We're going to match up. This is the only little bit of matching you've got to do here. And I tend to do this, so you're kind of looking at it and then roll it down so that they line up beautifully and you can pop your pins in. Do you pin either side of a, a match or just once? What's your favoured? Wow. Well. I know that I, people do it different ways. Yeah. Quite I tend often to only put one on something pin. of that length, I wouldn't pin at all. No. I'd match up the top. I'd match up where the cornerstone and the, the seam intersect and I'd hold it there and stitch between the two. Yes. But you're uh, extremely experienced. But otherwise I would pin... Yeah. I think sometimes it matches up easier that way though. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I when I teach beginners, I tend to get them to pin their yeah. seams that are matching, just because then they don't slip out of sure. place when you're going to oh, them. Oh, I'm a pinner. Yeah, yeah. We're because going to people... try and get a few more instructions. By the way, we're doing our best. They're going. They're going <laughs> wild at it in the offices at the moment. Are they? They, they don't are. need to speak to me. So they, I know. I know. I know. Well, they're moving, moving things around. So do you know what's going to happen? I'll, I'll, I'll come off air or whatever, and I'll have about five emails. Yeah. 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 Amanda says, I've seen a, a sketch of the quilt we're making at Catherine's workshop. It looks beautiful. Well, you won't have seen the, the finished quilt. Oh no, I shall unveil it to you yeah, yeah. when you come, Amanda. A big reveal. I'm going to make it for Kirsty, my goddaughter. Oh, that's nice. Christine says, I've made memory quilts for a friend who lost her mum. All clothes used were what her mum had bought her daughters over the years. I was also giving her mum's favourite dress and her dad's favourite shirt to incorporate in the quilt. That sounds absolutely beautiful. There were so many clothes, I ended up doing two double-sided quilts using each child's clothes and embroidered their names and date of birth on them. That's so lovely. I've got some breaking news. It's coming at me live. We've only got to do it, Catherine. Have you? Have you twiddled we everything have. around? We've only got double figures, okay? We've got the pattern for the Harrison quilt back in stock for a very, very limited amount of time because we've got very, very limited numbers. If you want to grab your copy of the Harrison quilt pattern, it's 9 99 You need to grab it right now. I'm not kidding. You need to get it in your basket and check out as quickly as you can before it disappears again. We have got 
very, very, very limited numbers. And they are dropping as I speak. 15 gone, 16 gone. Be as quick as you can, please. We only have a very, very limited number. We've got double figures, but in the lower, in the lower range. In the I'm, lower I'm delighted everybody likes it. Oh, it's super Because this, this is the first quilt pattern um, that I've done. Stop it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Sewing Street? No, ever. Stop it. <laughs> really? Yeah, I've done smaller patchwork things, but this is the first big quilt. Tell me you're hooked. Gee, oh, gosh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I've got, well, there's the one that we're doing in class, and I've got at least three more that I've got sketches for i've just got to get them sorted fantastic oh, wait, so, yes yeah yeah <laughs> well hopefully this will spur you on Catherine, because we're all loving the design I've, I've even got the title of my book in my head Stuart. have you can you share <laughs> oh, later, no. later. <laughs> all right i'm excited i'm excited <laughs> what are, i mean one of the things i absolutely love about the pattern is this coloring sheet second page in because that is such a a great encourager for creativity it's saying to you have a play photocopy it 20 times color it in try different layouts get, get all your stash out and see what you've got and what goes together and then you can work it out exactly that, that to me is so much fun <laughs> and you're not committing you're not cutting into your stash you're not having to sew a stitch you can have a little play with colour before you do any of that and just feel a little bit more uh, comfortable with what you're going to I do. I do find often that people people who come to classes are, can be quite nervous and a bit like, oh, I don't know what to put together. And do you know what? If you like it, you can put it together. It's so often this sense, isn't it, of what Slightly if I... There. But that me. side's lovely. What, what, it, what if it... Give that a final press? Yeah. People are so concerned with what if I do it wrong. Yes. It's like, well, who's defining wrong? No, no wrong or right, I don't think. If yeah. you like it, go with it. I totally agree. It's, I mean, most of the time, you make it, if you're making it for yourself, that's, you know, you go with what you like. If you're making it for somebody else, ask them first what colours do they like. That's right. And then you can go with it. I know. People often, and I, and, I, and I never ever, I don't ever mean this the wrong way, but often people will say to me in classes, you know, well, do, do you think I've got the colours right? And I say to them, are you making it for me? Yeah. You know, is it a gift yeah. for me? And they like laugh and say, no. And I go, well, then, then my opinion only counts for this much. Yeah. Doesn't it really? Yeah. You know, what do you think? Yeah. You love it. You've put that well, together. Well, absolutely. And we all like different things. I mean, I tend to choose often very bright colours to put together. But that isn't everybody's taste. No, you it know, isn't. Lots, of, lots of people like soft, gentle colours. The funniest thing with me in colour is I am known for doing really brights and lots of colour, lots of rainbow colour and that sort of thing. I absolutely love working with that. At home, my quilts tend to be brown and really? dark and deep colours, country colours or, um, yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Funny, isn't it? Those, can I tell you now, I cannot, I can no longer count the patterns that we've got left on two hands. That's my cryptic way of telling you that there are less than 10 of the Harrison quilt pattern left. And that was of all the stock that we managed to get in extra. This is delish. So, there's your block. It's a lovely big size. I like big blocks as well. And I cannot lie. <laughs> so you're going to make nine of those to make the 60 inch quilt. And they go together like this in rows of three. So once you've made all nine, you can decide how you want to position <coughs> them. If you've done your little plan. Yeah. Brilliant. You'll know where you're going with it. And so when you come to put these together, again, the only bit you're matching is that central sashing and your top and bottom your top and bottom. Yeah. So again, very, very little matching to get right, which is nice. And from a visual point of view, really the only thing you've got to concentrate that's is that. That's the most isn't it? important because that you I will pick those out. You wouldn't out. notice if that, that wasn't you wouldn't quite... notice. And a top tip for beginners, yeah, if that, that doesn't work out quite well, use some buttons. Buttons are buttons, good. Buttons, butterflies. Nice, yes, nice little sort of feature. You can hand tie it with buttons. We've got loads of messages for you, Catherine. <laughs> oh, yeah, go on then. 
loving the demo and you two lovely people. I made a quilt with my daughter and her partner's children. Uh, a quilt, oh, a quilt out of their hand print. Oh, that sounds lovely. That is lovely. That lovely. Really like that. Uh, morning, Stuart and Catherine. I've never done a quilt before as I'm still learning. So I hope I will do it justice from Rosemary in Ellsbury. You will. You will. Of course you will. Yes. It's a good start to quilt. It is. Loving the show. Just ordered the boutiques and the blues ready for the children going back to school and freeing up my day. Susie in Middlesbrough, happy days! <laughs> you don't need to do housework, you do need to do sewing. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Late to the party today, don't worry, you're always welcome. I love the petite colours of this quilt, really uplifting. Is Catherine's dress her um, own pinafore pattern it looks fab that's from collector in merseyside it is it's funny it you is. should say do you that. know what though my daughter my little daughter helena made this for me did she? she did how yes. old's your daughter helena 13. <gasps> gorgeous that's how easy the pattern is great but do you know what she said to me patchwork's her favorite thing yeah, i like her very much i know i i said to her do you know what helena Maybe you should make a quilt and enter it in the Festival of Quilts. Oh, that We've would be great. We've got a plan, wouldn't that be great? Really, that would be awesome. Yeah. That would be awesome. Because as I said to so many people, if you don't enter quilts into Festival of Quilts, there's no show. Hiya, I'm new to sewing, just made bunting. I love bunting as my first project. I'd love to make a quilt eventually. What's your top tips for a beginner? And that's from Beth. What are our top tips, Catherine? Top tips. Um, Take your time, especially on your cutting, mm -hmm. so you can be nice and precise, I think. It's really good advice. Take your time on your piecing, so you can be, it's all about precision. You've only got to be a few mils out here and there and it starts to go a bit wrong. Um, don't start with a really, really massive quilt. This is a great size This to is a good size. With. Or, you know, if you've got this pattern, you can just make one and make the cushions great for starters and you can just quilt it this size yeah you know for practicing and then when you feel confident then move on to it being a bit bigger I, I always say that to people just don't leap in with a king size quilt because you'll lose heart halfway through because it's so massive yeah yeah it's true it is true <laughs> although it will hardly surprise you that I think my second project was, was a king size quilt. I don't do big ones yeah but I did actually get my teacher in my class she quilted it for me yes and I loved the finished quilt, but I was always like, oh, no, I wish I hadn't asked her to quilt that because I wish I'd had a go, even if it hadn't have been as good yeah. as, well, it wouldn't have been as good as hers, but I wish I'd quilted it as well. But I would also say as a top tip for you about how do you become a quilter, stop thinking about it, leap in. You can do this. Absolutely. It is, it is cutting up fabric, it is sewing it together, it is laying it, and it is sewing through those layers. Uh, there are all kinds of everything in the world of quilting. We'll well, show is, you some of it here. There is something for everybody. Yeah. There's so many different sorts. That, that's what I really like about it because there's something for everybody. And if you don't like traditional, carefully matched pieces, you can do applique, you can do crazy patchwork, you can do art quilts. You can. There is absolutely, it, I love it. One way <laughs> or another will get you. Absolutely. <laughs> Ironing's really important as well. Ironing is, is important. Actually, it yes. is. And, and, and I suppose my favourite thing to remind myself and everyone is enjoy every part of the process. Don't get so into the sewing that you sort of resent cutting out the fabric or resent no. ironing it. I love standing at the ironing board seeing what I've just pieced well, as when, I iron it. When you've it. done it and you open it up and you go, oh, that's matched really that. nicely. You, you know, it's, you, you're really pleased with yourself, aren't yeah. you? And then you press it and it looks even better. Yeah. And yeah. I, I really like, well, what I tend to do is I'll tend to start by cutting everything out. So I'll, if I've got an afternoon, I will literally have a cutting, cutting afternoon yeah. because then your mind gets in the zone and you're doing it really carefully yeah. and, and whatever yeah and then that's all ready and it's I love that bit where it's all ready cut it's waiting, gorgeous a project just waiting yeah and then you can sew the next day and with a project like this as well you could get like kind of zip top baggies as well couldn't you and put strip sets in yes and then if you've got half an hour absolutely grab one and jump behind the machine yes I'm all for labeling once you've cut it be organized and that that really helps yeah taking pictures is, is good as well isn't it you know if you've like worked something out and you've got it like 
take a photo on your phone yeah. and then you, <laughs> you won't muddle it up or you've got something to refer to if you do muddle it up. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's gorgeous. I can't believe this is the first quilt that you've brought to Sewing Street. You'll bring lots more, won't you? <laughs> Well, I will now. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm just so pleased you like it, Stuart. I do, I do. Because you're such a, well, you're such an amazing quilter. And I was Thank thinking, you. oh, you'll think it's so easy and whatever. So I'm really, I feel really touched that everyone likes it so much. <laughs> I, one of my favourite phrases is, you know, I love things that give a lot of bang for the buck. Yes. And I think that's what this quilt delivers because it's really visually appealing, isn't it? It's got great impact. It's clever because you can't actually, what you think is the block isn't the block yeah. i love love that i love the fact that it's got this clever self sashing and self bordering technique there's just loads about it which i think is very clever and it gives lots of opportunities for quilting it does it does absolutely it's fun i want to make you fall in love with quilting oh i've i've you don't need to i do well no, the, the quilting, quilting bit the quilting oh, bit i tell you what i was looking at there's, um, at the Festival of Quilts, I was considering a little tabletop long arm quilt. I haven't got room for a massive one. I would love to have room for a massive yeah. one. But there's this quite nice little one that can go on a table and you can lift it away. And I, have, I am eyeing that up. Yeah. Mm. I think, you know, I spent many, many years quilting my quilts on a domestic sewing machine. And once you get into the swing of it and the rhythm of it all, it is wonderful. I mean, I love having my long arm now, but sit me behind a sewing machine yeah. with a walking foot or a darning foot, and I'm in heaven. You see, I quite like hand quilting. Yeah. I, I, I like that you've made it all and it's all lovely, and I quite like sat with it on my knee and the telly on Again, and doing hand quilting. this would be a great quilting, project for hand And that quilting. would be a nice, nice thing to do as well. Yeah. Yeah. I would do little, you know, things around this bit. Yeah in kind of coordinating threads. I love it. I love it. There are en so endless possibilities. Ideas. That's what's so nice about it, isn't it? It really is. It really is. Now, I've got to read out a couple of quick messages before I wrap up. Jan says, morning, Stuart and Catherine. I'm mortified I didn't find you at Festival of Quilts. I live in Higham Ferrers, so we'll have to make a trip over to you there, perhaps even book a class. Oh, yes, do. It's not that far, Higham Ferrers, just down the A14. Awesome. Yes. Come see me. And Liz got in touch. Oh, I think we need the cheer sound effect coming up. Morning, Stuart and Catherine. I just tuned in. I retired yesterday. Woohoo! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> we love it. Um, I do a lot of dressmaking, but I'm going to have a go at my first quilt. Wish me luck. I love Catherine's dress. Can you ask her if she made it? Could do better than that. Catherine, how did we make your dress? Well, it's it's my wear anywhere pinafore. And guess what? We're doing it at 11 o'clock. Where's that chin <laughs> set? There it is. <laughs> hey, fantastic. <laughs> Catherine, what a great hour. Great. Everybody's learned loads. I've learned loads this hour and actually really inspired me to think about designing a quilt that has that clever bordering designed into it. Uh, there's still time to get your kit. If you want to get a kit for Catherine's uh, Harrison quilt, the pattern has again sold out and we won't be able to get more. Like it, good. Someone's getting creative today in the gallery. Uh, I'm hoping you can hear this at home and it's not just me. Uh, but if you want to get your kit, that does include the pattern. Remember, there are three kits available. We've got the batiks, details are on screen, 52 99 And that is to make the entire 60 inch square quilt. Absolutely brilliant value, plus your pattern. Really good value. Our second option is the mode of flowers. So if you want a meadow full of beautiful flowers, navies and blues, some white backgrounds there and some beautiful red prints, how gorgeous are they? Plus your solid and your pattern again for 52.99. And then the final option is this gorgeous soft pastel blue and peach and tan with a little bit of a sewing room theme some cross stitch some scissors some pins really pretty selection of fabrics there plus of course you're all important completely sold out everywhere else pattern uh great okay we are going to go to a break now yeah and when we come back we have got emma brassfield 
who is going to be taking us through the first of her two hours. Don't go anywhere, we'll see you after this. Hi guys, I'm Becky Alexander Frost and I own a pattern brand called RJF Makes. RJF Makes is my initials, which is Rebecca Jane Alexander Frost. And most of you might know me as Baffa in the studio when John and Vic say our ah, Baffa when I message in. Favourite thing to make? I think people know me by now. I like to make bags, as you can see, I've got a few bags behind me. Um, most of my patterns are bags, um, however there is a few craft style patterns available as well. Claim to fame, I used to previously be on another sewing channel <laughs> with John and Vix and the team, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> and um, Basically, I used to work alongside some famous um, pattern designers testing for them. What got me into sewing was my mom. Um, when I was five, I was um, standing next to her while she was sewing some bridesmaid dresses for me and my sister. And basically, I asked if I could um, learn to sew. She said I was a bit immature, still immature, by the way. Um, she said, I'm a bit young to learn her words and basically she said maybe when you're a bit older so my when I turned eight I basically learned to hand sew and by the age of 11 I had my first sewing machine I'm now in my late 30s but still act that eight-year-old my favorite tools or top tips so I have two best friends one's called the bulky sea maid which is this and one is called Quilt Estate. This will help anybody, the Bulky Sea Maid will help anybody if you've um, got something bulky going underneath your presser foot. This will stop any stitches from jumping and basically missing a stitch. Now this is my best friend when I come to put in zips and you'll see me use this a lot, I mean a lot. Thank you ever so much and I'll see you all soon. Bye. Sewing Street have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one PNP all day. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. Full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, 
click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Sewing Street. Look at this loveliness. Hello. I'm loving the style on this. It has got woven side paddles made in PU with a cotton lining. What a gorgeous take on the tote. That is a bit of all right. Welcome to the show, Emma Brassfield. Hello, thank Hello. you. Well, fabulous to meet you at last. And you, thank you. It's been you. a little while before I've had the pleasure, but how are you? <laughs> Great, thank you. Yeah, Fantastic. lovely to be here. Lovely to have you here, and I'm loving this bag, Emma. Thank Talk you. me through. Yeah, so it's a, a classic tote bag that everybody needs in their wardrobe staple, isn't it? Everybody needs a tote bag yeah. for going out shopping. It's designed that you can just chuck it all in, um, but you can put a man magnetic snap on the top, or you could put a popper or a button, whatever you like, to mm -hmm. close it. Or you can just leave. I've got one that's that doesn't have it on, and that's totally fine too. Um, and then there are some slip pockets inside, so you can you know uh, separate any paperwork that you may have that you're taking out and about. Um, and then there's two small pockets at the top for your phone or your, your bits and bobs. And uh, yeah, then we've got that woven side panel to add not only structure, but a lovely bit of interest. It really well. is, it's gorgeous. And a brand new technique for us to learn as well. Yeah. Which I'm always excited about. Emma, Brilliant. I love it, I <laughs> love you. it. Let me show you the options that we've got for you. And then I'm gonna hand over to Emma as quickly as I can, because I think we've all got lots to learn. So it's called the Weave It Tote, and I really can't believe it. <laughs> I do what I can. I don't practice, you know, it all comes spontaneously. We do have one kit, and then we have some all the different options available, so you can kind of build your own uh, version as well if you'd like to. But we have one sort of ready-made kit, and this is the one that Emma's going to be using. The value, I've got to start before I even tell you what's in the kit, is phenomenal. I actually asked the producer to check that the price was correct. It's $24.99, that includes the pattern, okay, everything in there, templates, all of your full instructions for making the Weave It tote. Then you get half a meter of black PU, and it's a really lovely, soft, flexible, easy to sew PU. You don't need to use a leather needle, Nope, don't need to use a leather needle for PU. You can use a regular needle. Um, it's quite handy to use a walking foot, don't you think, Emma? Definitely, yeah. yeah. Or, or Teflon, but I always recommend walking feet. Walking yeah. foot, good and idea. A good old Mike Tex needle. Yep, a nice yep. sharp needle. Yeah. Um, and then you've also got you've got a, a fat quarter of black, and you've got a half a meter of this gorgeous rainbow fabric. <clears throat> so you've got a bit of brightness as well with your black PU fabric. So that's one kit, $24.99 plus the pattern, I think is incredible value. Because if you think about it, at least $9.99, well the pattern is $9.99 for the pattern. So you're spending £14.99, £15 for your PU and your 
cotton fabrics as well. Brilliant, just add some thread. Now then, if you wanna build your own uh, bag, then we've got some options. We'll start off with the PU options that we've got. So you can buy the black PU on its own, LN98. So widthwise on this fabric, we are looking at, is it 50? I'm gonna grab my tape measure. There it is, that's all right, I've got my tape measure. So widthwise, this fabric is, well, it's more, than, it's like 57 inches wide. So really, really good width on that. Okay, we love that. Am I right in saying, we're not gonna use every scrap of a half meter, are we, for this bag? No, no, you're not, not gonna use everything, width. no. You need a fair bit for all the straps and the, the woven pieces, but yeah. you're gonna have some left over Might have a tiny sure. bit left to make a match purse. Oh yes, that would be nice, nice. wouldn't it? That'd be lovely. Yeah. So half a meter of that is just 6.99. That's our black PU. Now we've also got a chocolate brown. This is UC70. This is kind of espresso brown. Yeah, it's that really lovely, deep. There is a gentle sheen to this PU. It isn't shiny, but it isn't completely matte either. It's just got a nice, soft sheen to it. Ironing wise with PU, what do you do? Yeah, you have to be very careful. Definitely don't put an iron on the front. Um, the iron is not a friend with your PUs right. and your faux leathers. Um, you can do a very careful, gentle iron from the back. Yeah. Um, and I always recommend a Teflon sheet. Yeah. To, just to be super careful and be sure you don't want to be melting sure. that PU. But you can, yeah. And also you can use a hairdryer sometimes as well. Oh, cool Heat idea. Heat it up and then you can put some books on top to flatten it, that yeah. kind of thing as well. So yeah, there's yeah. options. And the good old fashioned pressing cloth as well. I'm a yeah. big fan of the pressing yeah. cloth yeah. just to protect delicate fabrics. Last, oh, no, not the last option actually. We've got a gray PU, IB79. So this is kind of like your classic Classic elephant grey PU again 6.99 for a half meter and a half meter is plenty to make the weave it tote bag okay that is elephant grey and then the final option producer Ben and I were getting very excited about this one because we just love the texture now this is is this a PU it's not a PU as such is it, or is it it is a PU, yeah? So this has got, it's not actually quilted, but it has a quilted look to it. it looks it's a bit rather. like a waffle kind of, doesn't it? Like oh, a, sorry. looks a bit like a waffle. Waffle, it does, yeah. it's like waffle towel egg. Mm. It's rather lovely. So this is in a lovely crisp polar white. You get that sense of the, yeah, I like that. It's a little bit space age. Mm. Yeah. That would look really cool with the woven sides, wouldn't it? I think it would look ace, mm, mm. yeah. And you could team that with lots of things. We've got a rainbow fabric with white and light blue in it, which I think it would look really, really cool. Okay, so there are PU options. Now, let me just grab, we've got, have we got the main rainbow also by the half meter? No, we don't, that's only in the kit. So let's go with the light blue background then, CP15. So this is that very rainbow I was talking about, which I think would mix really well with the white. Isn't that cute? And I think that teamed with, are you with me? Mm. Rather liking that combination. So that's by the half meter. For this project, Emma, mm -hmm. how much of the cotton, main cotton fabric? You do need all of that for the, if you're gonna use that for the lining as well. Yep. Yeah. So that'll line it and that'll also do the contrast weaving. Yeah. Beautiful. So half a meter will be enough. And then we've also got the dark navy background. So this is MX08. I think this would be rather nice with the elephant gray. Mm, it would, yeah. That's lovely, isn't it? Up above the streets and houses, <laughs> rainbow clan. Huh? You're too young to remember no, that, I'm Emma. No, I'm not, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> I know all about that, oh, yeah. <laughs> I've worked many, many times with, with uh, Debbie Short, who of course yes. was, was it Zippy? Zippy's girlfriend? 
Oh, okay. On the show. Yes. Yeah. Well, my background I is in creature so. costumes, so I know all about Seriously? that world. Seriously? Yeah. Oh. Not, not on Rainbow, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's super cool. Creature costumes. Mm. Mm. <laughs> really? We need to yeah. talk. I need to know more about this. We'll, we'll get to know each other over the show. Now then, uh, Plain Black. Where would we use this in the bag? So um, I say that the half, I think you probably would need a plane for the line. So you'd use the contrasting for your woven sides and uh, like the inside pockets. I like to use a contrast for the inside yeah. pockets, but then you would need the plane for the inside, the main bit of the inside. Sorry. Got you, so your yeah. main lining. So yeah. this is solid black, half a meter, half a meter is gonna be plenty for lining your tote. Okay, 379 for that. And then filling wise for the bag, mm -hmm. H640. Yeah, so on the um, samples that I've done, I actually didn't use any because it's a thicker oh, faux leather, thicker, yeah. thicker vinyl. And the structure at the sides, because you're using quite, you know, you're weaving it in, naturally that gives you quite a lot of structure. So you don't need too much interfacing mm -hmm. on that. So you can use your, um, your regular medium weight interfacing if you're using cotton. If you're using the faux, you don't need to use any interfacing on the sides. Um, and depending on the look as well, it all mm -hmm. comes down to the look that you want. Um, you can use um, the bosal, yeah. I would recommend um, the bosal if you're um, using quilting cotton on the outside. But if you're using the faux leather, you can, you well, know, again, it's the look that you want. Right. You can get away with or without. Yeah. If we want a little bit of extra structure, a little bit of extra padding in the bag, particularly on the front and back of the bag, we've got some H640, which is quite a thin, polyester bat with a fusible side 9.99 that's for a meter piece it's actually just a great thing for your stash now if you'd like the instructions on their own we do have them available now i'm just going to let you know they are already proving extremely popular and if you were here for the last hour with with Catherine wright and her harrison quilt uh, those patterns sold out twice over we don't necessarily have the option of getting any extras of these. So the pattern on its own is 9.99, and that is for the Weave It tote bag. You won't believe how beautiful this bag is. <laughs> I've only just begun, Emma. I love Emma. it, I love it. <laughs> Keep it coming. <laughs> 9.99 for those. And you've got wonderful in, uh, detailed instructions there you've got all your pattern pieces this is something a bit different look at this all your pattern pieces on really thick keep it paper and then your separate pattern booklet styly with all of your instructions so many step-by-step -step photographs in there for every single stage of the process You've left nothing to chance, Emma. No, and all my patterns are tested by around six to eight different people as well. So they go through, make sure that there's no errors. Um, and it's in a compostable bag as well. We love that, <laughs> we love that. Sustainable, to do our bit, yeah. really well thought out instructions. Well, I can't wait to see how the Weave It bag goes together. Brilliant. Emma, over okay. to you. Okay, so it's, it's not, it looks, it's one of those that looks tricky but it really isn't. The trickiest bit is the woven bit, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so you need to cut out quite a bit of the, um, the woven pieces. So you're gonna have some short and you're gonna have some long. We'll come to the long in the minute. Um, they both have, the, whether they're short or long, they both have the same um, techniques to them. So I wanted to show you whether you're using the PU or you're using the cotton. Now, as you'll see on the back, I have interfaced my cotton and I haven't on the PU. And that is so that I can bring the cotton up to the same weight as the PU because we're mixing it. If you're just using PU, you don't need to interface. Um, I mean, you can if you want a, a, a stiffer, more structured bag, that's totally fine. Um, but like I say, I've built up the cotton so that it matches the PU. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a line down the middle of both of those pieces. So I'm gonna grab my ruler and make sure I've got my pen. In terms of that marking tool, what would you recommend? Yeah, so I'm gonna use a, just a regular white pen on my, on the on the black because it's black obviously it's tricky to show up you can use chalk you can I mean there's all different things um, you're never going to see it from the back so it's all it's all good so it doesn't have to be removable nope no awesome no if you're um, if it's on a cotton 
I almost always use a friction pen just because it's that kind of like, oh, if it leaks through or something, you yep. don't want any mishaps. It's not going to leak through on the PU, so it's all good. Um, the only thing I would say about using one of those just regular gel pens I found out as I was prepping for this is that if you then by accident iron that, that white pen onto something, it does mark. So oh, okay. that's just something to bear in mind good to know. if you're doing that, yeah, as I discovered. <laughs> mm. I've always been a big fan of the white, like the Sakura yes. white gel pens. Oh, yeah, so, for things yeah. like applique. Yeah, yeah, really good. So there's two different ways that you can do it. With the cotton, obviously we can, so we need to fold in the two sides and then we compress because it's the cotton, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. I was just checking if the iron, the iron isn't on. Okay, we'll come back to that in a second. Doesn't take long to heat up at no. all, just a few seconds. Oh, does it? Oh, okay, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Okay, let's move that over then. So when you fold the edges, are you folding mm. sides to middle? Yes, exactly, yep, yeah. That'll take some of us back to the good old days, sides to middle. <laughs> it's quite a different meaning, doesn't it? <laughs> And then we're just going to press that. doesn't matter if our friction pen disappears because, of course, now we've got that line and we can meet the other side into that raw edge. Something that you need to think about when you're cutting out your pieces, if you're using a directional print like this beautiful rainbow, I just love this. Um, you can use this rainbow with any planes. You know, it always looks good. I keep forgetting you can do that, can't you? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. <gasps> so fancy. Um, yeah, so you want to think about the direction of your print because the short uh, pieces are going to go from left to right and your long pieces are going to go top to bottom. So you do have to bear that in mind as you're cutting. Um, it does show that in the instructions and there's loads of pictures. So don't be too worried about oh, that. we have plenty of fabric to do that. Yes, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Lovely couple of messages for you I want to just Aww. share. Dulce's got in touch to say, Emma, lovely to finally have a chance to see you in action. Oh, hi Dulce. <laughs> That's cute. Dawn's also got in touch to say, morning, Stuart, Catherine and Emma and team. I was oh. piecing along with Catherine and now I have stopped with a cuppa to figure out Emma's weaving. Oh, thank you. Hello. Okay, so I've done the, the cotton. That's what you're going to do with all your cotton pieces and you're of course going to repeat that for all your different pieces that you need. It tells you exactly how much you need of each. Um, and then for your PU or your faux leather, you're going to do the same thing, but I'm just going to grab some double-sided tape. I haven't got the lovely Sewing Street one, I'm afraid. So you're going to you have to bear well, with my... Well, chances are neither of we, Terrible. Emma. Oh, really? <laughs> we, we can never keep it in stock. I keep trying to grab it, but yeah, it goes so quick. So I've got a slightly inferior one, so that's why it looks a bit dog-eared, but... There we go. Right, so we're gonna put some double-sided. Again, you don't have to use double-sided. I just find it's a bit easier. And then we're gonna grab some wonder clips and we're going to fold into that line that we drew. And we're just gonna clip that in place. So you're doing the same thing, it's just two different techniques. Because obviously you can't press the PU. Right. So that double-sided tape running down the centre is just going to hold the raw edge of the PU in place. Exactly, and it just gives you a little bit of time to put your clips in place and get that all kind of in place and nice for sewing. Could I run a line of glue stick down the centre yeah. instead? Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. we could totally do a glue stick as well. Okay, so that is ready for the machine. Let me make a little bit of space. So you've got your sewing machine threaded up and a walking mm -hmm. foot installed. What colour thread? Well, I'm using black because I want to make it a bit of a contrast on the rainbow and obviously I've got my black. Um, but yeah, you can choose whatever colour thread. You can pick out a colour. You can do it so that you can't see a thread. Totally up to you. Can I make a daring suggestion? <gasps> Go on. What about like really brightly coloured variegated thread? Gorgeous. To really pop on the PU. I love a variegated thread, yep. And with a rainbow as well. Mm. Yep, Keep, keeping with the theme. Favourite colour. And then we're going to um, top stitch each side. Okay, so is that in short enough? Yeah. So we are going to just top stitch uh, about a quarter, uh, no, sorry, an eighth of an inch, a couple of millimetres from each edge. 
I like to do it from the back, but you can do it from the front if you'd rather. So when you say the back, that's the bit that's got that raw, the raw edges. Yeah, exactly. Folded in. Yeah, the bit. And it doesn't matter that there's a raw edge. We're okay with that. No, that's all going to be hidden, and you'll see, you'll see in a little bit when it all comes together. Now, may I ask, stitch length wise, mm -hmm. we're top stitching, we're sewing through PU. Any tips? Yeah, if you want to do a longer stitch, uh, let me just cast off. You want to do a slightly longer stitch of around three or four, three and a half, four. Yeah. Um, but the cotton you don't need to, or you can, you know, you can you can choose what you, what you want to do with the cotton a bit more, can't you? Mm. It's quite nice to have a bit of a longer stitch. Must admit, I didn't change my stitch on this one, but <laughs> you can choose. That's what's so brilliant about making your own stuff, isn't it? You can mix it up. Yeah, you really can. Get your own look. Mm. Okay, so that's the cotton one done. And I'm going to go ahead and I am going to extend my stitch to a three and a half for the PU. And this is when you need the walking foot, really. Right. Or, you, like I say, you can use a Teflon. I just find that, I mean, I use walking foot feet whenever I can. <laughs> I use it on almost every project, no matter what I'm doing. Because yeah. it means, you know, the, a regular foot, it pushes down. Um, so a regular foot pushes down and uh, you've got your feet underneath that are feeding through your feed dogs mm -hmm. and a regular foot is pushing down so it's going against that but a walking foot is going with it so you're feeding it through at the same time so it just for all fabrics, mm -hmm. slippery fabrics, it's brilliant, yeah I can't advocate it enough. <laughs> Good to know though, walking foot is really useful. Yeah. The, the non-stick foot that uh, Emma was mentioning, the sometimes they're Teflon, sometimes they're just non-stick. Good mm. news if you've got the Brother FS250 from Sewing Street, because you get a non-stick foot included. <gasps> That's brilliant. It's so useful, isn't it? Yeah, and some of these machines as well have an almost walking foot action yeah. in them too. Yeah, they um, do. So that's brilliant too. A sort of integrated dual feed. Yeah. It does make a difference. Yeah, a lot of the Dukies now have that, don't they? Yeah. Okay, so then we've got our woven strips and then we turn them over. So obviously they're gonna look like that from the front. And then this is the, the bit that takes a bit of time but honestly isn't as tricky as it looks on the finished bag. Okay, so what you need to do is with the pattern, you get uh, two kind of side panels. Um, and you want to make sure you cut out, I think, let me just double, double check, yeah, it's pattern piece two, which is slightly larger, okay? It's larger in width and length, um, and you'll see why. So I'm gonna flip that over, I was sort of hiding it, um, because then we're gonna start our weaving, okay? So I've prepped up all my, my shorter pieces, and as you can see, I've got my longer pieces on there. Now, again, you can choose how you want to do it. I have gone for the main colour to go in the middle, and I do recommend that you do that because then you're going to do your contrasting as the two either side, and then you're going to do your straps also as your contrasting. Again, if you want it the other way around and you just want the one contrasting up the middle and your straps to be the same as your main, you're going to do your straps and the, um, the main as these long outside pieces. Hopefully that makes sense and yeah. you're all with me. Okay, then we're going to lay our pieces on. I'll just take these clips off. And we're going to start, and it tells you, it shows you with photos and everything in the booklet as well. You're gonna start with your first piece as it shows here. So it's underneath the middle one and over the other two. Then the next one, we're gonna do over the middle one and under, you know, standard weaving. Um, so we're going to put that underneath and we're going to go along and we're going to fill up that whole thing. So we're going to go underneath and over. If you've got these little, you know, dog ends, don't worry about it. It's, it's all going to be either inside or chopped off in a minute, as you'll see. Oh, it looks very satisfying. It is, it really is actually. 
And I had, uh, I've had some of my testers as well say that they get so many compliments when they're using it. Yeah. And they actually use it as their everyday bag because yeah. it fits so much in. Um, and the shoulder, the straps apparently are very comfortable as well. So that's great to hear. There's something about the PU, isn't there? Yeah. That it really elevates the look of the finished bag. You know, yeah. it brings it into that kind of smart, bought from a shop, you know, kind of slick, more of a handbag style. Um, I mean, I love, don't get me wrong, I love a quilt weight cotton tote bag. I think that's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But this creates something that's really rather stylish. And then that bit of weaving down the side really adds that sort of, ooh, how did you do that? Yes, yes. And I've just, just realised, saying that, I didn't integrate my other colour, did I? I didn't do my contrast. So you want to do your... your main colour then your contrast, your main colour then your contrast. It's getting ah. carried away in the moment of the weaving. So yeah, that's what you want to do as you go along. Caught it just in time. Phew. Phew. <laughs> and then we do our rainbow. And this is why you want to make sure you're doing it in the right, you know, if you've got a directional print, the right way up. Right, yes. So I'm going to have this as the top of my bag. Yep. Yeah. I love so. the way it creates that kind of really strong uh, horizontal stripe as well. Yeah. That's really cool too. Yeah, so we just keep going. A couple of stray threads in there. So yeah, you can see it's, like you say, it is quite fun. It's quite satisfying. Yeah, 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 I really like that idea. And it's quicker than it looks. Now may I just check with producer Ben, please? Where are we at with patterns on their own? Let's see where we're at. Okay, so more than 50% of the stock has gone. If you want to grab your instructions on their own, you will need to grab those. Uh, in terms of our kit, our black PU with our black solid and our rainbow fabric. Again, half the stock gone, okay? So going very, very quickly. Still options available in those other rainbow fabrics plus the other three PUs. Have a look on the website if you want to sort of have a bit more leisurely look at what's available out of those. But top tip, don't hang about on the pattern. That's the thing that's going to go first. Lisa's got in touch to say, good morning, Emma. I love this bag. Oh, hello, Lisa. Thank you. It's gorgeous, really thank lovely. You. You've really elevated the tote bag. Oh, thank you. So I'm just going along. I've finished my actual weaving pieces um, and I'm just going along and I'm matching up. One thing I didn't mention, but it does tell you to do that, is to just make a mark in the middle of the black background. Now, the, the black background doesn't have to be black. It, I've obviously done it black because it goes, you know, melts in. You don't want to be able to see this, this backing, okay? It is just for the structure. It's just for this part of the pattern. If you are doing a light bag, then you would want to use, a, you know, a, white, a light or a white fabric to go underneath. You just want it to disappear, basically. Um, but you're not going to see it anyway, so it's all good. Um, so I have marked the middle of both the width and the length, OK? So I don't know if you can see, but there's a white mark on there. And I'm just matching up that middle strip with that line uh, on both top and bottom and on left and right as well. I've done it too. So I'm just going to clip those in place. And then we just need to do a bit of tweaking and uh, moving around so that we can get everything as centralized as possible. Fabulous. Dawn, who mentioned earlier on that she was sitting, she'd stopped what she was doing with a cup of tea to watch <laughs> the weaving, has just got in touch again to say it's such a, an original idea. I am mesmerised. Oh, thank you, Dawn. Really clever technique. Remember, grab the pattern or a kit, make the bag, learn a new technique, try something a bit different. What a lovely way of doing it. $24.99 is such a fantastic price as well. And remember, of course, that buying the pattern really helps then Emma to go away and develop new ideas, new patterns, am exactly, I right? Exactly, yes. And also all my patterns have tutorials on YouTube. 
So this one is out, I think it is next Friday, not this Friday coming, next Friday. Great. So if you, um, you know, by then you'll have your pattern and you can just sit and you can sew along. Um, and yeah, if there's any bits you get stuck, I do timestamps as well. So you can forward, rewind um, and all of that. Like that very much, like that very much. Thank you. So you're kind of using Wonder Clips now just to hold each of the woven strips in place. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and you'll see why in a little bit. Um, yeah, we just want to make sure they're all as neat as possible. And I'm really butting up the edges. So there's no gaps in between, not even a millimeter. They're all completely snug in there. So that it looks like there's no backing, basically. And honestly, once you've done these two sides, it comes together so quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is the f really fun part, isn't it? Doing all the weaving. I want to yeah. have a go at this for sure. <laughs> it's a so little bit tell me about what you do kind of on a day-to-day -day basis while you clip away. Yeah, so uh, my background is in, well, now I'm a, a pattern designer. That's what I do full time. And I um, run my club and, and come on here, of course, and write patterns. Mm -hmm. um, and then my background, uh, I still do sometimes, you know, dip in and out, is um, I work in films and TV doing, um, which is how I know Dulce. Um, doing creature costumes and like special effects costumes so paddings paddings is kind of my speciality but um, yeah big character so when costumes you say padding what does that mean yeah like to make people bigger oh okay um, whether it's fatter or just wider so like a, it could be a character or it could be yeah a, a shape a body shape to make it look like um you know maybe a famous person's got a certain body shape but the actress doesn't so you want to or actor so you need to add a little bit and and that obviously i can't take away but <laughs> sure <laughs> but, yeah, i bet you get asked <laughs> that would be, I'd be <laughs> yeah oh dear um but yeah so that's what i do so um oh, i helped cool. Helps to make Eagle Piggle. Um, oh, really? Yeah, Chewbacca. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Chewbacca, I, as in from Star Wars. Yeah, for The Force Awakens, I did too. Oh, I've got Ben, the producer, making <laughs> Chewbacca noises in my ear. Oh, no. Horrific. <laughs> <sighs> Apparently, you just told oh. me that half, more than half the stock of the pattern's gone. But oh. actually, it just sounded like... <laughs> I can't do it. No, I can't. And actually, Peter Mayhew, who was the obviously the original Chewy, yeah. um, I went, went to his house and did a fitting, and he asked me to do it. And it was just like, no, please, please do not <laughs> ask me to do the noise. Did he do the noise? Uh, he could, but no, no, it wasn't. It was... Um, oh put me on the spot now I forget the mixture it was something like a bear it was definitely a bear in there and I can't remember there's a few different animals that they mix up oh really to get his noise yeah yeah the new the the new um guy that's taken over Jonas he did it when he was on set oh. so he did the kind of sound yeah he kept practicing and interesting yeah there are people at conventions that actually kind of speak the language aren't there and can actually have whole conversations <laughs> I, really I find it fascinating <laughs> any other super duper costumes you've worked on oh uh the bat suit really yeah did uh, you do the muscles i did some of the muscles did you yes not all as it seems <laughs> i'm just quite, gonna say quite um i did the flash um for justice league oh um yeah i'm sure wow. there's others that i can't think of right now but wow. yeah that's my background yeah i once put on a suit which was a massive sweet corn <laughs> that's brilliant i haven't really made a sweet got... corn <laughs> that was me i've got <laughs> <laughs> I've got a picture of it somewhere. It's a friend of mine did like the publicity for a for a, like you know like maize maize is made out of oh, yeah. corn. Yeah, are really popular out there. And she did yeah. all the like sort of publicity stuff for them, which included this costume. And she just had it dry clean. She said, "Oh, try it on." I ended up running through the village. <laughs> Dressed as a sweet corn. Oh, anyway, I would have liked to have seen that. I digress. <laughs> well, I mean, the whole village got to, and I'm not sure every one of them was <laughs> That's brilliant. I've got that in my head now. Okay, so we've done all the weaving. I've kind of zhuzhed it all around and made sure it's all central. I've got the, the central pieces um, correct, and it's all clipped to within an inch of its life. I've missed one there, saying oh. that. <gasps> Almost. There you go, that's the last inch of its life. Now we're going to baste around the edge with a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, cool. 
stitch length for this basting? Uh, you can do a long stitch length. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, long's going to be quicker. <laughs> so yeah. We're not taking it out. No. Huzzah. No, we're not taking it out. No. No. In fact, we're cutting it off in a second. Oh, okay. So I know. I or remember you saying that the the black panel at the back, the sort of foundation, was a bit bigger than you needed it yeah. to be. Yeah. Yeah. I say and so we're that's where we're going to trim. Yeah, so I, I say we're cutting it off, but we're cutting just, you know, we're keeping it, but we're cutting just next to it. Right. So as I'm taking out the clips, obviously if you're using quilting cotton or regular cotton, you can just use pins, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, always, I, love a, I love sewing over a pin. I know it's very controversial. <laughs> it really is. But you made Chewbacca's costume. I think you can do what you like. <laughs> <laughs> so have you ever been to any of the conventions, Emma? I haven't, no, no. Our director Charlie has. Okay, how was it? We well, filmed at one, that's cool. Ah. I think they'd be a treat, they'd be an experience, like a Comic Con or something yes, like that. Yes, yes. Well I used to do face painting and I have face painted it years and years ago but I think it might have been the first London comic-con oh really a, like about 15 20 years ago I love it. what was um, your favorite fa face to paint oh I love it when someone comes up with or when they used to come up with like a mashup of like a, a tiger and a lizard or something like that okay like really creative and then I just kind of you know you that love would be that. fun yeah yeah uh -huh. I love that um we, I, oh, you know, I mean, I think I must have painted thousands of unicorns, like literally thousands. How do you paint the horn? How do you paint the horn? Yeah, the horn. Yeah, yeah, you paint the horn. You just do it. You, you just do it sort of flat and swirl it round, and then add a bit of stars. And but also, um, you can get three D horns, stick on horns. Okay. Which I mean, that just takes it a bit like your PU with your bag making. That yeah, just yeah. takes it to a whole nother, Perfect. whole nother level with lights and all sorts in. Oh, this is good, this is good. Someone's got in touch to say, I have a confession. I was the Forever Friends bear. Amazing. I went to all the trade shows dressed up. I only tried it on for a joke as I was the MD secretary <laughs> and everyone stopped laughing when I travelled, everyone stopped laughing when I travelled around the world. Yeah, I bet they from did. Sue. That is such a cool story. That is cool. And says, I went on a line dancing weekend away. The theme was St. Patrick's Day, so I went as a potato. <laughs> what a I want pictures. We want to see pictures. That's amazing. Oh my potato. goodness. Oh, you really are getting on board. I love it. <laughs> I used to do face painting when I was a teacher at school, but I could only really oh. do tigers. Oh, yeah. So I used to paint it. my face with a tiger as a sort of subliminal message to the child. <laughs> Wouldn't you like this? Yes. You know, yep. once I got asked to do a, a, an elephant. Oh, like, that's the worst. How am I worst. supposed to do the trunk? No, I don't like doing elephants. So I didn't like doing elephants. I don't do it anymore. I stopped just before COVID or yeah. kind of during COVID, but yeah. 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 Someone else asked me for a princess face. Oh yeah. So I, I, could, I could do Princess Anne. But it's a Princess <laughs> Anne. <laughs> Lots it was of like, flowers it's really and glitter. really about the crown, isn't it? And the yeah, tiara. Yeah, just loads of flowers and glitter and they're happy. The yeah, <laughs> I know, it's funny. <laughs> some of the requests. Oh. <laughs> Dawn says, I was dressed up as Uncle Fester. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's brilliant. <laughs> with a bun, with a bun. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was Uncle Fester with a bold head cap and no one recognised me. Funnily enough, Dawn, funnily <laughs> enough. You're making me cry. <laughs> <laughs> with laughter. I love it. I love oh, it. I should add. <clears throat> right oh, then, come in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it's too funny. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, there we go. So you're basting close to the edge all the way around, yeah? Yeah, a centimetre in. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sorry about that. That was a trampoline. <sighs> And as I say, I'm just tweaking them because I've got the um, that mark in there in the middle. I can make sure that that central strip 
is matching up, even though, you know, because I've taken off the clips. Mm -hmm. They can sometimes move a little bit, which yeah. is the only negative with clips, really. Um, and Emma, I'm just, I mm -hmm. always like to kind of take it somewhere else. Every time I'm making any project, I'm sure you're the same. Yeah, yeah. I'm always thinking, oh, yeah. Could, yeah. could I use this technique mm -hmm. for the front or the back of a bag? You totally could. It yeah. still works on larger pieces. Yeah, yeah. You just, you just want to do what I'm about to do. So you just want to make sure it's larger and then you're going to cut it down. Yeah. Because you're going to want to be a, you know, you don't want to be working with a little fiddly bit. That's right. just, you know, no, no, no feel as well yeah. the texture. Oh, that's really cool as well. It's got a real like, lovely weight to it yeah, yeah. as well. I'm just going to yeah. grab the finished bag for a second yeah. and just bring it over because um, a couple of our viewers has, have asked if they can just see the finished bag. Mm -hmm. And it is really stylish. So you've got plain PU front and back. So really lovely, smart profile front and back. Option to put a magnetic fastening or you could put a button and loop. Um, and then it really, it's the sides of the bag, which if you think about it, when you've got a bag over your shoulder, it is all about the side, that's isn't what, it? So, yeah, that's what people see. I will just mention um, while we're here, obviously, as you can see, I've got the rivets in. Um, I do recommend in the pattern that you use rivets just because it makes it stronger. However, you don't have to. If you haven't got rivets or you don't like using rivets, or um, you know you just just don't want to use them then um, you can still you just would stitch over the, the the stitch lines of your weave so you just would go over those stitch lines so it's just totally stitch back fine and forth a couple of times. yeah it's totally fine you could even you know you could if you're a bit nimble you could like lift up that bit and stitch underneath um, you know or even by hand you could lift it up and do a, a barn door underneath cool. or cross yeah smashing brilliant thank you okay so then when you've got that all structured up then you get your other pattern piece and make sure i can find it which is pattern piece three and you lay that over the top can you see it's quite a lot bigger so you want to find your central points again that you made earlier oh. and you just want to lay that in place now because you're you've the pattern piece is actually to cut it on the fold you've naturally got that middle point anyway so you don't need to make any notches it's there ready for you okay so you just lay that in place I'm just gonna put some weights on and then you want to draw around doesn't matter what pen you use because it's all going to be hidden in the seam allowance having said that the white doesn't show up on the rainbow it shows up brilliantly on the PU so I might have to do a bit of a combo. You can line that up though, can't you, on your ruler when you're cutting round yes. it? Yes, yeah, you totally can. Yeah. Awesome. Exactly. Yeah. And are you, I mean, obviously you do your costume. Do you do a lot of dressmaking? I, I do for myself, yep, yep. So I'm working towards a me made wardrobe. I haven't made this dress, but I do, yeah. I'm just going to ask because it is gorgeous. Thank you. It would be no, one to I hack. didn't. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going to take a pattern off it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm working towards it slowly, slowly. But of course, all my time is taken up with my pattern can designing. You, I mean, mm. I'm, I'm thinking this is a rather obvious question, but mm. can can you do that? You know, take a finished garment and take a pattern off it. And yeah, yeah. So my my creature stuff, my creature costume stuff. Um, it's it's not really like straight costume i haven't really done that many i have done some yeah um but i haven't done that many kind of what i call straight costume normal yeah. clothes um it is all that kind of knowing the different structures making 3d elements that yeah. sit happen to sit on a body but not always mm. sometimes it's puppets it's like you know hand puppets with animatronics inside and you have to figure out the body the the muscles how they move so it relates to a real Interesting. animal yeah you made so a costume for a dog um, no, I've got colleagues that have though. A few. Yeah, yeah. Be quite but no. And I've had, uh, there were some costumes, I won't say the film in case it's not common knowledge, but there were some costumes made for ducks. So that was quite fun. Really? <laughs> they weren't so uh, I've forgiving. I've got ducks, I can make duck. them costumes. <laughs> I need patterns, Emma. I need patterns. 
Yeah, it was uh, it was quite interesting. They weren't um, quite as well behaved as a dog, as I can imagine a dog would be. And that taking a pattern from a finished garment is that like a sort of general technique that you can learn a general technique? I'm just thinking that would be an yeah. amazing pattern if you could write one for us. I just yeah. put it. You know me. I always put in these requests when I think of them. Do you know what I mean? Though? It's more of a technique than yes. an actual pattern. Yes. I think. Um, I'll think about it. Because mm. mm. <laughs> I'm just very selfish. I bought you this do really it. lovely. Well, I've bought this really lovely kind of linen shirt, which got this lovely kind of plunging neckline. Mm. A sort of nice. It's really like, almost like a tunic kind of mm. thing. It's so lovely, and I'd like to make it in a gazillion colours. Well, all you do is you oh, lay don't it tell out. Us, don't tell us. Don't tell us. Okay. Do a pattern. <laughs> do a pattern and come back. Okay. Honestly. I'll tell you after. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we've lined that up and like Stuart says, we're going to use a ruler and just chop off that excess. And with any luck, our stitch, our basting line will be just inside. So we're not chopping that off. I know I said that earlier. I didn't mean it, I lied. <laughs> Do it all the time. <laughs> so that then it's all nice and in line. I'm a bit weird, I don't use the mat, the lines of the mat. Me I think neither. Oh, you don't either, no. but so many people do. Mm. And then I kind of get, look, I'm completely off piste here, but then, yeah, all good. We all have so it's comfortable ways. and safe for you though, isn't it? Exactly, yeah, exactly. I love it when you trim things down, because it's suddenly like, oh, look at yeah. that. It takes it to another level, doesn't it? Does. It? it looks I all know. lovely and neat and yep. perfect. Yeah. So there we go. There is our side panel, and here's one I made earlier. Lovely. The other side. So then you've got your two panels, and you're ready to make up your bag. So we've got about ten minutes. We've definitely seen the bit which is out of our usual skill yeah. set. Yeah. Are you able to run through what you do to kind of put the bag together? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Awesome. So um, just a word on the straps as well. So. Um, when you cut out your straps, um, the only thing I would say, if you are using the directional print, you may have to do a seam in the top, but you can probably see, you can't even see that if you match it up. So it's not, it's not an issue um, and you can choose how you do that. So then when you're putting, so you're gonna make up your tote bag and it's very similar to how you would normally make up your tote bag. I have got the pieces here, so I shall just quickly see if I can run through those. Um, you've got your pockets on the inside. They um, are pretty straightforward. You would just fold, uh, sew them right sides together, bag it out, top stitch along, and then you place it on the lining. And I'll show you that in a second. Let's move, move these bits out of the way. So then, yeah, so for the pockets, they are just slip pockets. So like I say, you would then, once you've done that bagging out and top stitching, you then lay them on as it tells you in the, in the pattern so that then you've got your longer slip pocket or your lower slip pocket and you've got your top slip pocket oh, like as that. well. And that's, that's in two. Mm -hmm. So you've got like two little, you know, you can pop your phone or your, your lippy or whatever you want to in there. Yeah. So that's how you do the pockets on the inside. You could add in a zipper pocket. You can uh, you can do it how you want. You can take it up another level. You, mm -hmm. you choose. That's again, that's what's so brilliant, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So that's how you would do your lining. To make up the bag, you're going to do the same for the lining as you are for the outer. So I will just show you on the pattern. Actually, I haven't marked it on here. Um, you have a notch mark. So when you lay them down, you're gonna do it right sides together. You have a, this is your top of your bag. Let me make sure I've done it the right way, no. Uh, this is the top of the bag. Let's take that out of the way. And you've got your notch mark there. And your notch mark is one centimeter shy, is that in short, no. Is one centimeter shy of the bottom of your top piece, okay? And then you're gonna lay that on and you're gonna sew along there. Gonna do the same with the other side. So the sides don't actually go right to the bottom of the bag? No, the bottom of the bag is the bottom of, of that main course. piece. So that then that goes to there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then you're going to do the same on the top. The match up. Sew that. Sew that. 
okay? And then you're gonna um, do the same with the lining. Then you're gonna do, um, you're gonna lay it in. Your lining is gonna have a hole in the bottom, your turning hole. Mm -hmm. um, you're gonna match it up. You're gonna sew the lining to the top of the bag. Again, this is all photo step-by-step -step instructions. Um, so don't worry, and there's a video, like I say, that you can watch um, that's coming out next uh, week on Friday. Perfect. Yeah, so then you um, do it as you would do a normal bag. You sew the top together, turn it all the, uh, the right way out, and then you put in your um, straps. So I was just going to quickly, if we've got time, That'd be great. Yes, talk please. about that. So Five that's, minutes. OK, brilliant. Five. So that, you imagine that we've made up our bag, OK? And then we've got our straps. Um, there's no pattern pieces for these, but it has all the measurements, OK? So the, the reason why we put the main col color on the top is so that we can hide this strap in there. Okay, so we get the look Ooh. of a continuous oh, strap. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, without it being a continuous strap. So you don't need that super long length of fabric. Emma, I really kind of missed that, but can I just bring yeah. the bag back? Yeah. Because that is such a stylish detail. If I just turn this on its side, doesn't that look, yeah. And that's why the rivets are there. It's really clever. Thank you. A gorgeous additional little detail. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. So that's that's why we have a separate strap and there's separate long strips. Don't make your strap and then weave it in, okay? Because then you're going to end up with well, it's definitely not going to be long enough. Um, so yeah, it's a separate thing. So you put that in, and that is why you would then put your rivet in, and you would stitch. So you in the instructions, if you are using rivets, or if not actually, you stitch along that bottom line, and then if, um, if you want to, you can stitch along that top line. If you wanted to add an extra layer of stitching, and some of my testers preferred this, they lifted that up and they stitched underneath, so you don't so see yeah. any, and then they put the rivet through the top. Um, I like a rivet because it adds a bit of structure, but again, it's not an absolute necessity. Nice little pro detail though, isn't it? Yeah, I think the hardware is the other thing that takes it. You, you get your PU yeah. and then your hardware, but um, but yeah. It's actually All a bag good. that would be very nice to put some back feet in as well. Yes, it it's would. It's a nice little extra. I saw yeah. a thing the other day online. It was a handbag that came with its own little table. So you had this little case that you pulled out, opened out into a little folding table. To put your that bag. you then put your bag on so it didn't touch the floor. I think it was Gucci in fairness, but you that know. That is amazing. Isn't it? We'll have to work out how to figure out how to make one. Yeah, quite. <laughs> but stick it in our pants. <laughs> With people everywhere getting out their precious little table. Yeah, Love it that. is precious, yeah. that's for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's how you put the straps in. So you do that after you've put the lining in, because then you imagine that seam allowance has gone, because you've used that to attach to the lining. Mm -hmm. And that is why you don't top stitch on those side panels, because if you top stitch on that side panel, you're not going to be able to feed that in. Does that make sense? Um, and the stitching helps keep the lining just on the sides down and secure and then on the front and the back you do do your top stitching. It's a beautiful little extra detail okay. there. I love that. <laughs> Gorgeous. Brilliant. Gorgeous. Oh my goodness. I knew we were going to learn a lot in this hour, but haven't <laughs> we learned a lot? Loads of new techniques. My mind is buzzing. Yeah. Um, grab your pattern while you can, won't you? Um, it's a fantastic pattern. You've got all your full-size paper pattern pieces. You've also got your full photo-guided, step-by-step instructions for making the bag and also for doing all of the weaving as well. What a brilliant technique. Single figures of the pattern now left to allocate. So you do need to be quick and you do need to check out your baskets on that. 9 is an amazing pattern, isn't it? An amazing price for this great pattern. And to learn a brand new technique, I know we had the benefit of seeing Emma show us today, um, but I think it's great when we can support a designer by the pattern and support that creativity moving forward as well. I'm sure you've got so many more patterns to bring us. I do. And also, I forgot to mention as well, if you do ever get stuck with any of my patterns, you can either um, comment on the YouTube video uh, that it pertains to, or I have a Facebook group, So Create and Craft. Um, which you can post in there, ask questions about anything. 
Um, lo there's loads of people post any of their makes in there, so it's really inspiring. And you know, tag me in the Sewing Street Fans page group, um, group sorry, as well, if you get stuck um, with anything. I'm always more than happy to help. I love helping we people. We will. We <laughs> will. Emma, what gorgeous bag. Thank you so much for bringing Aww, that to you. Sewing Street. Brilliant. And I've loved my first hour with you. Oh, me too. We've thank got you, another Shirley. hour later. We do. We do. What are yet. we doing now? We are, oh, we've got three patterns there. Three. Yeah. Including, including the, the popular dinosaur that sold out quickly last time. Love, love, love. And Exciting. let me just little teasers. Look at this fabulous storage boxes with lids. I mean, they are so stylish as well. And then the third thing, we've got this absolutely beautiful box pouch, strip pieced, quilt as you go, uh, box pouch. Love, love, love that. I want to make a gazillion of these as Christmas presents. It would be such a good Christmas present because you can use it as a makeup bag, pencil case. Both. Both. Loving it. <laughs> loving it, loving it. We'll see you at 12 o'clock. Yep. Okay. Ben, where do you want me to go? <laughs> we're going to go to a break. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. There was just the sound of silence. Uh, we're going to go to a break. When we come back, it's Catherine Rice back with the gorgeous pinafore dress. Can't wait. See you in a few minutes. Hello, my name's Rebecca Harrison. Uh, my background is in theatre costume, so I've made uh, costumes for film, TV and theatre. Um, I began to sew when I was at school, in primary school, and I also uh, did a lot of sewing with my mum at home. Um, one of the first things that I ever made um, was this little mouse, um, and I hand sewed her at primary school. I think I was eight or nine um, when I did her, um, and I treasure her. She's, uh, she, she's I just love her. Her, her head's, her stuffing's gone in her head, so she's a bit wobbly. Um, my favourite things to sew of course it's um, probably because of my uh, period background um, but I just love them I've got one here um, I love the structure of them um, the shape the bones make I, I just think they're beautiful um, and the fact that through the ages they've changed to uh, make women's shape different um, and I find that really fascinating um, my claim to fame is um, because I've obviously uh, doing costumes for film and theatre, I've been lucky enough to meet um, a lot of famous people. So um, I've met people like uh, Dame Judi Dench, uh, Kate Winslet, uh, Juliette Binoche, uh, lots, oh gosh, lots and lots of people, lots more than I can probably, I haven't got time to say them all. Um, but yeah, just, and, and all around the building where I used to work um, in London, you'd see lot, lots of people, Christopher Lee, Sir Richard Attenborough, um, yeah, just lo lots and lots of people. Um, so it was, it was really lovely. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I feel very privileged to do what I do. I love my job and I'm very lucky that I get to do it every day. Um, and I really enjoy being on Sewing Street and uh, demonstrating um, how to make things and um, hopefully inspire you uh, to get to get sewing. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Hi, it's Yvonne here. As you all know, I was born in Carrick, Fergus in Northern Ireland. And we're getting to that point in the year whenever I get to go home. From the 1st of September, the Stormont Hotel in Belfast becomes the home of Quilt Fair. 
which is an event that together with my friends Margaret and Helm, we have reintroduced into the north, into the island of Ireland. We are really looking forward to this, our second event. We have retained many of the features that you like from last year's show. We have those nice wide aisles. We have all those expert traders and our free talks and demos in our schoolhouse. In addition, this year we have added our creative workshops, which Sewing Street has so generously sponsored for us. So this year we have added in two exhibitions. One of them, Old Roots, New Shoots, is from the Irish Patchwork Society. And the other exhibition is the work from our traders. It's, it's entitled, This Is What We Do. So I really hope that I will see a lot of you there. We thank everyone for their continuing support in this venture that we have to create the best little quilt show in Ireland. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. Full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and enjoyable as possible. Not only will they take your order, they'll also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favourite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Do you know, Ben's a little minxy as he's just killed Facebook for me. I'm just going to start it all back up again so that we can communicate. It adds a little bit of, you know, a little freeze on of excitement though, doesn't it? You know, so there we go and live and play. And we're back in the room. Very good. Excellent. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Sewing Street. No, it's just died again. Um, I'm here with Catherine Wright. Hello. Hello again. How are you doing? Yes, very good. Thank you. <laughs> there were so many comments in your last hour about your gorgeous wear anywhere pinafore dress that you're wearing. Lots of people asking, did you make it? Did you make it? I half made it. Helena, my daughter, actually made most of it for me. It's a really gorgeous dress. Thank you. This is a piece, so it was really to show you, because we always do this in like denim and cotton type things, um, but it's also, this is actually a heavyweight jersey, it's a Ponte Roma, so you can actually make it in a stretch fabric as well. Oh, nice. So, and I'd got this piece with a really nice pattern on, I mean, some are tiptoe so you can see as much as possible, and, um, it the, was the sort of pattern you didn't want to have anything too fussy and I suddenly thought oh I know I'll make it uh, I'll make it up to show everyone so yes I am modeling the wear anywhere pinafore dress awesome. today which is our main focus for today's show it's the wear anywhere pinafore dress we're going to start by looking at the pattern now the pattern comes in five different broad sizes so you've got an extra small which is equivalent to a four to eight a small which is a 10 to 14, a medium 
UK 14 to 18, a large 18 to 22, and an extra large 22 to 26. So nice relaxed fit, yes. easy sizing. Very You've got on there, um, the narrowest part is your hips. So on the back of the pattern, you've got your finished hip width. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the size of the dress when you've made it. So if you measure your hips, if you can assess if that's going to be the right size for you. But you can pretty much go with your UK dress size unless you are a particularly wide hipped person and then you might need to fiddle it. Yeah, I know lots of people are sort of, you know, one size up here, different size down there, but you would go with the hip measurement. I would go with the hip. Um, it's a very, very straightforward pattern to adjust as well. Um, but I will, I will have a, when we get, get into it, a little talk to you about how you can adjust it as well, because it's very easy to do. Fab. I, mean, I also, I'm already spotting on the pattern lengthening lines. We were talking about those at the start of the day, actually. So if you want to lengthen or shorten the pinafore, yeah. again, really straightforward yes. and easy. It's already been thought through. I love that. Um, so you've got those five different sizes. You've got your finished hip measurement, which is really where you're taking your measurement from and base your, your choice around that. And then fabric wise, we've got two, two different um, versions, version A and version B. What's the difference between the two? Uh, it's literally the length really. So version A is the, like the one on the little stand there. So it's a shorter oh, version, God. tends to, on me, it comes just above my knee. So I wear this with like thick tights and boots in the winter. Or if you're making it for, you know, a youngster, they like them shorter, don't they? Like that, like that very much. Absolutely. And then, and then version B, that's, that's not, that's the apron dress. Oh, thank you. Um, version B is actually what I'm wearing. I know you can't see it but it's longer and it's got a little split in the side so for me I've actually done it so that it comes just below my knee but actually the pattern goes right down to mid calf ah okay so for people who like to wear them longer yeah, as yeah. Many ladies or if you're do, taller or if you're taller absolutely perfect I really like that so lots and lots of options and a real kind of now you've called it the wear anywhere pinafore dress and again I think this is something that gives you so many options in kind of fabric plain or pattern I'm thinking needle cord would be lovely. My, I, I tend to, I've got a green needle cord one that I wear all the time Love in the winter. Love needle cord. Polo neck underneath it because exactly. I'm always cold. Thick tights. Thick tights. Really nice. Perfect. Really nice. Such a versatile dress. Love this. Um, am I right in saying this is the one that you sold out of at festival? Uh, no, no, it's not. It's the other one. It's the other one. But really, a really popular <laughs> yes, pattern. Yes, we've had it on here before and sold out a couple of times before here on Sewing Street. Okay, fair warning, fair warning. <laughs> Now then, um, just in terms of the quality, you've got beautiful quality cartridge paper pattern inside here. So none of that sort of flimsy tissue. This is a pattern that's made to last. Uh, Catherine, are you a uh, cut the size out or trace it off and cut that size? I'm a cut the size out. Cut the size out from your yes. pattern. Yeah. <laughs> Stick with your size. Perfect. But that's only because I'm a bit lazy. Uh, it takes extra time to do the tracing. A little bit of but extra if you, time. But you know, if you've got the pattern, you think, oh, I'm going to make it for different people, trace it off, actually. Use it. Use all the sizes. Yeah. You might as well. Or if you're somebody that's kind of maybe transitioning from one weight to another. Absolutely. And you can still make it now and then make it again in the future as well. So yes. I like that option. I like that option. We've also got some really, really beautiful bundles of fabrics. Now, these are perfect for the wear anywhere pinafore dress, but they are also perfect for another pattern that we've got coming up. We've got the linen apron pattern, they'd work for that. Okay. Yes, okay. absolutely. We've also got the one stop apron dress and they would also work really well for that. Yes. Just need to mention while we're here actually, the one stop apron dress is seriously limited. We're gonna put the graphics in right now because it's so, so limited that it's gonna sell out before we ever get to it. So I wanna give you a fair crack of the whip. And We've also a couple of really gorgeous bag patterns which I'm very drawn to, but I must control myself and leave those for later. But I just wanted to mention, because these fabric bundles would work for those other patterns, these are also great stash builders and they are flying out of the door. I was going to say like hotcakes, 
flying out the door. <laughs> ah, have them. <laughs> so I'm going to mention these now. Right, let's start off. Now these are all two meter bundles. We'll start with NJ69. Loving this. They've got a, such a nice, that's the one I've, I've got pinned out. They've got yeah. such a nice feel to them. Really? They're going lovely. to sew so nicely and wear, wash and wear really nicely. And look at that as well. So it's it's like a sort of a chambray denim isn't yes. it yeah. um not a heavy heavyweight denim this is nice and light so this is good for layering nice for layering um this would also be a really good kind of shirting weight as well you could make a really nice shirt or blouse out of this i'm just thinking about building up that dressmaking stash when you see lovely fabric and the price is amazing 14.99 for, for two meters. meters that is fantastic yeah do you know, know what it's, great. it's getting cheaper to make your own clothes than to buy them it who'd have really thought we ever is. got there it, well it was back in the 70s and it right. is again definitely but that was always the thing we said wasn't it you can't find nice fabric and if you can it's more expensive to make than yeah. go out and buy them ready-made and you're right yeah. it's getting to that stage now you can make this gorgeous pinafore dress for the price of the pattern and 14.99 plus a reel or two of thread fantastic and a dress you'll make again and again now our next one i love a stripe this is nice i love a stripe gorgeous 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 look at this and it's a little bit of a wobbly stripe which i'm also really keen on look at that it's just almost got like a little slub along it it's a print rather it's going than a to weave. be very slimming that is providing that. you make sure you get this <laughs> stripes going downwards that's right <laughs> That is really smart though, isn't it? And I just to give you a sense of scale, if I just kind of put my chubby fingers next to it, so you should get, yeah. So it's about a centimetre and a half width, something mm. like that. Love it. Now then, next up, what about a bit of colourful floral on that Chambray background? This is JP09. Look at that. That is a bit different, isn't it? Really yummy. I like the option of this because I'm thinking, you know, we were talking about polar neck or so, t-shirt underneath and tights. I'm just thinking of all those colours that you could pull out of there. You know, either that creamy white, which would be lovely for mm, a t-shirt underneath would. this. Yeah. But also you could pull out that hot, hot pink, pink like I'm wearing. That'd be lush. Or that lovely kind of really golden rich kind of egg yolk yellow. That's really lovely that green as well i mean just play with it love that and again the price 18.99 for that one to make something really special really different right next one this is nice that kind of swallows I like that. it's pretty isn't it it's just got a lovely fresh dare i say it a little bit nautical so very slightly very slightly yeah. just kind of a little bit by the sea this makes me think of janet claire Janet's done some lovely sort of, you know, yeah. sea-themed fabrics. I think that's really lovely. Really lovely. A little bit abstract. Now this next one, or last one rather, this is JR34. This has got lovely shaded floral on it. Isn't that lovely? And it just sort of elevates. And I love plain denim plain denim looks gorgeous but i love that print on top just makes the whole thing a bit more feminine see that would be nice with black under gray under again lots of colors you can you can pull out you could absolutely well it's a dress that will take you year round totally yeah because i mean you could totally imagine going to the beach wearing that pinafore dress and a t-shirt pair of trainers but then like you said i'm also thinking polo neck thick thick tights boots cardigan over the top yeah third that's of the basically stuff of the me gone. in the winter <laughs> really? oh and a vest if i just described you <laughs> yeah best lovely. polo neck pinafore cardi <laughs> <laughs> gloves big hat. chunky bag hat <laughs> lovely do you knit yes excellent love to knit love it love it so many so many options i like the neckline as well gives room for some jewelry doesn't it it does it does yeah. it's, it's one of those just so easy to wear very comfortable and easy to make pull it on so easy to make show absolutely. me how show absolutely me how. so um I was going to talk to you a little bit about choosing and sizing and things like that. This is a lovely beginner's pattern and it's really easy to make. But people, when they're starting to dress make, 
get very worried about fit and cutting out and how to start. And actually the cutting out's your most important bit because this bit you can't unpick and have another go at if you don't do it right. You've got to get it right first time, mm. haven't you, cutting out? So you can see this, I've cut out a medium today. Um, and I've cut carefully round the black line. So cut it out neatly for starters. Now, if you've measured yourself and you think, oh, actually, I'm coming up like a medium on my hips, but I know I'm quite small on top. I'm more like a small and it's going to be too um, baggy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stuart's measuring his hips. Just measuring my hips <laughs> To see now. what size he's Just going to, to say. wear. <laughs> Um, you don't look, don't stop watching. <laughs> you, can, uh, great you, can, you can cut between sizes. Yeah, there's nothing to say you have to stick to these lines as long as you stick to the right shape. So, say you think you're smaller up here, you can start on your small line, and by the time you get down to your hips, have graduated it out to the medium if you want to. I'm going to draw oh, that I in see. just to show oh. you. And this is something you can do on any dress pattern that you think, oh no, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm falling between the sizes. So you could cut it at a little bit of a slope like that. Then it's still, it's going to fit better. Or if you're totally falling between sizes and you're not sure, go halfway between, all the way around. It will still work and awesome. it will fit you better. Quick question from Christine who yes. asks, uh, Catherine, would two meters be enough for the larger size it's enough uh, for the very for the very largest extra large size if you want to do the longer version you actually need two and a half meters that's but the only one two meters is enough for the extra large that's the 22 to 26 in the version a which is the, the version shorter one. the shorter version Yes, which if there's a tape measure, I will measure that. I do, I have a tape measure. And yes, you just <laughs> used yeah. it, didn't you? There and I is. will tell you how long that comes out. Great. So, the extra large version A is 36 inches long. And you can do a tiny hem. So, you, you can see. And that, that you can get out of two metres. Mm. I'm also thinking as well that, well, tell me, could you add a contrast band around the bottom Absolutely, edge? Absolutely, if you wanted to. Just thinking if you had like some yes. plain denim, which was the similar weight or yes. something like that, or a floral cotton. Yeah, it'd be nice, little, wouldn't it? It'd be very nice. Like four inch or something. Now, if, you're, if you are tall, particularly tall, and want to lengthen your pattern, you have got a length A and B here. You would cut it at your A, push it down as far as you want it to go and insert another piece in there. So you could, if you decide you want to do a band, yeah, lengthen it out a bit and use that bottom bit as your pattern for the band and then you'd know it was the right shape as well. Cool, awesome. Mm. Um, but you lengthen here rather than at the bottom because it keeps the shape right. You don't want things to kind of flare out in a 1970s way. Understood, unless that's absolutely unless the look that's you're going what you're for. going for. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> According so, to Charlie, our director, it's coming back. Oh, is it? Apparently so. Mm. Apparently so. I was there in the 70s, you know, we've been there, done that. Well, I was little. I spent, uh, yeah, I remember a lot of crocheted tank tops. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Again, coming back. Yeah. Coming back. I always think if you've done it the first time round, perhaps not the second. It's true. I mean, I the love the 80s, like but I'm not sure I can ever wear a mohair bat wing ever again <laughs> with bright blue guy liner. Who knows? Well, I did lots and lots of knitting in the 80s. I had a mohair, like, backless jumper. Oh, gorgeous. Completely impractical. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, yeah, kind of one cancels the other, doesn't yes. it? Yeah, if it's hot enough for backlift, you probably don't want to wear no hair. hair. No. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that was the 80s. What is nice about the mohairs that are coming through now, they're not so, you know, yes. where they used to be big mohair. Yes. They're kind of, it's a haze and yes. it's really quite flattering. Yes. Yeah, things have changed a bit, haven't they? <laughs> Okay, so we've got, if you, if you look how I've got it pinned on, I have folded my fabric so that we've got selvages at the end here and it's going into the middle and this gives me two folds. <coughs> oh, well, I like okay. that. Yeah, it, it saves fabric. Yeah. 
because each piece is cut. I mean, this is literally two pattern pieces in your pocket. Couldn't have less. Is that it? it? Really. That's it. Wow, I told you awesome. It was easy. <laughs> it's so appealing if you are the be either a beginner or you're someone that loves to like make their own wardrobe and you know you you want you find a pattern that really suits you you feel comfortable in and you make it five times don't you well i can make one of these in an evening nice one yeah you know i sort of decided on thursday oh what am i going to wear on Sewing street helena cut a pinafore out so that's the one you made yeah fabulous yes. so i'm cutting around nice and carefully lovely sharp scissors is what you need It's always hard cutting round curves. When you're at home, she said falling over, if you can get round the table, you always want to try and cut so it's going away from you mm. because it's much easier than trying to get your arm round the corner. I'm going to have to do a little bit of wiggling, but it's yeah. not too bad. Um, now, on my pattern, there are some little black lines which are for notches which are for matching and you do want to now I tend to when I'm cutting notches out snip them outwards rather than inwards just because if you snip inwards you're snipping into your seam allowance and if you have to let them out it's tricky so gotcha. I, would, I would recommend just doing a little triangle outwards. You can perhaps see better as I come round to this one. And people often forget their notches. So if, you, if you're one of those people that forgets them, if you ever come to my dressmaking classes, People say I'm, I'm a bit I'm a bit fierce about notches. Who are you? <laughs> Just I'm not really. I'm I'm very nice, but um, <laughs> but. If you remember to do them, it just makes the construction so much easier. Yeah, it they're, all they're goes not there for fun, are no, they? No, it all goes they're together useful. so much better than if you forget them. So I just I just say it a lot. Don't forget your, don't forget your notches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You want your students to be successful. Absolutely. Yeah. Now like on your that. pattern, you've got a couple of things to mark. If you're doing the long version, which I've cut out here, you'll see there's a little dot there, which ma marks where the top of the split is. And then there's also marks to show where your uh, pockets are placed. Uh, there's two ways you can mark things up. Well, there's multiple ways, but I tend to use Taylor's tacks mm -hmm. because I'm a bit old school. So uh, for a tailor's tack, you've got a double thread. Let's see, there's this one. So where your dot is, you're going all the way <coughs> through, through everything. Leave a little tail and then all the way through again and leave a loop and then just snip off leaving a tail so you've got a little loopy bit mm -hmm. on your top of your pattern piece and i i tend to do these as well because they kind of they stay in if you mark up i'll show you how to mark up yeah. on this one sometimes it can rub off yeah 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 and then it's hard you've got to get your pattern out again and you've got to mark it up again but the other yeah. thing you can do you can get taylor's chalk or a friction pen and you can pop a pin through where you need to mark. But I like old school. I'm old school myself. And, I, and it always reminds me of um, when Esme Young joined the um, judging team on the Great British Sewing Bee. Mm -hmm. She was going round, this is a bit of insider, they didn't show this on the series, but she was going round and she said to somebody who was using clips, you know, yes. like the, the wonder clips on really oh, yeah. sort of fine fabric. And she went up and said, look, you know, use pins. I know this is very fashionable, but pins have been around for a very, very long time yeah. for very, very <laughs> good very reasons. Well. Yeah. yeah, try pins. And yes. of course it was easier, she was more successful. Yes. So it's just knowing when to use the technique, isn't it really? Well, it is. I mean, 
I always cut out dressmaking projects with scissors. I don't use the rotary cutter. No, it, I never that scares would use me. the rotary cutter. Yeah, I'm I mean, for starters, you need a massive cutting board. Right. You know, that doesn't fit on a cutting board and no. you've got to move it around. I'd be afraid of cutting into my table. Well, exactly. And I don't like freehand cutting either. The rule is there to protect your fingers, isn't it? So you start kind of just running a running a, a rotary cutter around a pattern. I'm with you, scissors, all the so, way. So nice sharp scissors works, I think, best. Um, what was I going to say? Also, you don't always know when you buy your pattern fabric, it tells you how much fabric you need, but you don't know how close it is sometimes. Mm. Or sometimes you might have a little bit less or you're trying to squeeze it out. If you're cutting out a piece at a time on a rotary mat, you'll get to the end and discover you can't fit it all on. You need to have pinned it all on you're right. and make sure it's right before you cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Do your whole layout. Definitely. Well, at the very least, try it old school. See how you get on. Sometimes, you know, we just, we see something on a program, we think, oh, that's how you do it. And so that's how we do it. But there are lots of different techniques. Sometimes pattern weights, absolutely brilliant. Sometimes pinning your pattern is absolutely the way to go. Pattern weights are very good when you're working with a very sheer or floaty or silky fabric because or if your pin might mark the fabric, yeah. then that works well. Yeah. But of course, there are lots of different sorts of pins. There are. And you can You're get the right You're opening a pin. can of worms now. Well, I am, aren't I? <laughs> now, just need to let you know, 45, sorry, 44 of the Wear Anywhere Pinafore dress patterns are left. Now 43, but we've got 51 in baskets, okay? <gasps> The maths doesn't stack up. Stuart. You do the math. <laughs> you do the math. I'll do the maths, but I will not do the math. <laughs> of course, right. when you're laying out your pattern as well, just think about which way around your pattern's going. If it's got a direction, so that you've got everything going in the same direction. That is important. Yeah. Yeah. When you do pockets on things, do you ever, I'll, I'll say from the get go, I really like it to match up with the pattern. I want to know where the pocket is. Okay. Do you know what I mean? If it was a stripe, I get that. It depends on the fabric. Yeah. So I actually love a pattern matched pocket. Do you? On, if you've got a fabric with a big pattern. Big, yeah. I've got a pinafore I made and it's got big poppies all over it. And I pattern matched it so beautifully that every time I wear it, I'm really proud of myself. Yeah, because that would be very <laughs> and it distracting. it looks really good. But mm, if it's a small pattern like this, no, yeah. I wouldn't bother. That, that way madness can lie. I agree, I agree. <laughs> Someone once asked me, I used to write a, like a, you know, agony aunt column um, for a sewing magazine. And somebody once wrote in and asked, how do you pattern match micro gingham? I was like, oh, honestly, I, I, hear, I hear you, but I couldn't even contemplate trying to do that. There are just some pattern matching jobs I won't do. No, no. no. Sometimes, sometimes life is too short. Yeah, yes. I understand why you might want to, but I just, I couldn't do it myself, so. Yeah, I mean, if you chose that stripey fabric, yeah. it might be nice to pattern match that one. The pocket, yeah. But it actually equally might be nice to do it the other way and have them going across. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So, yeah. and I like, um, I quite like a contrast pocket as well, if you've got a plain, plain yeah. fabric to put a contrast on. I like gingham on the bias. Yes. I like that on the yoke. On a shirt, yes, that and looks then maybe really on a nice, pocket. Doesn't it? Yeah. So when you're taking your pattern off, just because I haven't cut through the loop on that tailor's tax, you just want to ease your pattern over it like that. Oh, so you like pull a little hole in the pattern? Yeah, and tiny. You through. Or you can slip the thread, right? You can, but if you keep the loop there, when you open this up and snip it through, you've got a a. a a thing like that on both bits, which helps it stay in better. Gotcha. Yes. Right. Let's just say, yes, you can open them out like that. 
and just snip through and really so a tailor's tack for your pocket is better really than your friction pen because else your friction pen is going to be on the reverse it's hard to get it on the yeah. inside old school there we go so there's that front all nicely prepped love that fabric it's nice where are we it? at with that fabric by the way i bet it's been popular yeah oh sorry ben's just gone over to gone to make me meet my tea is he making you a cup of tea <laughs> yes i'm so i'm blessed i'm blessed very lucky boy i'll just mark up those ones on the pocket there just for speed so you're just marking the same position on the pocket yeah so you've got two little dots on your pocket to mark that's going to match up with that so with this pattern um the pockets are the bit that take the longest really okay <laughs> but i do like a pocket yeah super useful well they are mine always have them pickers in them <laughs> i like it <laughs> good <laughs> My pockets generally have a tissue, a bit of loose change, often a hotel key, yes. and quite often a Werther's original. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Unpickers are or um, uh, meaty treats for the dog and a poo bag. <laughs> <laughs> I Love put, it. Put my meaty hand treats in, and a poo in, bag. Yeah. <laughs> Many a pocket and find those. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Should never really ask, should you? You <laughs> never ever look in the contents of someone's bag, no. do you? Because you know, horror, horror lies ahead. <laughs> so, because this has got a curved bottom on this pocket, Hello. we're going to stitch a little row of gathering stitches oh, around I love this bottom this. edge because yeah. it pulls it in really nicely. So, we'll just pop the machine up to a nice long stitch. Where's the foot pedal gone? It's gone walk about. <clears throat> there we go. I've actually started doing some sewing in the craft centre standing up these days. Have you? <laughs> well, you kind of get used to it, don't you? You do. Well, we had an ergonomics expert in um, just before Festival of Quilts, Rose Parr, um, who's written a book called So Happy and Healthy. And it's all about sort of ergonomics of sewing and pressing and things like that so that we can sew and dress make and quilt pain free. Uh -huh. And um, so we were talking about using a standing desk you know, the kind that you can raise and lower so you can sit at them, stand at them. Yeah. And doing a mixture of that with sewing. And I'm quite tempted to get one in for my studio. Just more from a kind of health point of view, because otherwise I find I spend eight or ten hours. Well, I, like I've this. got tables in the craft centre, which we tend to use for quick cutting out, but they raise and lower. Mm. We're not expensive. Um, um, but they're really good and I find I do even computer work I will mm. put on this raised up table and do standing yeah. up it's worth a try isn't it it's definitely worth a try this one's slightly too high it is a little so you're just sewing around the curve and around the bottom yes of the so can you see see on this one so I've done it inside it's a one centimeter seam allowance on this pattern so I've done it inside my seam allowance <clears> so you can't see it when we um, pull it up and sew it so it's just round this bottom these bottom corners and you've used the longest stitch length the on your machine the longest stitch yeah it goes up to number five on this machine okay. we can do it by hand but it's just quicker on your mm -hmm, on your machine mm -hmm. with a long stitch and make sure you don't snip it off if you've got scissors or whatever else it'll lock it and you won't mm. be able to gather it up you want to and put him in a machine back straight away because oh. you know what the times <laughs> yes. that you've done gathering and then you stitch something else and you realize you've only tacked it in is just yes. too many i sewed a whole bag together with 4.5 <laughs> the other day Catherine. so i know exactly what you mean i frequently do it with sleeves because you get you gather the top pin it all in sew all the way around oh bother yeah. So all the way around to Same go. with top stitching, isn't it? If you're top stitching as you go, you tend to go up for your top stitch and it's remembrance. So your top tip would be do it straight away. Yes. <laughs> do it straight away. I'm just gonna move that out of the way so I can get the eye in. Thank you. So with our pockets, what we're going to do first is we're going to fold down a centimetre to the inside and press that. And then we're going to fold it 
back to the right side, a bit larger, about two centimetres, and press that. Just while Catherine's pressing 12 of the Wear Anywhere Pinafore dress pattern left. I think okay. nearly everybody, every lady in this country is going to be wearing this pinafore. Isn't that lovely? We can start though. a revolution. Yeah. It's just it's a lovely, lovely, flattering dress, though, isn't it? Practical as well. Yes, absolutely. Which is what we want. We don't all want to be doled up all the time. We just want to be comfy, but still look nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know doesn't have to be a big sack dress. It's like my jeans and a shirt, you know, you can put it on, you feel dressed, you know, but it's not all restrictive. And I hate clothes that kind of like knock you in. And yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So I must admit, I often look and think, oh, no waistband. <laughs> oh, oh, where's the male equivalent? Yes. Could wear and, a caftan. And uh, a lot of ladies, especially when, when you get a little more mature, start to find it's your waist that thickens and everything starts just to get a bit uncomfortable and you just mm. you don't feel like you want to be cut off here mm. especially if mm. you've got clothes that like maybe you have a bodice and a skirt you just right. stop feeling that they flatter you mm -hmm. whereas if it just kind of skims down a it's more comfortable and b it's actually really flattering mm -hmm. and you can use those lovely prints as well can't you like the printed denims which are gorgeous i'm loving all of these or a big bold floral or just whatever makes you happy um, lovely message from elizabeth i want to read to you catherine she says morning Stuart and catherine morning my lovely thoroughly enjoying the demo and love the old school references i once made a button through pinafore from a yard of tartan and actually matched the plaid it was 1969 in the days of mini skirts which were no more than pell mitts <laughs> that would be so cool now though i love of course it would of course it, it, would. Course it, it. would yeah um, so if you press them both at the same time you can make sure you've got them the same and then we're just just going to sew down literally these edges of the part that you've pressed three patterns left three pa three patterns left One left, <laughs> one left, one left. Is it going to be like on the other, that one that sits there? Yeah, but it didn't, Catherine. It, it didn't, didn't. Know, did it? No, it went. Yeah, it went. Mm. Okay. So when you've done that, get the little ends out of the way, um, you can just take the bulk out of this just trim it down a little I really like doing pockets mm. <laughs> okay. I love it there's there's quite a few there seems to be a bit of a hashtag, doesn't there? It has pockets. Oh, every lady wants a pocket, yeah. really. And a lot of bought clothes don't have pockets. Yeah. A bit. I don't oh. know why. Just need to do my favourite. Sold out. <laughs> Sold out. Um, I remember hearing a radio show about the sort of politics of pockets in women's clothes right and there was something like there were never pockets but it was all about sort of like what a woman might hide in her pocket and the sort of suspicions of men <laughs> of what a woman might conceal if she were allowed Catherine if she were allowed <laughs> pockets the sort of political overthrow that might How honestly bizarre, really? honestly yeah 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 and really we'd only be putting cake in there <laughs> <laughs> well then there really shouldn't be pockets on men's clothes either Catherine because that's exactly what I've got in mind plus the word is original of course so you're going to when you've done these trimmed them you're going to turn that top edge through and press it and then I'm going to top stitch along this edge this will start to get pressed in as well but we'll finish that off once I've top stitched it yeah yeah that's a gorgeously neat top to the pocket isn't it 
Yes. Absolutely yes. immaculate. I remember when we had to add pockets to a skirt on, on the sewing bee. That is the thing I really, really remember from your, yes. your season. Yes. They were all so impressed with your tulip pockets. Tulip pockets. <laughs> it was my one moment to shine, Catherine. <laughs> Only because it brought out the quilter in me, you know, sort of applique and, you know, that it could be a, a different shape. But I remember so clearly how raggedy the tops of virtually every pocket was because it was just kind of folded over and top stitched this is a proper this neat is a, it yeah. is it's a lovely neat way to do it i've managed to catch the end of the cotton in there which is a bit annoying but i'll just snip it off okay so you can see that makes a, it does make a really nice neat top really stunning. now you can do like i've done on the one there which is i use the the um, yeah. binding to we just edge the top of the pocket as well. Mm. Like that. So you could put a bit of contrast binding. It's cute. This is another version, isn't it? And with so the band that's edge. that's the shorter version. Yeah. Um, using a slightly wider binding than the pattern tells you to use. Because um, the, the armholes and neck are all bound with bias binding. Gotcha. Um, and the pattern calls for hmm, what what width? I don't know. Let me let me remind myself. The thinnest you can get, which I think is about is it three eighths. Oh, you're in inches. Oh, yeah. Really old school me. It's just over a, a centimetre. Gotcha. Yeah, um, but that one's a slightly wider one, so you mm -hmm. can then make it decorative. Yeah, so you can make a feature of it. You can Absolutely. make your own bias binding as well, presumably. You can make your own bias binding. You've just wanted to mention while Catherine's finishing off the edge there, the prim pattern paper. <coughs> so this is for those of us that like to trace our pattern off, especially if you're either between sizes or you're maybe, you know, on a weight loss journey and you want to make this size right now, but you might want to make another size in the future. Or you're making multiple sizes. Every pattern I ever make, Catherine, I end up making in two different sizes, one for me, one for Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we definitely can't share a wardrobe. <laughs> But uh, this is great. So you get 10 metres, it's a metre wide by 10 metres in, in length and you can use this to trace off your patterns. It's that same kind of cartridge paper that's used for dressmaking patterns. Details are on screen. So then you're going to carefully gather up those stitches that you did earlier and just, if you just sort of Give them a little tweak so that they're nice and even and you can see that it's made that that curve you won't mm. see the gathering on the right side when you've pressed it but it just makes that curve nice and neat and then you can press that in place like that well it's not it's it's not difficult but make has make gives it a really good finish doesn't yeah. it and we'll just pin that press that carefully I've got it where I want it. I can trim those little ends off. Okay, and then we can find our dots here mm -hmm. and place it on. You see, it doesn't matter there that that isn't pattern matched. It really doesn't. It It's too busy a pattern for it to need to be. Yeah. Just need to make sure the pattern's up the right way. Yes. Is mine up the right way? Yeah, yeah. I think it is. Oh yeah, I didn't say it for any other, but, but just, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Like you look at a floral and you think, oh, it's all over, you know, everything's, but. No, there will be, when you look at your fabric, there will be one way that looks more right than the other yeah. way. And if you can't tell, just choose and make it all the same. Yeah. Because you will, even if it looks really, really similar, you will notice if you've made it I different. usually discover that a floral's got, a, you know, a direction after I've cut it, Catherine, so I'm kind of committed. So I know exactly what you mean there. <laughs> uh, Amanda 
this is a lovely message. Uh, I should definitely have got the pattern as I've lost three stone and I'm still going from a size 24 to a 16, 18 at the moment. Well, Amanda, first of all, amazing. Well done for, you know, doing that. And, and I hope you're feeling healthier for it. And yeah, I agree. You know, it's lovely to have. Well, first thing I like about all of the, your dressmaking patterns is that they're all sized sort of between this size and this size. So like for example with your one stop apron dress, it's a 10 to a 14, a 14 to an 18, an 18 to a 22. Details are just coming up now, a 22 to a 26. So you know even if you're between sizes or you're kind of here but you're heading here or the other way around, I mean this could be worn like for example if you're pregnant. <laughs> yes absolutely. And so you're going or the other way. If, like me, Stuart, you've been on holiday and just eaten way too much. <laughs> Isn't that the point of going on holiday, really? So that's Amanda who uh, messaged in earlier about coming to my patchwork. Yeah. I'm not going to recognise her. She's lost you know, so much weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah, absolutely. That's what holidays are for, Amanda, surely. Amanda, sorry. Catherine. <laughs> yes. It was good. It was good. I remember the first time Charlie and I ever went on an all-inclusive and we said as we were driving to the hotel, now we'll, you know, we're not going to go over the top, we'll have like fruit and yoghurt for breakfast <laughs> and like lunchtime we'll just have maybe like a piece of chicken and some salad, no alcohol <laughs> and then and literally the very first day we were there we said no to wine and the waiter said to us, are you driving somewhere, have you got work this afternoon and we were like no and he was like why not then? So what are, you, what are you doing? We were like, yeah, you're right. We're here for a week. Come on. <laughs> How bad can it be? And then we found out. <laughs> oh, it's got to be done. Yeah, yeah. Right, so we'll pin that one on as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you sew your pockets on, you need to make sure you get them really nice and secure at these top corners. So there are two ways you can do it. You can either, as you sew them, literally go past and then reverse, so it's extra strong. Mm -hmm. But I quite like to sew it and do a little triangle. I like that too. It just, it looks quite nice, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. You can also do a double row round if you're feeling fancy. You know, nice. you can make your stitching a little bit of a feature, mm. can't you? Mm, definitely. I really I'd... like doing top stitching. Do so you? I often do it, yeah. Yeah, there's funny things I like. Well, <laughs> so now I'm just going to take you back to our conversation earlier about <laughs> quilting yes, on a I quilt, know. which is top stitching. I know, I yeah. know, it's so weird. I, I have top stitching on every garment I make myself. <laughs> it's all in my mind, isn't it? Well, sometimes it's just, you've heard other people say it so many times, oh, I don't like the quilting. And actually you can, every single process you can learn to love. I promise you, well, I promise I'm, I'm going you. to go home now and say that to myself and be much more positive about yeah. it yes definitely often it's the keep going do more you know i remember quilting a log cabin quilt and there was one section that i wanted that i started doing if you imagine it was on point and i did this one line of quilting all the way around and i did the first line and i hated it and i thought oh this is so it's not right and then I thought, I really don't want to unpick that, even that one line of quilting. And I thought, just keep going, just keep going. Remember what you tell everybody else. <laughs> so I did another line, a quarter of an inch away, and another, and another, and I did about 16 lines. Oh my goodness, I loved it. Love it in the end. You just got to keep going sometimes. Yes. Okay. Next time I see you, I shall have, I shall, I shall go home and I shall do some, and then I'll be able to tell you yeah. that I'm Getting better. We can always improve at things and get better and practice. It's really good advice. Really good advice. So you're top stitching the pocket so in I'm place now. I'm top stitching my pocket in place. Absolutely. So there's a little guide on the foot that just. Um, so you often get little lines, little notches on the feet that will you can line up with. Yes. So that helps you to keep a nice equal distance from the edge. 
Don't sew across to the top of the pocket. No. <laughs> <laughs> Only around the curved part. <laughs> yes, don't get overexcited and sew it oh, up. Oh, yeah. Oh, we've all done these things, haven't we? I've sewn all the way around a bag, you know, no top, no, you can't get in. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I always, always forget to leave the, yes. the hole for bagging out. Is that why you've always got a seam ripper in your pocket? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I once had a lady, she was like making a lined uh, shift dress and she literally just sewed the lining the whole way around so you could turn none of it around. We had to do so much unpicking. Oh. <laughs> but you live and you learn. You and as really I say, do. The, the, um, you know, the sewing part, that is okay. You can unpick that and have another go. Of course you can. He said earlier on, the only thing you can't unpick is the is the cutting out. You've got to get that right. It's it's the bit you've got to. People always think it takes a very long time, mm. and they'll say, "Oh, because often, especially a more complicated pattern, you can probably spend a couple of hours mm. laying it out, pinning, mm. cutting it out." But it's worth it yeah. to have a nicely cut out, correct thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really is. And I like cutting out. Yeah. You embrace every aspect. Yeah, I do. Well, it, a lot of people are a bit nervous about cutting out. When my mum taught me to sew when I was little, um, she always, and she taught me to dress make, and she'd do it all, and then she would get me to cut it out. And more recently, I said to her, do you know what, that was really good, you made me do it, because I'm never afraid of cutting it out. And she said, well, that's because I didn't like doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but then she gave you sort of gift that she didn't have herself, you yes. know, yes. enjoying doing that yeah. part. Yeah. I still, I still do it. cutting out for her now. Oh, do she's, you? She's like, oh, will you just cut out this for me? I don't mind. I don't mind. I like that. I like that. Because I actually like cutting out. Yeah, that's a bit of reverse psychology going on there, <laughs> yes, isn't it? Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Mums are clever. Oh, she taught, she taught me to knit and everything. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Lady. Got six minutes left. Only six minutes, Only right, we will run through. Minutes. So you can see I put that pocket on with my nice little triangles. Now, the rest of it is really very easy. You're going to join it, you put your other pocket on, you are going to join it at the side seams and the shoulders. At this stage, try it on. And then if you need to adjust it, you can adjust it. I'm short here, I always have to hoik my straps a little. Mm -hmm. And it's much better to do it now than when you've got it all together. When you've got your shoulders, fronts and backs together, we're going, you're going to edge it with the bias binding. I just can't find my bias binding. Hold on a sec. They gave me some spotty, which I, doesn't go that well, but I'll show you the principle. Yeah. And also... Quite often I do do a contrast, though, which is nice. And on your pinafore, I mean, I know on this one the binding I is shown. I the outside. Shown. Mostly, I, when it's narrow, I turn it to the, inside. To the inside. So this one I just did a coordinating one. There's other pinafores I've got where I've done one that's actually a complete contrast, so it's part of the design, so mm. you can play about with it. Mm. Um, you s imagine I've got that joined together. So you unfold one side of your binding. At the lower underarm, you're going to start it off and it's right sides together so that you pin it round all the way round up round your armhole across your shoulder down the other side and then you're going to stitch along along this bind this folded edge that gives you a great line to get it nice and easy yeah when you've done that you turn it all to the inside and it takes the inside with you like that so you press it all on the inside so you've got a lovely neat edge and then you stitch on this wrong side and stitch round to hold it all in place Understood. so you will have one row of stitching round that you see on the outside now it's such a smart finish as well for something that's unlined i like a i really like a bound edge i hardly ever do facings because i think they flap about and they're not mm -hmm. so comfy and a bound edge is lovely and neat so you do that on your armholes and you do that round your neckline if you make it out of a heavyweight stretch like i'm doing just be really careful not to overstretch your fabric when you do this else you'll get wobbles can I just ask quickly, if yes. you're doing the long version, yes. I think you were about to show us, aren't you? Was I going to show us? I was going to just explain the about split. this. Yes. Great, perfect. So what you do, front and back together, you come down to, you literally only stitch your side seam to the dot that you've marked. And then you press your seam open. When you fold in your hem, right at the end, 
you will then sew when you hem the last part your hem goes along the bottom up the split across the top of the split down round the back same on the other side so you, you then put that side split and hem in all in one go oh perfect and there are complete in details of that in the instruction awesome yes. which of course is sold out but you can get your hands on some of Catherine's other fabulous patterns the crazy patchwork craft bag the linen apron pattern uh, and the one stop apron dress uh, oh, and the tweed bag pattern as well look at this loveliness loving that absolutely gorgeous um, Lots of lovely messages for you, Catherine. I think we've all enjoyed seeing, you know, right back to basics, the layout, the cutting out. Like you said, it's so fundamental to success. Great opportunity today, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a wonderful Always lovely two hours. to be here. Thank you, it's lovely to have you. Um, when will we see you next? Uh, not long, 6th of September. Hurrah! Can't wait, <laughs> can't wait. See the diary. Thanks, Catherine. All right, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, Emma Brassfield is back with gorgeous dinosaurs. Don't go anywhere. Hello, everyone. I'm Delphine Brooks. I've been part of the Sewing Street family now for over a year, and it's been the most incredible journey so far. Some of you may already know that I like all things sewing, anything from quilting to toy making, needle felting, and of course, applique, which is my favourite. The best thing about being part of the show is being able to share with you my imagination and bringing you new ideas and new designs and patterns and seeing how you interpret those designs and make your own work and then sharing your images of those is the most rewarding part for me. I'm currently working on lots of new ideas and exciting projects that I cannot wait to bring to the show and share with you all. But in the meantime, take care everyone and happy sewing. We have some exciting news. Sewing Street has been nominated in the Best of Craft Awards and the British Sewing Awards for 2022. We're so amazed that two years have flown since Sewing Street started and we couldn't have done it all without our Sewing Street family. Thanks to our presenters and guests for entertaining and inspiring us every day and for all of our viewers for tuning in for all the fun. We've been lucky enough to be nominated for two awards this year, which are the most loved TV shopping channel at the Best of Crafts Awards and the best sewing social media account at the British Sewing Awards. To vote, please head to our website to find out all the details you need to get involved. Thank you for your support and votes. Have you heard about all the different ways you can shop on Sewing Street? You can shop on our website, sewingstreet.com, and you can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. Just call 0800 001 4433. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping. Hi, it's Yvonne here. As you all know, I was born in Carrick, Fergus in Northern Ireland. And we're getting to that point in the year whenever I get to go home. From the 1st of September, the Stormont Hotel in Belfast becomes the home of Quilt Fair which is an event that together with my friends Margaret and Helm we have reintroduced into the north into the island of Ireland. We are really looking forward to this our second event. We have retained many of the features that you like from last year's show. We have those nice wide aisles, we have all those expert traders and our free talks and demos in our schoolhouse. In addition this year we have added our creative workshops, which Sewing Street have so generously sponsored for us. So this year we have added in two exhibitions. One of them, Old Roots, New Shoots, is from the Irish Patchwork Society. And the other exhibition is the work from our traders. It's, it's entitled, This Is What We Do. 
So I really hope that I will see a lot of you there. We thank everyone for their continuing support in this venture that we have to create the best little quilt show in Ireland. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com, scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope, and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. Never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. Sewing Streets have our very own app. You can now watch and shop from anywhere. Simply download the app from your app store onto your smartphone or tablet, then log in or create an account and you're done. You can watch us live from anywhere, browse all our recently played items and pre-orders so you never miss out on any show deals and message the studio to say hello at any time. And remember, you can check out as many times as you want and only pay one P&P all day. Hi there, welcome back to Sewing Street. My goodness, what a morning we've had. It's been so much fun and so busy. Thanks for staying with us. Now in this last hour here on Sewing Street, I've got the fabulous Emma Brassfield. Hello. It's so lovely to finally work with you. It is, yeah, likewise. Oh, having oh. a great morning. Yeah. Now in our last hour, you brought us a fabulously innovative woven PU bag, which we all loved. This hour, you've got three gorgeous projects. We're gonna start with the one I've been absolutely crushing over all morning. It's the dinosaur zippy bag i just look at this it is so cute now now he can't bite me because his mouth's all zipped up and then <laughs> everything's fine you know i can put my oh, 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 oh. you knew that was coming come on oh i could never have been a children's entertainer definitely not but i mean how cute is that um, an absolutely gorgeous project. What a fun bit of sewing. And also really, really fun to gift as well. Whether you're making it, you know, for adults, children, yourself. Now, let me tell you what you need for this. Um, we've kind of made it as easy as possible. <coughs> so, first and foremost, we've got a couple of kits. Now, first of all, we're gonna do Sunset, which is the purples. The purples, yeah. Is that the right price for everything? Panel and pattern and the extra lining. I'm just checking this because that's blowing me away. Yeah. 14.99, <laughs> okay, okay. We don't have the pattern on its own. Well, do you know what? This is perfect because you've got a pre-printed panel here. You're getting your pattern, full pattern, pattern pieces for everything. Yep, yep. So we can use this for to make more dinos out of our stash. Oh, definitely, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, as you can see on the picture. Yeah, absolutely, yep. absolutely. So the fact that we've got a pre-printed panel makes making your first one an absolute breeze, but please don't think you can only make this once 
because you can make this as many times as you like. So your panel then is an exclusive designed for us here at Sewing Street. You've got your dinosaur skin sections which I think are just fabulous. I want meters of that. And then you've got coordinates, so you can really mix this up if you want to. You've got dinosaur bones, you've got textures, you've got loads of different sections to this. You've obviously got um, contrast to create the, now are they called spines? No, not spines. Spikes. Spikes. I call them spikes. Plates. <laughs> Various different things down the back. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they would Fins. be plates, I don't know. Any Dinosaur experts, yeah. get in touch, please. <laughs> um, but you've got everything you need and more printed on this panel. So that is amazing value, isn't it? Really Absolutely good. amazing yeah. value. Because I'm actually thinking that that panel is going to be about a twelve ninety nine value in itself. You've then got the pattern which you can make as many times as you like with your stash. This should be nine ninety nine, surely. So we're already up to 22, 23 mm -hmm. pounds. Then you've also got a fat quarter of lining fabric to go with for 14.99. Amazing, absolutely amazing. So that's one option and we've called that sunset. There's five left. <laughs> There's five left. I knew the dinosaur was going to be popular. It's gorgeous. Aww. It appeals to me on so many levels. Right, the second option is called Sunrise. That would be too easy. <laughs> I love the creativity. This one's called Green. That's us at Sewing Street, by the way, not Emma. <laughs> Sunset, I love green. Okay, let me show you the green because the green is something else. Oh, look. Look at the dinosaur skin. I want a bag made oh, out of that. That would be so good. I want a shoulder bag, yeah. yeah? Yeah. Gorgeous. Loving this so very much. Absolutely vibrant, juicy. Joseph, Joseph, I love it, I love it. Uh, so you've got all your contrast there for the little feet and for the um, spines, plates, armour, running down the back, plus your full pattern, plus of course your fat quarter of black for your lining. Now you will need a zip to create the teeth, the mouth, the closure. We've got a pack of five white nine inch zips from Living in Loveliness. We'll grab up those details for you. These would be perfect for this project, right? Yep, yep, totally fine. Yeah, you can use either zipper by the roll or you can use ready-made. Yeah, for this one. great. Inside the project, what's Bo the padding? Bozal. Bozal. Foam, yeah, oh, uh, sorry, f fusible fleece. Fusible fleece. Yeah. So something yeah. like H630, H640. Sorry, yes, yeah. They would all work. <laughs> yes. And a bit of uh, interfacing as well. Bit of interfacing as well. Up. Yeah. <gasps> Love it, love it. So, you know, you could also use maybe some quilt batting if you've got some spare yeah. quilt batting. Yeah. You know, it's not something that needs a huge amount of stretch. It's small, so it's going to hold its shape. Anyway, I just love it, love it, love it. It's so cool. In terms of the green version, it's just called green. Um, how many have we got left? Three nine. Is that three ninety nine for five zips? Wow. Great value, like that. There's one of both left. One of the purple, one of the green. Oh, wow. Sold out. <laughs> <gasps> Terrific. Well, I think you've got very good taste. I think it's such a cute project. I love it. Awesome. Right. Shall I go through the Layla pouch? Am I saying that correctly? Mm -hmm. Layla? Layla, yeah. Layla. <laughs> got me on my knees. Okay, let me show you first of all the actual Layla pouch itself. So, really love this. Love a box pouch. So you've got that lovely kind of rectangular square end profile. So really nice and roomy and stylish. So many different uses for a bag like this, yeah, Emma. Yeah, so many, yeah. 
Um, as you can see, as you'll see when you open it up, I've put loads of pens in there just to show you a bit of the size. This was actually designed together with my eldest daughter, who happens to be called Layla. Layla. That's where it comes from. Um, and she designed it. You know, for school, you have to have a glue stick, a pencil sharpener, you know, the math set, yeah. all the things to fit inside. So we designed it together to be the right size to fit all of those um, little bits and pieces. And that's why there's a little pocket inside as well as a little slip pocket. Oh, there's a pocket in there too. Yeah, so you can put, you know, if you oh, want yes, scissors or um, a rubber or, you know, whatever you want to put in there to yeah, keep yeah, it yeah. safe. But also this could be rotary cutter, it could yep. be scissors, it could be your dressmaking kit. It'd be great for that, yeah. Makeup. Yeah, yeah, makeup. Toiletries. Toiletries, yeah. Of course I'm be... thinking as well that would be absolutely gorgeous made in PU. Yes, it would. Really nice. Mm -hmm. Black PU, leopard skin on the lining. Oh, and a great scrap buster. Great well. scrap buster too. Ooh. We have got some kits as well, but what's really important is you get the pattern. So, pattern for the Layla pouch, you've got your paper patterns, okay, inside. You've also got all of your written instructions to make this. This is the kind of thing, goodness me, we're going to make this a gazillion times, aren't we? This is one of those patterns that you've got to have in your stash because it's going to be giftable. It's going to be something you'll make for yourself, every member of the family. Whether you do the strip piece, quilt as you go version, whether you make it plain and simple, whether you maybe add some machine embroidery to oh. your fabric. First of all, you are flying to the website, to uh, the app. You're, yeah, thank you. Thank you for getting involved. It is really gorgeous. I love as well the detail along the zip here with these contrast strips yeah yeah so you use so it is a, a bound project so you you do all the quilt as you go and you make it up um, as sort of two pieces and then you piece it all together and then you bind the edges inside and there's instructions on on different methods on how to do that as well yeah. Really yeah. nice extra feature as well these little tabs because it just makes the unzipping and the zipping so much easier when you've got those tabs to hold on to. So we've got the pattern on its own, 9.99, absolutely flying if it's in your basket. And I've said this a lot today, but we've had a lot of sellouts. Uh, it is flying, so do check out your basket on the Layla pouch. Now we've got a couple of bundles, a couple of kits. Now these are fabrics with instructions. So we're going to do the Jason Yenta first of all. This is a really stylish mixture. So you've got these, price is incredible, isn't it? Got gorgeous fat quarters of Jason Yenta digital print fabric. These are gorgeous fabrics, right? Really pretty. Really I'm, I'm demoing with them and they come out oh, so beautiful. Yeah. Really looking forward to seeing that. You've got that lovely sort of chartreuse green and gold. You've got the sky blue and then you've got that delicious amethyst. It's going to work really well together. Also delve into your stash, throw a bit extra in there as well, create a little bit of contrast as well. So you get those three fat quarters plus your full pattern as well for $19.99. Now the other option we've called Rainbow. I mean it's three fabrics, I don't know if I agree this is Rainbow but I certainly love the colours. Um, Colour wise, can you tell me Ben, this is, what are our three colours? I think we've got Rose haven't we? Oh, should I have a guess? I'm just going to call that paprika, rose and sky. Oh, cats to the rescue. I don't know why I worry so much about what the colours are called, but I kind of do. <laughs> $14.99 for this kit, that is a bargain, because you're getting all, your, all those fabrics, you're also getting the full pattern. Let's just stick with my versions. I'm good at colour names. Paprika, rose, sky blue. That's a great kit if you want to then use your stash to make the strips because then you can use that as your lining. Mm. Um, so that will make, and you'd make up loads of bags with those as well. Yeah. So yeah. that's really cool. Gorgeous. It's a really, really popular kit. Really popular kit to make the Layla pouch. That's our second project. <clears throat> is it fair to say that the dinosaur is sold out? It has, it has. Okay, well done if you managed to get your dino. One of the green available. 
What of the green? <laughs> Run. <laughs> yeah, hop to it, hop to it. It popped in, it popped out. Okay, last of all, we've got the Valentina box. That's sold out, by the way, sold out. Right, the Valentina box is next. This is really gorgeous. I love storage. Me too. I love making <laughs> storage as well. This has got, now can you see in here, it's got a magnetic snap. Okay, love that. Love this bit of reverse applique in the front. Really nice extra stylish mix. All lined inside, really like it's a hinged lid rather than one that's gonna come off and get lost. And then look at all that lovely roomy space in there. Now this could be storage for your fat quarters. What yep. a stylish way to keep those. This could also be for keeping you know, CDs. Does anybody still have CDs? You I could, still have CDs. You could, yeah. Yeah. What would you store in your? Uh, well, you, I've used it. I actually, on my first time on Sewing Street, I think, I had it with all my sewing tools inside. Um, so, yeah, it fits all your rotary cutters, your pens. Um, I've had people use it for toiletries. Use, you line it with a waterproof, like, P, PU or... Uh, waterproof canvas and mm. use their toiletries in there in the bathroom it would be a great bathroom couldn't it yeah. you could have cotton wool balls in there yeah. you could have it in the nursery as well with kind of you know lotions and nappies, nappies. Good. great for nappies yeah <laughs> Oh, I just love it. And I, I love the style of it as well. It's very smart and chic. Uh, you've got your pattern for your Valentina box, full instructions for... Now, do we have the pattern on its own? We don't have the pattern on its own. That's fair enough. So <clears throat> very, very limited. Just double figures, low double figures too. Okay, you get your fabric, your main fabric for the outside. You've got some fabric to create that reverse applique. You could substitute your own stash here. Uh, oh, interesting fact from Andy. Hi, Stuart. The spikes of a dinosaur are called scoots. <gasps> that is like, that's, a, that's the winning answer in a pub quiz. Whoa. I'm just saying. Who I, would know that? Only, well done, Andy. Thanks the only thing is, that. I now need to change all my patterns, don't I? Hello. Thanks, Andy. Can we do a reprint? <laughs> <laughs> Not this time. Okay. You also thanks for that. Andy. You also get your calico for lining. It's seasoned natural for lining your bag as well. Um, you'll need to add in some. You need Decaville. Decaville. Yeah, you need Decaville for this project. Or Peltex, like yeah, a heavyweight. Interface. Any heavyweight. It needs to be that leather-like um, consistency of any. I mean, you can use Decaville light. You can use regular Decaville. Um, it just needs to not be your foam or your uh, fusible fleece or wadding. Um, however, you could use that. You're just going to get a soft box, not mm. a kind of more rigid box. And you may find that the lid doesn't sit as well. I have to say I haven't tried it. So if you try it, let us know. Yeah, get the pattern. Experiment. Yeah. yeah. Fab. Oh, my goodness. What an exciting bunch of projects. <laughs> it's just lovely as well, isn't it, to make something a little bit different as well. You know, if you always make quilts or clothes or home deck projects, these are some really fun projects. Just to, if you need your sojo, given a little bit of a zhuzh up and a bit of a va va voom, all of these projects are just fun and different. Yeah. Emma. Right, should we get started? Let's We're going to do a little bit of the dyno to start. <clears throat> so I just wanted to show you the um, spikes. The what? No, scoots. Thank you. <laughs> Big cross out of spikes. <laughs> so our scoots, as I shall now call them. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I'll forget that in two seconds. But they, you cut out the pattern as this pattern piece shows. So again, all the patterns that I do, they're on this thicker weight, um, quite shiny paper. So they're, they're easy to reuse over and over. Um, I have a lot of people say that they make more than one of each pattern. So I, I feel like that's an important thing to do. Yeah. So you cut your pattern out in this shape. Now that looks, well it is, different to this shape. When you put the two together, can you see, you're trying to force this pattern to go along the back, the spine of the dinosaur, okay? And you kind of go, uh, that doesn't work. But it does because if you do um, snips all the way along, I don't know if you can see, but I've cut into, not into the main panel of the dino, but just into the scoots <laughs> um, to make it bend and go where we need it to go. Because then, once you sew it, 
it flips up and you get those scoots standing up nice and proud. Like okay. that. So I just wanted to point that out in case it kind of, you know, it's all a little bit like, uh, how does that work? Um, so that's how we do that. Also, um, in this pattern as well, I have provided uh, pattern pieces for your fusible fleece, which are the same, but minus the seam allowance. Oh, so cool. You're, yeah, so you don't have to worry about cutting off the edges on this one to make your um, fusible fleece pattern pieces. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to baste that in place on the machine. Fab. Machine, machine doable. Machine Why do you base that? Can I quickly mention, I forgot to mention these fabrics and I'll, you know, I'd be so disappointed if you didn't get these bit of loveliness. Now, just a couple of ideas. I think that the heart would be so gorgeous done in glitter, but also you could make the whole of um, the boxes, the Valentina boxes, out of this glitter. It's like a PU. Now, one little tip, you're not going to iron this to your Peltex or, um, you know, your firm interfacing. But what you can do is just use your 505 and spray baste it on. These aren't something that you're necessarily going to be washing anyway. So fuse them together and then sew it together. But I mean, how gorgeous are they? You've got like a kind of metallic-y sort of tealy silver, if that makes sense of that, fat quarters of each, a glorious pink and the silver, $6.99 for all of them. And I am rubbing these and shaking them. And there's about like three specks of glitter that have come off. They are really, really well done. And um, that glitter is not coming off. So love those. Really gorgeous, aren't they? Six ninety nine uh, for the three, not just for one. I'll just open one out so you can just see the amount of fabric that you're getting because it's bigger than a normal fat quarter because this fabric is wider than normal. That is a really good size, huh? Really good. You can iron this. I would just use a pressing cloth and a low heat, but you can easily get those folds out. And do it from the back as well. Do it from the back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what I made with this last Christmas. You know the little woven Danish heart baskets? Have you ever oh, seen those? Yeah. Hang on the Christmas tree? Because you can cut this and it doesn't fray. Oh. So you can cut the strips, weave them. That's oh, that great was a lot tip. fun. Well, you need to get started on Christmas now, don't we? We really do. Started, finished. finished. Not really, I'm not really. <laughs> like, Don't shoot me, I'm not joking. Don't put me to shame. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, but anyway, it doesn't matter, right. Emma, because if I make anything for Christmas at this stage, I put it somewhere safe and then lose it <laughs> until January the 1st, so. Oh, we're both similar. <laughs> okay, so I've basted my scoots on. It is kind of, as word you can of the see, day. word of the day. I need to try and remember that. Um, as you can see, it's kind of, I don't know if you can see, but it's flipping up the, the tail. Don't worry about that. It's just because it's not wanting to sit in this position. It's all good. It's all going to be fine. Then we're going to lay on our top piece, right sides together, and we're going to pin. The other thing is as well, on the pattern, there are notches for the beginning and the end of your scoots. So you're going to know exactly uh, where to place them. Yeah, perfect. So we're going to pin that, actually, I'm going to clip that. And can I ask, is that H64, uh, H6, yeah, H640 that yeah. you've used there? Yeah, it is, Perfect. yeah. 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 And we had that on the show earlier on, didn't we? Um, mm -hmm. Earlier today, we had some H640. Yeah. Could you? Pop it on for me, Ben. Pop it on, Ben. <laughs> And a bit of a tip as well to get the H642 adhere better is if you put regular interfacing first and it sticks much um, nice in a nicer way. Oh, okay. It's easier to kind of adhere it on. Yeah, yeah. good tip. Mm. Fab. So that's nine ninety nine. That's a meter piece. So I mean, oodles of H640. You could also use H630, which is slightly thinner. Uh, version um, again, really good. If you use H630, no, I've just stuck to 40. Yeah, it's neat. I feel it's like just I need to try it. Yeah, it's just very slightly thinner, mm -hmm. lighter loft, you know. Um, but yeah, really good if you just want a very softly padded, mm. just a little bit extra texture. Oh, I feel like I need that in my life as well. Uh, we can get you some. <laughs> get you some. 
Okay, so I've clipped that in place now and we're now going to actually stitch that through at a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And while I'm here, uh, I'm just going to mention I'm also going to go around the tail to that notch mark. Hopefully you can see that mm -hmm. um, just to secure that tail to finish it. I can't wait to see everybody's finished dinosaur. Do you call it a pencil case? Or yeah, I call it a case? pencil case. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, please do share it with us in the in the Facebook group or tag Sewing Street. Yes, please. And also, dare I say, what you put inside. Because I, I could imagine rotary cutter scissors in here because it's a great shape for scissors as well, you know. What was that there? Oh, dear. I introduced, I must tell you Emma, now I'm sitting here giggling about it. I introduced, <laughs> I'm a great one for the meme oh, and yes. the, the, you know, the viral video. Oh yeah. I'm a great one for the meme, I'm a great one for the meme. And uh, I introduced Ben to the, I'm just a baby. Have you seen that one? No. Oh, it's, it's a really funny, the original video, a mum is kind of gently scolding her toddler you know say you know if i tell you to do something you have to just say okay mummy <laughs> and this little toddler says to her i'm just a baby <laughs> like what would i know it's just to her, yeah i know that but you've still got to say okay mummy and then the little toddler really loses it goes i'm just a baby <laughs> you know and it's so funny it's been used so many times anyway i introduced ben to it and all i've heard in my ears all morning is just a baby <laughs> Honestly, honestly, <laughs> but no, absolutely fab projects from you today, Emma. <laughs> Thank you. Loving them. And as you're going, um, as, as you saw, I've used clips. You can use pins as well and sew over them. Um, it can just get a little, not bulky, but there are a few layers uh, with the fusible fleece as mm -hmm. well um, to go through. Um, so I find sometimes clips are better with those bulky seams. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, so you just want to make sure as you're going that it's all in line and that is why we based it first. Just makes um, all for making our lives easier. Agreed, agreed. Now of course unfortunately the dinosaur bundles have sold out but we have got some other fun projects from Emma. We've got the Layla pouch which is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to grab that and show you. You get full instructions. Remember, it's the only way you can get the instructions for this. Oh no, have we got instructions? Oh, we do. Ace, ace. Oh, more than half the stock's gone. The Layla pouch. It's a gorgeous quilt as you go. Really like that. Great way of using up your scraps. You could use things like your jelly roll strips. You might have off cuts of fabrics, back quarters, little bits and bobs. You could even sew smaller pieces end to end and then cut your strips out. So it was really patchworky, really fun, really useful. You could make it in so many different fabrics. It would also be gorgeous in cork or PU. You could also make this in leather. Oh yeah, it'd be lovely nice. in leather. Lovely in leather. Mm. Yummy. Sorry, back to you. That's all right. So um, then once you've sewn that in place, you then just want to snip around the top and around the back so that it's you know, going to sit really nicely when you turn it out the right way. Um, so that is the main bit of how I will show you, even though I haven't snipped uh, through, how you get the, the scoots to sit up nice and nice and proud, as you can see. So there we go. Did you want to move on to the next one? That'd be fun. Yeah, which yeah. one should we do first? Bit of Layla Pouch. Layla Pouch. Layla Pouch should be nice. Okie doke. There is a full video tutorial on my YouTube channel as well. Just look for Studio 7 T7, so there's the T in between. Uh, if you search it up on YouTube, you'll find that. And there's links in the patterns too. Okay. Cool, thank you. Move those bits out of the way. Okay. So Love your pin cushion, by the way. Thank you. Mini cactus. Mini cactus is cute, isn't it? Very cute. Okay, so the Layla pouch. Again, it comes with all your pattern pieces. 
uh, full size, so you don't need to worry about that. And it's got all the um, seam allowance drawn on as well. This is slightly different because uh, this is the uh, printout, so ignore the, the square thing going on there. Okay. Um, right, so what you're going to do, you're going to cut out all your strips to begin with. And you're going to cut them out. It tells you exactly the size to cut out and how many you're going to need. So you can see here whether you use it uh, from the set, which is gorgeous. I'm sure you agree. It goes, so this is a bit more mm. of a rainbow, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, especially if you use, as you'll see, I've used the, uh, what did we call this? Was this the rose? Rose. Uh, together with it. Look at that. Oh, yeah, it's Gorgeous. Nice. Together. Um, yeah, so you can either use the uh, you know three fat quarters like you get in the kit, or you can use scraps. To be honest, using scraps you have to have it quite long, so it's quite a good idea to get the kit you know so that you've mm. got you know you've got enough, or really mix it up and and piece it together. That would mm -hmm. be cool too. Mm -hmm. So you're going to cut out all your strips. You're also going to need bias binding because that's as as I mentioned earlier, that's how we uh, piece it all together. So um, you're going to either use a bias binding maker or you can buy, you know, pre pre made stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's options there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to cut out our big piece. I'll just put these out of the way a little bit. We're going to cut out our main piece and we're going to use our um, H640 and we're going to fuse it to the back of our lining. This is our lining here, okay? Because we're using the quilt as you go method and mm -hmm. we're going through both the lining, so we're making the lining and the outer at the same time. Ah. You're going to get one of your strips and you're going to place it at an angle. I've pinned this on because I've already done the other side, which I'm sure you saw, um, and I want to make sure it matches up so that when I put it together, it's lining up with the strips, okay? So here's the strips that I made, or the piece that I made earlier. So I've pinned that on, so I've got it at the same angle. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then what we're doing, what I wanted to point out, is with the pattern, you get this, um, larger pattern piece okay and you need to cut it out on the outer line it does explain this in the pattern and actually on the pattern that you're going to get this i think the inside is a red line and the outside is a black line so it's even more visible mm -hmm. um, and they're different like weight sort of lines as well so you can see a bit easier so you cut out pattern piece one which is the the rectangle it's cut on the fold so you're going to cut that out like that then, once you've done all your piecing in a minute, you then cut out the smaller shape, okay? So that, that's what that's about with that pattern piece. Then we're gonna lay the strip on, like so. Then we're gonna get our next piece, and we're gonna lay that on right side down on that edge. So the raw edges are lined up. I'll pull that pin back in. And then we're gonna sew with a quarter of inch seam allowance along that edge. Okay. This is just a really fun technique as well, you know. Like you, like you were saying earlier with the weave it tote, you know, once you've done this, you can then use it on on any project, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really nice. I like it very much, <clears throat> and it gives so many different options as well. Because you can yeah. use the strips the width you've done. You could vary them. Yeah, you totally could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get different different ideas, and and also how you quilt the top, or, or whether you quilt it or not. I think on that one, I didn't, did I? There um, is an extra. Well, there's a little. I didn't do any stitching uh, no, on the top. That's just where you put the pocket yeah, in. So yeah, so I no. wanted to show that as well as another another mm. way to do it. So I've done that and I've opened the seam up and then you can press it. Oh, do you want me to do your pressing? Oh, you can do. I can do your pressing. Yes. I like to be useful if I can. Oh, I've got an assistant. That's yeah, exciting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just a little press like that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah just like you would do with your quilting. There we go. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Back to you, boss. <laughs> and then you want to get your next strip. And for me, it's blue. I want to make sure that I'm keeping it in that order. You want to make sure as well, I'll just mention that when you open it up, you're still, you're not getting sort of, you're not missing off a bit here. So that's quite important because it might look like it fits there, but then when you open it up, uh, it's a bit short. 
Okay, so just, just check that before you stitch it on. So yeah. I like to sort of do that a bit. Okay, so I've laid that on. See, I did lose a little bit there. It is going to be okay because I know that that's going to be cut down, but it's just something to bear in mind. That's going to be with your cutout, isn't it? That yeah, piece? exactly. Mm. So I'm doing the same thing, quarter inch seam allowance along that edge. And I notice as well you're using a walking foot for your construction. I, yes, I always use a walking foot whenever I can. Um, I just find it helps everything go smoother. Uh -huh. Of course, if I'm putting in a zip or something, or, you know, I can't get in there, then I have right. to change it, but a bit begrudgingly. Resentfully, <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> yeah. get that. I get that. Yeah. There you I'm go. A My lovely assistant. A little bit more flipping. Yeah. <laughs> Not a problem. Thank you. There we go. I'm being a guest myself this afternoon. Are you? I am. I'm going That's over exciting. onto Hobby Maker. Oh. Yeah, I bet I, I don't get watching. a glamorous assistant. <laughs> too impressing for me. I have to repay the favour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can come over. <laughs> Oh dear. Got my assistant, Emma Brassfield, <laughs> thank you. So we're carrying on and we are um, making sure again that it's matching. What I like to do, because we've got a longer strip than what's needed, I don't like to do it in the middle because then, you know, you get two sh sort of shorter bits because you might be able to, which is where I got these from, use it on your other piece. Mm -hmm. uh, waste not, want not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so double checking. I remember I regularly join bits of fabric together to make a strip that's long enough. Yeah. Especially a diagonal seam, it's quite discreet. I love patchwork at the end of the day. Exactly. That's what it's all about. It all works. Okay, quarter of inch seam allowance. What time are we on? We've got about 20 minutes. Okay, so if I, um, I'll talk through the rest of the bag and then we can move on to the last one, shall we? Mm, that'd be Does that great. sound good? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes please. because it's a lovely simple technique. Once you've got it, you're, you're off. Oh. <laughs> oh, hello. Almost. It's because I'm sewing through a big pin, which isn't, it's not a good idea. If you're gonna sew over your pins, use little pins. <laughs> Okay, so then you carry on going, and here is one I made earlier. So um, with this, I have then, as you can see, you'll see on the back as well, um, I think it's really nice to, to use a contrasting thread on the inside, and then when you look inside, you've got that, um, you know, bit of interest there. Really um, nice. And then, yeah, I've sewn it through from the top. So you've added a bit of extra quilting either side yeah. of the seam lines. Yeah, it just gives it a bit of interest. It's a lovely extra texture. Yeah, and you could you could hand stitch that. You could do like you could like you say you could do some embroidery. You could embroider a name that would look really fun because it would go across the bag. Mm -hmm. That would be really nice, mm -hmm. especially for school. Um, yeah, so you'd continue that on. Then you get your other piece, like I say, and you would lay that on. And you can, you know, if there is a bit that you like better to be in the centre, you know, maybe you want to edge over to that purple and have that in the centre and this is all looking good. So you can, you can choose at this point how you're going to do it. Um, just make sure you do that again on your other piece. And then you would cut, draw around it and cut that out. And then you can piece together to make the pouch. Fab. Brilliant. Okay. Easy peasy. Yeah, it's quite a quick quite a quick one and like you say if you don't want to do the quilt as, as you go as well you could literally just cut out this inner shape and make mm -hmm. up the box you know skip to that point mm -hmm. and make up the box as uh, the bag as you go yeah yeah um, and there is a YouTube video coming for this soon as well oh fantastic oh. lots of extra support I really like that yeah, you're now then the last that. project you're going to show us is yes. the Valentina box yes which has got that little bit of reverse applique on the front, which I really like. Half the stock of this has already sold out. Remember, you can only get the pattern for this within the kit, but it's great value. 16.99 gets you the pattern. 
You also get half a meter of seeded natural. You get half a meter of the red for the outside of the box. And also you get a fat quarter of fabric for your reverse applique as well. Now, um, do I need half a meter for the outer? Do I have enough for two or just no, one? You, yeah, just one. Because but I'd it's have all, some pieces. Yeah, definitely. And because, as you'll see in a sec, because it's all one piece, yeah. the outer, um, so it does take out oh, a I bit. Oh, I see. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, do. I uh, do. The lining is slightly different. I'll talk about that. Okay, so what you want to do is when you get your pattern, there's one thing um, to note. As you can see, I've made a few of these. This is a well-loved <laughs> <laughs> pattern. Um, as you can see, it lays on like this. Now, uh, I did have this on the show, um, was it last month? Or I can't remember the date, but you can find this as well. So I wanted to follow on from that tutorial rather than starting from scratch and showing you the same thing. Um, but I did just want to point out that for the um, Decaville pieces, the long piece, oh, let me scoot that over a bit. The long piece here, you're just gonna cut that out from this pattern piece here to, to find that, okay? And then on the pattern piece, you've got all these markings and these are going to show you exactly where to lie your pieces. Um, this video came out last night on my YouTube channel, so mm -hmm. there's full, you know, full run through step by step on how to do it. Um, and also, like I say, I did show on the last show. Fabulous. Okay, so let's move that out the way. So that's going to make the folding up and getting everything really neat and tidy much, much yeah. easier, isn't it? Having those gaps in between the shapes. Exactly, yes. So that's why we've done those gaps, so that we've got those natural folds. You do, you're not battling against that heavy interfacing, so it folds really nicely. So on the last show, this is where we got to. We got to doing the, um, the cutout of the heart. I showed you how to do that. So I wanted to show you the next steps. So I've got this um, lovely heart um, cutout or piece that goes on the inside. And it's cut out quite a bit larger, as you can see. You can really play around with it to make sure you're getting it in the right place. Now I want to make sure that that heart uh, motif is in the middle of that heart. Like oh, so. cute idea. I like that. Yeah, thanks. So I've placed that there. Then what I'm going to do is you could either use um, uh, double-sided tape. Always make sure you've got your sewing version, not your regular double-sided tape. Never use that with your machine. Um, and then you could either yeah, tape it from behind, or I'm just going to chuck in a couple of pins. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to sew around that heart to secure it in place. And that's a lovely technique to learn as well, isn't it? That face to plique, really like yeah, that. Yeah, and again, you could use that in any project as well. Take your other projects to mm. a oh, different so place. Oh, so cute. I love how you've centred the design. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm going to take that over to the machine. I've got my walking foot. Now, the, the, the trick to this is it is most definitely not a race, OK? Take this time. Is, this is your, your slow sewing. So I'm going to find a bit of my foot that I can follow along. I always like to find a, uh, an area of my foot that I can see, you know, as an almost invisible line, mm -hmm. so that I can use that for um, for where I need to go with my needle. And I never start in the dip, the point of the heart, um, because then you, if you're going to get any kind of um, nesting or anything, it's really hard. That's where your eye immediately goes to, yeah. so it's hard to hide it. So avoid the focal point. Yeah, exactly. With any top stitching. Uh, another thing to think about with top stitching for shapes like this is I don't do a long thread. Normally on my top stitching, like we talked about earlier, I will do like a three if it's cotton or I'll do a three and a half or a four for PU or faux leather mm -hmm. um, because it's less perforation on the PU and faux leather. That's why I do it, the longer one. But when we're doing these shapes, I want to keep it nice and short mm -hmm. so that I can go around the shape easier. Yeah. You're not going as far with your needle. Yeah, it's more important to get a nice smooth shape here, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, yeah. You know, I just had a thought, Emma. Mm. I'm completely rubbish at wrapping gifts. And I'm just thinking, what a wonderful way of presenting Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, 
actually to make this box Gorgeous. and to have as your packaging yeah because it's something that's really really keepable isn't it i mean who wouldn't want that afterwards for storage but you could put your gift inside no wrapping required hallelujah says i <laughs> and it's two gifts in one it really is it really is so cute isn't it The other thing I should mention as well, as I've left my um, tails long, I'll call them my tails and my threads uh, long at the beginning because I'm going to pull that through so that you don't get any visible knot or back stitch from the front. I always feel like it's a bit of a, a bobbin race. You do not want to run out of your bobbin, do you? Oh, nice bobbin chicken. Stitching. <laughs> It's a game I play every single day. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when I'm long arm quilting. Because <laughs> the bobbins do seem to go on forever. They don't, of course, but you know, you think, oh I can I can finish this row, I can finish this row. But like you said, just take your time. Yeah. Slow and steady. Yeah. Exactly. And sometimes I adjust it when I'm, I'm at that point now, that dip of the heart. So I've just adjusted it so that it gets a, uh, you know, right on on point, so to yeah. speak. Oh, look at that! I've ended in the same hole. Love it oh. when that happens. Okay, so I've pulled that off the machine and I've left my long tails. As you can see, I haven't backstitched. And then what we can do is we can pull through from the back. Might be tricky to see because it's white on white, but hopefully pull those two mm. tails through, tie that off. What I'm going to do, because that first one, where's that gone? I've still got one there. I think the first one, I didn't leave my tail long enough, which is really annoying. Uh, maybe, let's see what we're doing here. Oh, I see what it's done. These things always happen, don't they, when you're sewing live. There we go, is that, is that it? Um, so we're going to pull those through. If it's going to play the game. Maybe. I'll pull the stitch out now. Well, I can tell you, that's a good excuse to tell you how to fix that as well. Okay, cool. So anyway, I've got those three threads. And tie them in a knot. Have I got? Yeah, okay. And then we can cut that. And then if you do have that, where you've skipped a stitch, um, what you can do is then you just thread a needle, a hand sewing needle, go up through that hole, down through the other hole, and tighten a knot on the yep. back. So if that happens, it's not the end of the world. It's annoying, I must admit, but it's not the end of the world. It's live television for you. It's life, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it really is. So we've got that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut that back so we've got a smaller area. So I'm just going to grab my scissors. So kind of reducing the bulk at the back. Exactly, yeah. Just want to make sure you're only cutting through that piece and not through the uh, the other piece that's Oh, can you imagine packing. after you've done all that lovely top stitching? I know, and you've cut it all out and fused it. I once cut right through a quilt. You once did? Cut right through a quilt. What did you do? That, that long. <gasps> oh, the fear. <laughs> That's why we invented a plique. Uh, yes. <laughs> is that what you did? I'm, I'm saying, oh, yes. You can do, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, dear. Right. So, you know, it's not the most neat. It's fine. It doesn't matter. No one's ever going to see that. That's all going inside, right? All going inside. And then what you want to do is you want to, oh, actually, you do want to cut that back that pink, sorry, but not this one. Okay. Yeah, you do want to cut back that pink. And it's quite nice to kind of have a step like I have, so it's not both uh, cut in the same place, because okay. then you reduce a little bit of the bulk. Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay. Then we've got this extra piece of our decaville and it, when you get the decaville it's shiny on one side, that's your glue side, that's mm -hmm. your fusible side. You want to place it face down 
And you will have, I haven't got it here, so I am going to eyeball it, uh, which is a little bit naughty, but you will have your marks already laid out uh, for where to place this. Mm -hmm. So you're not sort of, you know, it's not, you're not shooting in the dark a bit. Okay, so then we're going to fuse that um, to the back. Perfect. You're on your own with the pressing. <laughs> <laughs> no, because with that's very one. precise, isn't it? And I wouldn't want to muck it up. <laughs> that's all right. All good. I do love a bit of Decaville though. A bit hot. Yes, yes. It's really cool, isn't it's it, for really, providing structure? It's so cool. It's such a cool project. If you haven't used it before, highly recommend you have a little play and mm. I'm I don't actually think try we've got it on the show, unfortunately, but ah. Decaville. You do sell it, don't you? We it's do. Sold out. Have we? Oh, just just a minute, just a minute. There we go. Fleeceline Decaville One fusible interfacing. You get a metre by ninety centimetres for seventeen ninety nine. Now it is an expensive product. But it is absolutely, it's incomparable with anything else yeah. for providing that structure without bulk. It's still really thin, so it's not going to create something that's really kind of bulky and lumpy. Um, very, very easy to use. Now this is the standard Decaville. It's a very, very, excuse me, very, very firm interfacing. It's almost like card, um, which is why as you've done, you yeah. put it inside the seam allowance, don't you? Yes, exactly. Yeah, you don't want to. I always forget with that iron. Um, you don't want to put it in your seams because it's going to make it super bulky, and that's right. why this pattern has it all figured out for you. You don't need to think about that um, with but the seam allowances cut off. Grab yourself some of that while you can. Uh, it's seventeen ninety nine for a meter by ninety centimeters wide piece. Grab it while you can. Really mm. good stuff. Yeah, and you're going to get a couple. At least, well, because the box is pieced like this, you're going to get loads because you're not cutting it out as one big mm. um, section. Mm. Right, I'm going to move the iron out of the way. Another tip for your decaville as well is to um, uh, leave it once you've pressed it. And obviously, we can't leave it today. But I, I have pressed these and then left these flat for at least 30 minutes because that's when the glue kind of comes into its own and really starts sticking. If you, and I've done it so many times, or I've had to, if you start moving it and you're sewing it and you're trying to bag it out or birth a bag or something, it can come unstuck quite, quite quickly. So if you're having problems with that, then that's what you need to do. Just go and make a cup of coffee and have a bit of cake. Come back. <laughs> I'm there, I'm there. <laughs> Okay, so that's, the, as you can see, that's the main structure of the box. You could leave off that heart applique if you don't want to. You could do a star. Um, just make sure it's in that same spot because obviously you've got the, the lid to mm -hmm. come down as well. And then what you're going to do is you are going to start sewing it together. So you want to turn it over so, of course, the right side is on the inside, if you imagine, of the box. And then you can see it starting to come together. So you're going to pinch each bit together. Now, on the pattern, it actually says like A, A, B, B. So you can match up the seams and know that you're doing it in the right. Uh, you don't have to do it in that order, but you know that they, they are the ones that should go together. Mm -hmm. uh, let's put a clip in. But I guess once you've done this, once or twice and you understand the principle absolutely you can it just... becomes really straightforward yeah i love the look of this project thank you and then yeah you can go around you can clip it all at once and then sew it all at once um you can kind of choose how you want to do it really mm. and then i'm just conscious we've only got a couple of mm. minutes left emma mm. in terms of the lining mm -hmm. do we do basically the same thing but without the decaville Yep, exactly. You do exactly the same thing. The lining has one side uh, missing, one of these pieces. So it's all the same shape, apart from one of these sides, one of these two. Mm -hmm. And that is a separate pattern piece, so that then it's got the seam allowance added on, and then you sew that together. You, leave, uh, you sew it like an inch each side, and then you leave that, and that is your turning hole. Um, so it's slightly different, but pretty much the same. Um, so then you just put them together, line yeah. into outer, sew around the top and turn it through? Exactly. Because <gasps> yeah. I looked at this earlier on and I thought, 
But how do you... you but it really is just like making a tote bag. It's exactly the same. And actually, if you look in that, I've left the hole open so that you can see. Can you see that? If can you, you see if you right here? A, yeah, there you go. If I just so point this see, out. See the turning hole. And then you do your top stitching um, all around the edge. There it is. Just a little turning hole yeah. down in the bottom. Fabulous. Thank you. And Thanks then for you, demystifying and then, that. Yeah, that's all right. And then the once you've done all that, do you do the top stitching on the edges of the lid as well, as you can see, because that encourages that bit. Because obviously the back of the lid, of that sort of uh, the, the flap bit, isn't held down to anything. So mm -hmm. that I found that stitching along there just encourages it to stay really nicely when the the box is closed. Awesome. That That's my Christmas gift wrapping. Here's your <laughs> gift. It's it's a it's a, a storage box and there's a little something inside. I love it. I love it. Thanks for this morning. It's oh, been awesome, Emma. When are you yes. back? Uh, I'm back next month. End of next month. Awesome. Look out for it. Okay. I can't believe the morning's gone by so quickly. Let's look at the menu for tomorrow. Uh, at 8 a.m. it's William Morris and traditional fabrics. At 9 a.m. it's the Levant tunic and Hamsey skirt with Adele Rowland. 10 o'clock, dress to impress, patterns and fabric bundles. I better dress up then tomorrow. <laughs> 11 a.m. love at first stitch book with Adele Rowland. That's from Tilly Warns. And then at 12 o'clock, fabric panel clearance. I'll be there. I hope you'll be there. Are we also doing Hobby Maker for this afternoon? Check this out. This is this afternoon, 1 p.m. Brand new Gemini embossing folders with Crafters Companion at 2 p.m. Who's this new guest? Stuart Hillard with the Brother FS250 FE sewing machine. At three o'clock, it's the Ultimate Pro Bundle and Treat Box dies with Crafters Companion. And then at four, his back with the Brother Innovis M240 ED embroidery machine. At five o'clock, more from Crafters Companion and the new Gemini embossing folders. That's what's coming up on Hobby Maker this afternoon. I'm going for a quick freshen up and a shirt change. If you're staying with us, I'll see you on Hobby Maker at two o'clock. If not, take care of yourselves and each other. Until tomorrow, goodbye. <laughs>